Hello everyone. Welcome to Nick IT Academy. In our today's session, we are going to learn how to install Oracle database in our Windows machine. If you follow these three steps, you can able to install Oracle database in your Windows machine very easily. Before going to do the installation, I will explain the setup so that it will be very easy to understand. And if any issues, you can able to solve it. So Oracle is a database. So that database we are going to install here. So we do have different versions. So in this session, we are going to install Oracle 11G Express Edition database. Oracle has many versions. The latest version is 21C. In order to practice our SQL, Oracle 11G itself is more than enough. It is a very lightweight software. You can install any machines without any issues. So Oracle is a database. In this database, we can have a different schema. So schema is nothing but a subset of our database based on the different objects. So one single schema will have different objects like a views, tables, and synonym sequences, indexes, and everything. So if you look at this particular picture, here we have three schemas in one single database. So by default, Oracle 11G will have a schema called system schema. It is nothing but admin schema. So in real time project, only DBAs will have access to this particular schema. They will create other schema and other users. They will manage it other schema and other users. They will manage all the database related activities. In this 11G database, by default, we do have a schema called HR schema. It's a human resource schema. You can use this particular schema to create all the tables. For an example, for this system schema, we are going to use username as system and password we are going to have as admin. So this is the password you can enter while installing the software so that it will be easy to remember. Then HR schema, we can have the username as HR and password as HR. And we can create n number of schema here. For an example, if you want to create one more schema for practice, yes, you can create a schema called core schema or test schema or any other schema. So here I'm going to create a schema called core and username will be core and password will be a core. In real time projects, we do have many schema, many users, and each schema will have different, different objects. You can create a tables here. You can take, you can create a tables here. So if you have access to this particular schema in this schema, you can log in and then you can see all the tables. For an example, by default, Oracle 11G will have the seven tables. The tables are, we have employees tables. We have departments tables. So you can use these tables for the practicing purpose and etc. We have seven tables and here you can create n number of tables. For an example, I want to create my own table, customer table. I want to create, I want to create a product table. Yes, you can create any number of tables. So this is what the database we are going to install and we are going to configure different schema. It's very simple. Don't get confused. I will explain while installing. It's very, very simple after installing it you'll be seeing this particular icon. You'll be seeing this, uh, this particular icon in your machine. And this is the database. In order to query this database, we need to have a, a GUI tool, graphical user interface tool. This is nothing but SQL developer. You can have any other tool also. By using these tools, you can create a connection and you can query this particular database. For an example, you can query the system schema. You can query this HR schema. You can query this core schema tables. So this tool, we will call it as SQL developer tool. So we do have a different tools. You heard about the stored for Oracle. Yes, you can use stored for Oracle here. And you can use SQL plus you can use. You can use a DB visualizer. So any tools you can use, not an issue. Whatever the tool you are going to use it, the underlying database is one single database. 
I hope you are clear. As a first step, download the software from the description. Once downloaded, you'll be having this zip, zip file. You can unzip the file. You'll be having this particular folder. See, right click on this particular software. Once we have, we have given right click and extract to this particular folder. If you do not have WinRAR in your machine, go to Google WinRAR download and go to this particular link and click on download WinRAR. So this is the authorized software only, no need to worry about it. And click on download WinRAR, it will get downloaded. Once downloaded the exe file, you can click on it and then install it. It's a very simple step. Since I have already installed, I'm not doing it again. You can install it. So first we are installing this in WinRAR or WinZip if you have, then you can use it. Right click on this, go to extract. So once extracted, you'll be having this particular folder. Double click on this folder. Click on this Oracle, this folder, go to disk one. Double click on the setup file. Click on yes. Then it will be preparing to install. This is a page you will be getting it. This is the Oracle database 11G Express Edition. Click on next. Accept the license and terms and conditions. Click on next here. So here, this is what the destination for where it should be installed. Click on next year, no need to do anything. So this is the admin password for the user sys or system. So we have to carefully choose this. So always make sure that you are remembering the password. The enter password, I'm giving like admin. Password as admin, confirm password as admin. Click on next, click on install. It will get installed. It will take five to 10 minutes of time, depends on your system speed. We will wait for it. Once installed, then we'll go for the next system. Once installation completed, we'll be getting this particular wizard. Click on finish. We have installed Oracle database and we will configure the connection in SQL developer. Just to go to this SQL developer folder, double click, go to this SQL developer. You can find SQL developer icon. If you want to have this icon in your desktop, just to right click, you can add to start or you can go to show more options and you can create a shortcut or you can create a send to a desktop. And then it will create a shortcut. If you see this, you'll be having this icon in the desktop. So just to double click on the desktop, next time it will open here. Even if you want, you can download the latest version from the net and you can use this SQL developer. So very first time it will take one or two minutes. You can give no. If it is asked any dialog box, you can give no. And you can see here, this is the one you can see. So what we are going to do. So from this SQL developer, we are going to establish the connection through SQL developer. We are going to create a connection to this system schema. And we will unlock the HR schema. Very first time, the HR schema will be unlocked state. We will unlock it and we will create a new schema called core and you can use this schema for creating any number of tables. Just to open this SQL developer, you'll be seeing this page and this is the green color icon. Just click on this icon. Connection name, you can give any name. Just I'm going to give connection name is admin. User name will be system. The password is whatever the password you have given while installing. You can see here password I have given as admin. So this is the username for system user and this is the password. Just you can mention this system and admin and you'll be having a host name, port number and the SID. Don't change this. In your real time project, you'll be getting the details from your DBA or your from your team members. By using that, you can connect. Just to click on test. It should be tested success. You can click on connect. So that means through SQL developer, we have established the connection from SQL developer to system schema. So very first time, the HR schema will be unlocked state. We have to unlock it. How to unlock? You can execute this particular statement. I have given the statement in the description just to take that and use it. Alter user, username, HR identified by 
password is HR, account unlock. Make sure that you are running this particular statement in this admin schema. Just execute, the HR schema will get altered. We have unlocked it. Then click on this plus symbol. Name you can give HR schema. Username will be HR and password will be HR. You can refer this particular picture. This is a schema name, username and password. These are all the tables. You can test it. It should be tested success. Click on connect. It will get connected. And if you open this HR schema manually, you can see the different objects, right? Tables, views, indexes, packages, everything. If you click on the tables, you can find a different tables here. So in your system, you might be seeing a seven tables like employees, departments, all this. If you want to manually check, you can click on this table. Yes, you can check the data and data model and constraints. All this you can able to check here. You can close it. And we are going to create one more schema, right? We have to create one more schema called core. Just you can use create user core. This is the user schema, okay? Identified by core. This is what you can create a new schema. Just you can execute it. A new schema will be created. New user will be created after that. You can use, you have to provide the permissions. You can use grant, connect, comma, resource to core. So this is what you can use and just execute this. You have to execute this one and you have to execute. Then it will get executed, these two statement. I have given these three statement in the description. Make use of this. Then you can click on the plus symbol. Then you can use the name as core and username is core. Password is core and you can test it. It should be tested success. You can connect. So we have created all these connections. So you can create any tables here. For an example, I want to create a table in this particular HR schema or core schema. So you can create it. So create table, table name. I want to create a table called product. So just you can open it. Product ID, it's a number data type. If you want, you can give the constraints, product name. So just I'm creating with only two columns. The same way you can create n number of tables. And see here, the product has been created. The table has been created. So you can check the description. I have given all the SQL videos. Watch it. And you can able to do the Oracle installation and start practicing it. And if you have any queries, you can post it on the comments. I will respond to it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon so that you'll be getting all the notifications. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to Nikkei Academy. In this series, we are going to learn Oracle from basic to advanced level, including interview questions and answers. In our today's session, we are going to start with, so what is Oracle? So how the Oracle will be used? What are the different schemas are there? How to install the software? And how to query this database? Everything we are going to learn. This is the agenda for today's session. Introduction to SQL and what is SQL? What is RDBMS? What is Oracle database? What are the different databases are there? What is schema? What is SQL developer? What is stored? And everything, how to create a sample table. So that we are going to learn. In our series, next, next sessions, we are going to learn all this rest of the topics one by one. Please watch the session till the end. I have given notes and exercises for each and every sessions. Please practice the session. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please add a comment so that I can respond. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon so that whenever I'm going to upload a new video, you will get notified. Let us start our day one session. Happy learning. So database is nothing but it is used to store the data. We have a difference between database and SQL. 
Sometimes if you ask which database you have experience, most of them will tell us, I'm working on SQL database. See, SQL is the language. SQL is the language. Database, you might be working on any one of the database. Say for an example, we do have a lot of databases are there. If you consider, so this is the database. This database used to store the data. If I want to query this database, so what data is available, you need to know the language called SQL. So yes, SQL is the language to query this database. This database, we do have multiple databases in our market. One of the leading databases, the Oracle database, we have the provider is Oracle, Oracle database, and then Microsoft SQL server. SQL server is another database. And then from IBM, we have DB2, and a lot of databases are there from Teradata. We have Teradata here and Netisa. We have IBM Netisa and a lot of other databases are there. Cybis, like, and then you have the database called MySQL, PostgreSQL. Like this, we have a lot of databases. MySQL and PostgreSQL both are like open source. And other than that, we have a lot of databases are there in the market. Okay, these are all the database provider. If you're going for any database, for your company, right? You can you can go for any one of the database or multiple databases based on your company needs. In our real time project, we'll be using these databases. It's based on the company. Either they will use one or two databases or more databases. It's based on the company's need. In order to interact with these databases, I need to know the language called SQL. So SQL is the language structured query language so that language we need to know oracle sql is different sql server sql is different teradata sql is different this mysql sql is different okay it's based on the database it will differ little bit not completely like 90 percentage of the queries are same only 10 percentage of the keywords will be different okay this is the database this is a server actually on top of the server, we will be having a front-end tool. So here we will be using some GUI tool as our client tool. So we can say it's a client tool. This is a database. One place it will be there in the server it will be there. In our mission, if we are the developer, we will be using any of the client tool. Okay, here we will be using the client tool. In our mission, the client tool will be installed and we will be using the GUI tool. GUI is nothing but your graphical user interface. By using that, you'll be querying this database by using the SQL language. These databases, if it is Oracle database, if you assume that this is the Oracle database, we have the latest version of Oracle is 21C. If this is the database, and here we can use the GUI tool called SQL developer. See, SQL developer is the front-end tool. Front-end tool, you can use SQL developer, you can use Toad, Toad for Oracle, anything you can use it, okay? So Toad for Oracle, any tool you can use it, SQL plus, any tool you can use it. So these tools is the front-end tool, is the front-end tool. By using this tool, you can query this database. This SQL developer, Toad will not have any data. It will not store any data. Whatever the data which is available in this database, we can pull the data and then we can see it here and you can write the join query, sub queries, multiple queries we can write. Okay, if it is Oracle, then it's a SQL developer and Toad. If it is a SQL server, then you will be having SQL server management studio. Okay, if, if it is Teradata, you'll be having SQL assistant. So like this, different, different client tool will be there in our real-time projects. Okay, that's what a client tool will be having, the graphical user interface tool. So this is the database we have. We do have different databases, right? So you can ask me, if uh, all the databases queries are different, so should I learn all the uh, different database queries each and every time? No. So learn any one of the SQL very well, like either Oracle SQL or SQL Server SQL or Teradata SQL. The other SQL you can learn within just one week or 10 days. Okay, it's very simple only. Okay, now if you consider the Oracle database, we do have multiple database versions are available. If you consider, the databases, multiple versions are available. The latest version as of now is 21C. Before this 21C, we have 19C and we have Oracle 18C. 
See, these are all the versions. Okay. Before that, we have Oracle 12C and Oracle 11G, and you can have the Oracle 10G, 9I. So, like this, you will be having a lot of versions. Okay. So, the latest version is you have 21C. By learning, you can use any version, no issues. By learning SQL, you can use any versions like uh, either you can use 19C or 21C or 12C or 11G also, it's fine. Since we are using Informatica, this 11G we can use it, no issues for the SQL purpose. You can still, we can use for this, for our querying the database. Okay, these are all the, the different Oracle versions are available, okay, version. And also some editions are there, some editions. What is the editions here? So different editions are there in uh, Oracle. So one is enterprise edition. See enterprise edition is cost. Okay. Enterprise edition is cost. Cost wise, uh, it's like a like commercial one. Then we have the express edition. We have the express edition. Express edition is academic purpose. That's what we'll be having the XE. We'll be having the XE, right? Say Oracle 11G is coming with XE. Okay. Enterprise edition. You have one more edition called standard edition. These are all the uh, editions, different editions are there in our real-time projects. So in real-time projects, we'll be using enterprise edition only. The express edition will not be used in real-time. So here we are using enterprise uh, express edition. Why? Because it's a non-commercial academic version. Okay, here that is what we are using. Oracle 11G express edition. You can go for standard edition also. No issues. The express edition will be very lightweight. In the express edition, they are giving uh, commonly two different schemas. First of all, if you ask what is schema, the databases are, you can divide this database into multiple subset. You can divide the database into multiple subset. So why we are dividing? For the easy access and privileges, usages and everything, we are splitting the database into multiple schemas we will call it as in oracle we will call it as a schema in a sql server or teradata we will call it as it's a database so in the teradata database we have three different databases in oracle database we have the three different schema schema is nothing but if you look at schema so you may ask a schema you will be hearing like a lot of things like a schema right schema is nothing but logical division of your database okay in express edition say for an example if you are using express edition in express edition we will be having the schema called admin schema admin schema one schema will be there that's what you'll be having the admin schema so if you haven't installed the software please install the oracle any versions no issues 11g also it's fine any version you can install it if you are going for any informatica then go for oracle 11g it is compatible with oracle 11g only so no issues on the SQL queries. SQL queries are same, okay, mostly on the versions. So handling the server, handling more users, it will be different, okay. Admin schema, the user name is, you can go for user name is system or sys. These are all the user name, okay. The password is, whatever the password while you installing you have given, so that is a password. So you can have this username is system, password is admit okay so this is the username and password so this is what the username and this is what the password okay so now they are giving one another schema called hr schema they are giving one schema called hr schema to practice ourselves to practice ourselves they are giving schema called hr so for this hr username is hr password also hr so initially the HR schema will be unlocked state. You have to unlock it. So that I will, I have explained in our installation of our Oracle. So you can watch that video. You can able to install it. And you can create any number of schema. Any number of schema you can create. For example, I want to uh, create one schema for testing purpose. You can create a schema called test schema. Okay, here you can create schema called test schema. That you have to create by using the admin schema. So username. Username is you can have any name, just you can create username is test and password is also test. And this is called a schema. Inside the schema, you'll be having a lot of different objects. See, object in the sense the table is one of the object. 
okay so table is one of the object you'll be having views is another object okay indexes is another object like this you'll be having a lot of objects are there like tables views indexes synonyms sequences a lot of objects are there so these are all the object we will call it as it's an object okay if you consider a table right so we do have tables in our schema like employees is one table okay already predefined table departments is one more table departments table like this locations see lot of tables will be there in our hr schema like this so you can use any any tables for our purpose you can practice it so test schema you can create it see you remember we have created the table called t underscore employees table for our informatica purpose you can create any table here so this is what the here instead of test you can create you can name it like a core schema work schema any schema you can uh, you can have it this is what the setup of our uh, database so how many schemas are there here three schemas are there admin schema in real time dba only will have the access dba means database administrator only dba will have access to this particular schema they will be providing us which schema you want to have the access okay it's a logical division say for an example you have one tb of hard disk you are splitting the one tb of hard disk into multiple uh, drives right c drive e drive f drive whatever. the same way in real time project for the easy access and privileges and security purpose we are splitting the database into multiple schemas okay this is what the schema will be there in cloud and all it will be stored in different different instances different different servers okay this is what the schema and database setup so if you haven't installed oracle software please install the software this uh, database first and then install this sql developer from sql developer you can query this so this is what sql developer if you look at here how many schemas are there here five schemas are there so this is one schema this is another schema your oracle is running see our oracle is running here this is the oracle database it's running here okay you can see here oracle 11g express edition since i have used informatica i have installed oracle 11g if you are going to have only oracle then you can go for any version of oracle no issues okay see if you look if, if from sql developer this is sql developer right i want to connect that underlying database from sql developer i want to connect the underlying database underlying schema called hr schema how to connect it so you have to make the connection from here you have to make the connection so that's what one time you have to make so here you can go for this is the connection you can make hr schema this is after connection you will be having it so simply you are making the connection right so if you click on the plus symbol the connection dialog box will be opened so if you look at here this is our new connection right so you can create the connection name and provide your username password in real time the host name port number service name or sid they will be providing you who will provide the database administrator will provide us by collecting this information we have to connect it okay so since we have connected just we have so if you look at here you can go and query this database table like we have the one database table called employees it's already there okay we can see here the tables are there it's a predefined table oracle they are providing us for the practicing purpose okay here we have the table and then by using this query i have to create some tables load the data and everything i have to create one table called customer you assume that i have to create i have to create one table called the customer in order to load our customer data into the database okay if you look at this table the table name is the table name is customer and these are all the column names i want to store my customer data in the database then i have to create a table i want to store my employees data then i have to create one table i have to store my product information location information so each and every uh, data we have to create a table okay in order to create a table we can use create table but before that we should know what is data type right without data type we cannot able to create a table okay so this will have only unique numbers so each and every customers we will assign a unique numbers this is what the customer id then customer name it is a character right mobile number it's a number date of birth it's a date 
So here it's a number. Again, in email ID, you may have a special characters, number and everything. Okay, that is what we have to go with. The basic data types. See, what are the basic data types are there in, in, in Oracle? See, data types, we can split this data types into uh, these data types. One is numeric data type, the numeric data type. Okay, we have different uh, numeric data type. I will provide you one sheet. You can go and watch that sheet. But as of now, you can have the number data type. See, number data type is it will hold all the whole number, decimal number, and everything. Okay, number data type. What is this number data type will do, right? So number, so you can mention simply number or you can mention the number of characters. Okay, you can have number of characters. If it is number of eight, you can go up to eight by the eight numbers. You can go for eight characters. You can go for up to this number you can store in the particular column. Okay, if I'm going to use number of eight comma two, eight comma two, this is decimal number. 8 comma 2 means you can have totally 8 digit out of 8 digit 2 digits are decimal this is what number of 8 comma 2 totally 8 out of this 2 digits are decimal okay you can have this number of 2 comma 2 up to which number it will be stored totally 2 digit 2 digits are decimal so 0 0.99 it is stored why because totally 2 all the 2 are decimal we might be thinking, okay, so it will store up to 99.99. No, it will not store. You can test it. So this is the number data type. Other data types are there, integer, uh, float and all. Just you can uh, explore that, okay? Then next one is called character data type or string data type. You can go for character. If you can have the character. You can have the char. It's a predefined length. Then we have the var char, okay? Var char. And we have the var char two. Okay, so varchar two. In our recent version, the varchar they have deprecated the Oracle. They have deprecated the varchar. So even if you are mentioning varchar data type, it will not take as varchar. It will it will in turn takes that varchar two only. Then what is the difference between char and varchar? So that I have posted one video. You can watch it simply. See nowadays we are using varchar two only. Okay, varchar two only. For an example, varchar two you can go up to 4,000 bytes. Okay, maximum you can go for 4,000 bytes. If you have more bytes, then you can go to the large object. Okay, then we have a three, third data type is called date. Date, we have the date data type. See date, simply you can mention like date. So what is the default format of date? So we have the default format. So this is the default format in Oracle. So this is YY format only, 09 March, this one. So this is a default format, other format we can define. So these are all the main data types we will use in our Oracle. So we do have other data types. I will explain this in later, okay? As of now, we will take it. These are all the data types, okay? We do have other data types like a Boolean and we have, that's Boolean and all, it's a PLSQL data type. And we have the, other data types like LOB, large object, character large object, binary large object. So that I will explain later point of time. These are all the three main data types we'll use. For numeric, we'll use number. For character, we'll use varchar2. For date, we'll use date. Okay, these are all the data type we'll use. For an example, I want to create this particular table, right? This particular table, then I can go and create like this. How to create this table, right? In our go to SQL developer. As I told, if you haven't installed SQL developer, please install it first, the Oracle and SQL developer. In order to create this table, right? In order to create this table, I have to use create table, the syntax. Okay, create table syntax. I have given in the Oracle day one, you can, you can watch it. So here I have given all the notes. You can just, uh, you can watch it here create table. So you can see here, create table, table name and all. This is the syntax of uh, creating the table. You can create the table by using this syntax. Okay, how to create? It's very simple. Create table, table name. Okay, customer, open bracket, make it this way, then open bracket. Then you can go for the column names. What are the column names? Customer ID, customer name. See, so you can go for customer ID, 
it's a number data type okay it is a number data type so you can mention that number of eight you can go for eight digit up to eight digit then customer name cust name this is varcar 2 varcar 2 as of now if you are using varcar also it will take varcar 2 only you can go for 100 characters okay varcar 2 then what is the column mobile number so as of now this mobile number will take only number so that's why i'm taking number of 10 i'm taking okay next one date of birth so bob it's a date simply you can mention date and city and email id so you can mention that city it's again it's a varcar 2 varcar 2 of 100 you can go for up to 4000 characters and email id you can go for again varcar 2 you can go for 100 characters you can close it see whenever you are opening it you have to close and why we are making the semicolon right we are telling oracle that okay this statement has been ended so you can use the like this and then you can execute it in order to execute you can select and then click on this green color icon or you can select and control enter or you can keep the cursor here inside inside anywhere the statement you can keep the cursor anywhere in the statement control enter this particular statement will get executed this is what that table has been created you can just go through this table select star from the table name table name called customer nothing will be there just we have created six columns are there nothing will be there okay you can describe the table you can make describe the table always make the semicolon control enter that particular line will be executed you can see here describing it name of the column and then whether it is a nullable column null means nothing it's empty okay and then data type so whatever the data type we have so this is what we'll go for the data types okay Hello friends, welcome to Nikkei Tech Academy. In our previous session, we have just seen the introduction about Oracle SQL and just we have created the table. And in our today's session, we are going to learn about all the DDL, DML, DRL, and TCL and DCL. Please watch the session without skipping it. I have given the notes in the description. Please download and practice it. If you have any suggestions or any comments, please add the comments in the channel. If you haven't subscribed my channel or if you are first time you are coming to the channel, please subscribe the channel for more updates. Let us continue our session. The SQL has been classified into five different languages. One is DDL. If you look at your Oracle, the SQL, so this is what SQL, that's all. All the SQLs are come into this five different language only. Okay, you can remember this. If you know this, SQL is very easy. Oracle SQL is very easy. First one is data definition language. It always deals with the structure of the table. We will call it as a DDL. Okay, DDL, structure of the table. So in order to create the table, in order to alter means, after creating it, if I want to add a column or drop a column or renaming the column name or something, you can go for alter. Okay, you, can, you have to change the data length or data type, then you can go for the alter, can use modify. Then renaming the table or renaming a column. Truncate, truncate means you are erasing all the data from the table. The table data will be there, but just you are erasing all the data. See here, I will tell you what is truncate and all. I hope this is, you are clear. Creating means you are creating the table. Say for an example, as of now, I have created the table with six columns. You assume that six columns or five columns I just created. After loading data, sometimes later, we want to add a one more column. You can add it here on the right-hand side. You want to add one more column, you can add it. This is called altering the structure or you can remove any of the column. This particular column, you can remove it like Excel sheet. Right? This is called altering the structure. That's what we will have. Alter table, alter. Okay, rename. Renaming a column, renaming a table. Okay, truncate, what is a truncate? So I will explain this very clearly so that you can understand, but it's just uh, the one word you can have. I have the table, it has some data. Truncate means the table structure will be maintained inside that all the data will get deleted. Okay, we are just erasing it. 
remember we are erasing it and drop means we are just uh, dropping this table dropping means we are removing this table okay just we are removing this table completely we are uh, we are erasing this table okay remember this so what is truncate and drop see truncate means if i have the table data will get truncated but the data will get truncated it will keep the structure of the table this is called truncate drop means the data structure and everything will get dropped that's all it will erase this table that's all okay nothing will be there simply it will it will erase all the data as well as structure no table will be there that is what drop see it will deals with structure of the table see whenever you are executing any data definition language it will be automatically committed committed means it will be saved in the database okay it will be saved in the database it will auto commit i will tell you what is this at all dml operations dml is nothing but it's a data manipulation language we have four different languages insert update delete and merge these are the four four different languages we have insert means inserting the data into the table updating the record okay we have already record is present we are just updating it see if you look at here i'm just inserting one data one more data that is called inserting it this phone number i am updating this is called updating okay this is called updating this mobile number i'm changing it like this then this is called renaming a column not updating update means data should be updated data should be updated insert means new new record will get inserted delete means we are deleting this particular record okay delete means we are deleting the record okay then what is the difference between delete and truncate see here truncate means so even if you have millions of data it will truncate all the data it will erase all the data okay we cannot mention okay partially you delete this but delete you can partially mention that okay you are you are having city okay whoever is belongs to city mumbai you delete it we can tell it will delete only the customer from mumbai or customer from pune customer from hyderabad you can define it but truncate we cannot define it and also if you have if you have done some mistake okay you can roll back here the dml operation you can roll back unless otherwise you are committing it you can roll back it that is what user commit so we have to commit it unless it will it will not be stored permanently in the database that's what user commit merge and all then select operation dr you know right select selecting the data from the table it will select only it will not modify any data transaction control fourth one is transaction control it's a tcl we have three different languages called commit roll back save point i will tell you what is this committing means permanently we are saving the data in the database roll back means we can roll back up to last commit point save point means the bookmark we can make some bookmark and we can roll back up to that bookmark or commit up to that bookmark grant and revoke this one dcl data control language will be maintained by the dbs we are not going to have as a developer we are not going to have grant and revoke see these are all the different languages are available sql okay first we have seen create table just we have created the statement we just created the table called customer just we have created and we have to insert the data into the table this is what the syntax of the insert statement we can have this insert statement you can see here insert into table name all the column names the corresponding value you have to mention here values so what is the value here you can mention the customer id customer name and the mobile number mobile number and we have to mention the date column like this only date column like this only two underscore date of so we have to mention single quotes the date format and we have to mention the date format which is a format it's a mm dd yy why we are mentioning right so we are telling oracle that okay we are mentioning the format like this it's a mm it's a 4th august 20k okay chennai and then this is the email id see all the character column should be there in single quotes single quotes all the var char column should be there in single quotes so each and every column should be separated by the comma so you can have this and then you can insert the data into the table if you look at here we are going to insert just uh, enter that see we are getting some error invalid identifier if you are getting invalid identifier that means the column name is wrong okay that's what invalid identifier 
so here we have mentioned mobile but here we have mentioned like mobile number that's a reason so you can remove this and then try to insert it so we are getting one row got inserted okay one row got inserted then if you go and check this table you can have this data the one row got inserted here so you'll be having this so i have executed it it is available but if you go and check here select star from the table it is available but after that i'm going to roll back it remember i'm going to apply roll back if i apply roll back so that one rate data whatever we have seen it will not be there but the table structure will be maintained why create table is the ddl statement so ddl statement auto committed that's what the table is available in the sql server or teradata role there is no concept of roll back see whenever you are going to insert it all the data will get inserted automatically it will be committed okay there is no concept of roll backing and all so we have inserted the data so you can ins insert like this many data so if i go here you can go for see one more record you can go for one more record so here i have not mentioned the column name if you haven't mentioned the column name you can just mention insert into table name directly values you can mention the values here okay this is what just you can mention the values you can just insert it it will get inserted one row got inserted either you can go this way also then you can query this and one data is available you can query you can insert this also second record it will get inserted okay i have inserted two records then i can go and in, commit it just to commit commit you have to execute it executed then if you are seeing it two data are there after committing it if you are executing roll back it will not be rolled back it will say roll back complete it will not be rolled back okay you can see here this data will be there that's what you can understand what is roll back and commit okay ddl statements are automatically committed but dml statement like insert update delete we have to commit it so this is what we will go for the commit and roll back and we can we can have other columns also say for example i want to insert one more record i'm trying to insert but here i i may get error not enough values why why because in the table we have six columns but i'm mentioning only five columns so uh, since i do not have mobile number for this customer as of now i am not i do not want to insert it what i have to do either the mobile number column you can mention like this null okay n u l l null after this one i can mention like null or i can go for only that particular column alone i can mention here see what is the column so like this i have to mention by removing this mobile number column see look at here corresponding customer id customer id customer name name date of birth i have date of birth city city and then email id see all the columns so what what the data will be uh, inserted for this mobile number for this particular customer it will get inserted with null null okay null values i want to update this value after some time this is called update okay you can go for update see you can go for update here so i am mentioning like update okay here after inserting i am ju just committing it commits it will get committed then i am going for update see update you know, after committing it if you look at here so three records will be there okay what is the data for this particular mobile number it's a null you can go for update statement i can mention this mobile i'm going to update it it's showing like three rows updated three rows got updated why three rows got updated since i haven't mentioned the var class it has updated all the three records with this mobile number actually it is wrong right can i roll back to the previous state yes i can roll back why because its update is the dml statement you can roll back it will be rolled back up to last commit point you can see here it will be rolled back up to last commit point so this is what you can see here mobile number now you can update see so what update to identify this record i will use the customer id this id so i can use where customer id equal to this id customer underscore id should i make single quotes for this no need to have it's a numeric column no need to mention the single quotes select and then one row got updated if you go and check here table one row got updated see this is what mobile number got updated after update what you have to do 
you have to commit. You can ask me each and every insert and update. I have to commit a rollback. No, finally you can do it. No issues. Okay, finally wherever you want, it's based on the scenario you can do it. That is what update. Okay, what is the adding a column? So I want to add a column called the country. See after email ID, I have to make one column called the country. See whenever you are going for in Oracle, if you make two iPhone right, that particular line will be commented out. So add a column. Oracle will not execute this particular line. If you are making two iPhone, it's a commented out. Alter table, table name, add column, column name. This is the alter statement. I have given the, all the syntax. You can, can have this. Whenever you are adding a column, a new column will be added at the last only. You can execute table customer has been altered. It will be available here. Okay. Then you can go for select star from the customer table. One more column will be added. See, since you have executed the DDL statement here, right? Up to here, it will be committed. Okay, it will be committed up to here. You haven't committed here, but if you have executed DDL statement up to here, it will commit. Okay, remember this. This is also very important. Then you can see one extra column is there. Can I update all the customers from India? Yes, you can update. Just you can go for update this one. You can go for update customer set country equal to India. Then it will be updated. You can see here. It will get updated here. Okay, India. I'm thinking that I do not want this particular column. So can I drop this column? Yes, I can drop by using this drop a column. See here, alter table, table name, drop column, column name. Remember this drop column, column name. You can drop this one column will get dropped. Only one column. You can see here, this one column got dropped. Okay, you can ask me, see here I have updated I have wrongly updated. Can I roll back? Can I do roll back now? Whether it will get roll back? No. Why? Why? Because we have executed alter statement. Since we have altered, it will not be rolled back. It will show like roll back complete, but it will not be rolled back. Same data will be available. After update, since we have executed the DDL statement, it will not be rolled back. So this is what the uh, adding a column or dropping a column. And then you can insert the number of values and all. So this one, this is what you have to practice it. If you look at this table, customer table, you can see here we have loaded three records, three records and some six columns, right? Customer ID, customer name, mobile, date of birth, email ID and country. If you describe the table, if, if you describe the table, customer, it will show you the columns here customer id customer name mobile data birth email country see all the columns it will be displayed here right okay so now we can go for see now the thing is see we have we have seen how to alter how to add a column how to drop a column everything we have seen now if i'm going to insert this particular record in the table if i'm going to insert this particular record customer id customer name Okay. Mobile data birth in email ID country. I'm going to insert it. I'm going to insert. See here we have. I'm go, So here I have used to eight digit, but here I'm using nine digit. Okay. Here also I will use plus nine one iPhone. Plus nine one iPhone. I will use it. Okay. Plus nine one iPhone. I will use it. If I'm going to insert this particular data, it will not get inserted. You are saying that value larger than specified precision allowed for this column. So this is what you'll be getting the error. So what is this error, right? So this error due to this column and this column, okay, this column. This is data type itself, it is changing. Okay, so in order to rectify this one, I will check, I will describe the table, I will check it what is the column length and data type. Then I can go for reduce the number of columns. It's a eight digit, right, eight digit. I can go for some other digit like this. I can try to insert it. Now also it will not get inserted. We're showing like invalid number. So what is this invalid number, right? Since if you look at here, the mobile column should be a number of 10, but here I'm giving a var care column. See plus is nothing but it's a character column. Hyphen is nothing but it's a character column. That's why it is not taking. Invalid number means it is expecting a number, but we are giving a 
character count. That's why we are getting it. The thing is, our customers say uh, already mentioned that we have to go with this type of uh, column instead of only numeric column. And also you have to go with more columns. How can I do it? See, already we have the table like this. Can I change the data type? For example, from customer ID, can I change this into number of 10? I have to change it. Yes, it is possible. You can change it. And also this mobile, can I possible to change from number of 10 to where care 2 of 15? Where care 2 of 15? Yes, it is possible, but we have to do some work around. What is this? See, remember, if the table contains data, if the table contains data, you can increase the column length, but you cannot decrease the column length. Remember this. If the table contains data, you can you can increase the column length. Look at here. I'm going to increase the column length from, uh, from customer ID number of 8 to number of 10. I'm going to increase it. Whether it will get increased? Yes, it will get increased. We'll say like customer table has been altered. If you go and describe the table, you can see here the column has been increased from number of eight to previously number of eight, right? Now it has been increased to number of 10. But here, even after that, after changing it, can I change to number of nine? It is not possible. If the table contains data, it is not possible. Okay, if the table contains data, it is not possible. Look at here. It is not possible. So you will be getting error like column to be modified must be empty to decrease the precision of scale. If I want to decrease the precision of scale, you have to, the column should be empty. That is what, and also you cannot change the data type. Say for an example, the mobile column, I want to change the data type from number to where care to. Is it possible? If you look at here, this one I'm going to take. So mobile, alter table table name, modify column, the new length or data type. Okay, if you are mentioning like, if I'm going to execute it, it will not be executed, it will not be created. If you look at here, error you are getting it. What is the error? Column to be modified must be empty to change the data type. To change the data type, that particular column should be empty. In real time project, we do have the data. See customer ID, we have some customer ID. Okay, six digit customer ID, customer name is some name is there. Okay, mobile number, some mobile number is there. Okay, data birth, we are having some data birth. I can take some uh, data birth here. If I have the data like this, I want to change the data type of this one from number to where care. If the table contains data, you cannot change it. You have to delete, it's showing like the, you have to have empty column. That means it should have a null value. If you are deleting like this, right? In production, how will you, again, how will you make this mobile number for each and every customer? You'll be having millions of record, right? You cannot do it. So that's why we will do one, one workaround. First of all, we will take the backup of this table, backup of this table. How to take the backup? You can make customer underscore backup. We will take one backup of this table, then truncate this table. Second option, you can truncate this table. Since we have taken the backup, we can truncate the table. There is no data. Now you can modify it. It will get modified. After that, from backup to main table, you can load it, validate the data, and then backup table, you can drop it. Clear? See these things, you have to make it. So just you take the backup of table, you take the backup of table, then truncate the base table. Truncate means erasing all the data from the base table. Modify the data type now. Okay, modify the data type or decrease the length, restore the data from backup table and drop the backup table after data validation. So this is what we will follow. Okay, one scenario we have taken for truncate, modify and everything. This is a scenario, I will do it now. Okay, how to do a backup of table? Two ways we can do. One is, if you look at here, I will create a backup table, create table, table name, customer underscore backup as select star from customer table, customer table. It will create a backup table. It will create a backup table. So select star from customer. This is, these are all the scenarios we will use in our Informatica. Okay, these scenarios and all you will use. 
to take the backup of existing table. If you look at select star from, it is selecting the table. So same kind of select we have to create one table and just executing it. Customer backup table has been created. If you are using where one equal to two, what is the meaning, right? Where one equal to two. See, if you look at here, customer backup, select star from backup, it will create same like the main table, same like main table. It will create like this, all the data has been loaded. But if you are going for customer one, backup one it has been created. But if you look at this table, it will not load any data. It will create only structure. If you're going like this statement, it will create only structure of the table. So this is the way we will create a backup table. Okay, first we have created a backup table. Since we have validated data, you can truncate the table. The main table you can truncate. Don't truncate the backup table. Truncate the main table. Truncate table, table name, customer. Truncated. Truncate means it will delete all the data from the table. Select star from customer, it will truncate all the data from the table. Okay, you are thinking that I have wrongly truncated. Can I roll back? You cannot roll back. Why? Why? Because it's a DDL statement. If it is DDL statement, you cannot roll back it. If you truncate, that's all. Truncated, that's all. Okay, that's what we have truncated. Now, can I modify? Yes, I can modify it. Look at here. I'm going to modify it. I can modify it. It has been altered now. Okay, altered now. You can you can even you can decrease the length. Look at here. Previously we have taken like number of ten. Now yeah, now I have made it like a number of nine. Then if you are describing it, it will be described like this. Number of nine like this will be de described. You can see mobile will be where care two of fifteen. After that we have to restore the data, right? If you look at the customer table. It doesn't have any data. We have to restore the data. How will you restore? Insert into customer bracket select star from customer underscore BKP table. Okay. We want to select it. See whatever the select we are using that should be loaded into this table. Remember whenever we are using star here, the all the column structure should be same with customer and customer backup. It should not have any extra column. Three rows got inserted. After insert, you have to do commit. So why? Because after insert, we have to do commit. Okay, we have committed. Now, if you go and check here, select star from customer table, the data has been restored, right? We have the data. Now we can load with the plus nine one and all. If you go here, you can, previously we were getting this error, it been valid number, but now if you go and insert it, it will get inserted. One row got inserted, right? Inserted. You can see, go and check here, select star from the table. It will get inserted plus nine one hyphen. You can go up to 15 digit and also you can go up to nine digit here. This is what we have to modify it length. Okay, modify the length. Okay, we have seen these three and drop the backup table. If you do not want the backup table, you can drop it. Select star from backup table. You have the backup table called customer underscore PKB, you can see here the backup table is this is what the backup table. If you do not want this backup table, you can drop it. But before dropping it, say for an example, I want to delete this particular record from this table. Can I use delete statement? Yes, you can use delete. Delete from just I want to tell you how the delete will work. Delete from table name, delete from customer backup. If you are deleting it, all the record will, del will get deleted. Three rows will get deleted. Then what is the difference between delete and truncate? Truncate also is truncating all the data. Delete also truncating all the data. But truncate, we cannot roll back. If you look at here, after deleting it, if you look at here, there is no data at the table, but you can roll back. Okay, roll back. Before committing, you can do anything. It will be rolled back. Now the data has restored. Okay. Now I want to delete only particular data. I can go for where customer ID equal to this one, customer ID equal to this one, customer ID equal to this customer ID. Is it possible in truncate? No, it is not possible. That is what, this is the difference between truncate and delete. So delete, you can use where class and delete, you can go for the rollback. See after deleting it, if you look at here, the backup table, there won't be the data like this. And then I'm just, committing it. After committing it, 
you cannot roll back it okay do i need this backup table now no i can drop the table so drop table table name it will get dropped so table got dropped here that is what drop table we have done okay backup table you have to drop see whenever you are using that drop or truncate be careful don't drop it like a main table and all after that you cannot retrieve see in, even in our real time and all when we are going for any truncate or drop or delete so definitely our uh, project team ask us to create one backup table and then do the uh, this drop and truncate and all we will keep for backup for next 5 to 10 days after that we will purge the data see this is what we will go for the backup table and everything so i have given the code and then you can use it okay so now we can go for so what is this these are all the things we have seen create table we have seen alter uh, rename we will see now truncate drop insert update delete we have seen merge we will see at last commit and roll back everything we have seen now we will see the rename so what is rename we can rename a table or we we can rename a column say for an example here i want to rename customer table i have to rename the mobile to mobile number day dob to date of birth so how can i rename it's very simple alter alter table table name this is all the syntax you have to remember okay alter table table name rename i'm going to rename a column name okay rename column your old column name mobile to mobile underscore number this is what i have to rename it will be renamed right you can see here mobile column to be renamed okay now i want to rename data but same way the alter table table name rename column dob to date of birth date of birth so like this you have to change it the column will be renamed okay i have to rename the table okay how to rename it's very simple rename old table name old table name is customer to one i have to rename something like this customer underscore one i have to rename it. so i can rename it. table renamed if you look at here select star from customer table customer table you cannot see this table table are view does not exist that is what you will be getting the error so instead of customer you can go for customer underscore one you can able to see the data this is what you can rename the table and i hope you are clear about your uh, create alter rename truncate drop and everything so this is what the scenario here so you have the table just i'm creating this table just two columns i have created if you look at this table there is two column select star from customer underscore test you can see here two two columns are there so okay now i'm going to insert the data okay insert the data without any save point i'm trying to insert the record it will get inserted all the four rows got inserted you can see here select star from the table name customer underscore test if you look at this table then there are four records are there can i roll back yes i can roll back if i'm going to roll back it will be rolled back up to last commit point since we have been committed since we have created the create table up to here it will be committed so only table structure will be there okay you want to commit these two alone or you want to roll back these two alone then i have to go with save point concept see what is the save point right so here i can go for save point not it is not necessary that each and every record we have to go for save point it's based on the scenario how many records you want to go for save point you can go for the save point but think so how to use the save point look at here see whenever we are going to create a table right and inserting the data whenever i'm going to insert the data i have given the save point now i'm checking this right i want to roll back only this statement how can i do roll back to c i can use roll back to c up to here it will be rolled back up to here it will be rolled back only one insert statement you can apply roll back to c the roll back complete you will get only one record so this is what you can see this roll back but there is no commit here just you can see roll back up to this save point this is the save point okay you can do some bookmark 
I hope everyone is clear about all the statement. Uh, merge and uh, grant and revoke and all we have seen in the installation itself, grant and revoke, granting the permission. Normally, this will be taken care by DBS team. We are going, we are not going to do merge statement. We will see after some time. After this, we will go for select statement. So this is what you will be having a create, alter, rename. So kindly practice it, this one completely. Then only the next session will be useful for you. Hello friends, welcome to Nikkei Academy. In our today's session, we are going to learn about constraints. We have already completed two day sessions, introduction to SQL, RDBMS and Oracle DB and about schema setup and everything we have seen in our Oracle day one and how to create a table, what is DDL, DML, TRL, TCL and DCL we have seen in the day two session. Today, we are going to learn about all the constraints related to Oracle database. If you haven't watched my previous session, please watch the session without skipping it and practice it and come to this constraint so that it will be very easy to understand. I have given all the SQL notes and queries and exercises in the descriptions. You can download and you can practice it. This is the very first time you are coming to our channel. Kindly subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon so that You'll be getting all the notifications whenever I'm uploading a video. If you have any suggestions or if you have any questions, add comment so that I can respond to the comments. Thank you. Let us start our session. So in this session, we will learn about constraints, constraints in Oracle. This constraints is very important in Oracle. So constraint is nothing but Whenever we are going to insert the data into the table, before inserting the data into the table, we are validating it. If it is a valid data, we will insert it. Otherwise, we will reject that particular record. Okay. The data validation before inserting the data into the table, it's called constraints. Data validation before inserting the data into the table is called it as constraints in Oracle. We do have five different constraints in Oracle. The first one is primary key. And the second one is not null. Third one is unique check constraint and foreign key constraint. What is this? We will see one by one. If you look at this table, if I look at this table, you have the data, customer data and customers are located in different, different cities. So we do have operation in different four cities, Chennai, Pune, Hyderabad and Delhi. And here we have customer ID, like customers are located in different, different locations. Since I could not make all the data like customer data and city data in one single table due to this normalization, we have split this table into two tables. Whenever needed, I will join this one and this one. I can say this customer is from Hyderabad. This customer is from Delhi. This customer is from Chennai. So I can say this is called joining. Joining we will see later, later point of time, but this is what, okay. Before inserting the data into this table, I need to do some validation. So what is the validation I can do here? Can I give the same customer ID for one more customer? Is it a valid? No, we should not allow this record into the same table. Can I have null value without any customer ID? Can I have customer name? It is also not possible. See this, this particular validation, we can say it is a primary key. So primary key is nothing but if I give any column as primary key, that particular column will not allow any duplicate. It will not allow null values and also only one primary key per table. Only one primary key per table. In city ID, in city table, city ID is the primary key. City ID is the primary key. You can give this as a primary key. Then customer name. Can I have duplicate in the customer name? Yes, we can have two names. Two customer can have the same name, right? We can have. Can I have null value on the customer? No, it is not possible, right? Without customer name, I should not have any customer data. Here, I can go for not null constraint. Not null means it should not have any null value, but it can have duplicates. Not null means it is a not null value, okay? So it should not have any null value, but it can have duplicate value. Okay, the next one. Next one is called unique constraint. 
So what is a unique constraint, right? The unique constraint means the name itself suggests that it's a unique. It will not allow duplicate. It will not allow duplicate. So same mobile number. Can I have multiple customers? Can I have the same mobile number? No, it is not possible. But customer without mobile number, is it possible? Yes, we are allowing. Okay, we are allowing. This is called unique. So unique is nothing but it will allow null value. It can allow n number of null value in Oracle. Okay, it can allow n number of null values in Oracle. It will allow null value, but it will not, it will not allow duplicate value in the particular column. This is called unique constraint. Okay. Then age, age you can go for check constraint. So what is this check constraint, right? Check constraint will do, check means some data validation. I am checking whether all my customers are above 18 years, above 18 years, greater than or equal to 18 years I'm checking. So only that age I will allow. So if I'm going to have some 15 years, I should not allow this record. Okay, that's the record I should not allow. See, what is this column? I'm going to have this column as foreign key. Remember this, if I want to make a column as foreign key, it's a relationship between two tables. So here, if I'm going to have the column as city ID as the foreign key, since I have four different locations, four different cities, I have operations. I need to have customers from these four cities only, from these four cities only. Okay. Can I have 50 here? No, I should not allow. 50 is not valid or why? Because 50, in the city itself, I do not have. Is it a valid record? No, I should not allow. Right? So I should not allow this 50. And also, if I'm going to mention a column as foreign key, it should be a primary key in another table. We have to give the reference. We have to give the reference of these two tables. So this is what the foreign key primary key relationship. Okay, this one you can go for not null. Clear? What is primary key? What is not null? What is unique? Check foreign key and all. Okay, we can go for, can I have combination of one or more columns as primary key? Yes, we can combine this column and this column, then create as primary key. That will be a correct as composite key. That I will tell you what is composite key and all. Now I will create a table. If you look at here, primary key is nothing but it will not allow duplicate value. It will not allow null value. Only one primary key in a table. And in employee table, employee ID will be a primary key. Product table, product ID will be a primary key. Customer table, customer ID. User table, user ID. Accounts table, account ID. So like this, you can have a primary key. Okay. What is composite key? Like we can combine the column. You can make this column as the combination of column as primary key. Okay, we have to give primary key of customer ID and mobile number. This combination, we should not get the duplicate. In order to maintain some history, we will go for this composite key. We will, I will do it practically so that you can able to understand. What is not null? So it's a mandatory field. Whenever you are giving mandatory field, that asterisk symbol, that column in the back end, we, we have to define that column as not null column. Not null means it will not allow any null value, but it will allow duplicate value. N number of duplicate value, you can go for first name column or last name column as not null column or any column, we can go for mandatory columns. You can make it like a not null. What is unique? It will not allow duplicate since it is unique and also it will allow null value. So any number of null values will be allowed. Okay, check constraint. What is this? Check constraint. You can check whether age is greater than or equal to 18 or check uh, length of the zip code equal to six, six. That you can check it. Foreign key. What is foreign key? Relationship between two tables. Relationship between two tables. It should be, it will accept duplicate value. Foreign key will accept duplicate value. Okay, in one city, you can have many customers. Foreign key will accept duplicate. It should be a primary key in another table. Without primary key, it will not allow. And any number of foreign key in the table, any number of foreign key in a table, that's also possible. See how to create a foreign key? You have to create foreign key, city ID, references, city dot, city ID, city table, city day. If you are violating the foreign key, you are getting violation, integrity, constraints, violation, okay, constraints violated parent key not found integrity constraint violated parent key not found so this is what you will be getting the error integrity constraint violation error okay so if you are violating primary key 
will be getting unique key violation. Unique key also you will be getting unique key violated. Okay. You have to describe the table. You have to find which table we are getting there. Okay. So now I will create the table so that you can able to understand the create table and everything. Okay. Now, if you look at this table, create table, table name, customer ID, number of six. So second option, the first one will be a column name. Second option will be a column data type. The third will be your constraint. So you can give, I have given all the constraint in one single create table statement. Customer ID will be a primary key. Customer name will be a not null. Mobile number is a unique. Okay, unique as well as check constraint. Can I give two constraint for a single column? Yes. Okay, it's a depends on the constraint. You can give more than one constraint also. Here I'm giving unique constraint as well as I'm checking the column length. Length of the mobile number equal to 10. If it is less than 10 or greater than 10, I'm not allowing. Then age, age is greater than or equal to 18. City ID references city table, city ID, just I'm giving it. Okay, I'm trying to create this table. So while creating the table, we are getting the error. Table or view does not exist. Why we are getting error, right? Since we are giving the reference table, the reference table is not there. Okay, reference table is not available. If you look at here, select star from the city table is not available. This is a reference table. So that table should be available first. Okay, just I'm going to create this table, city table. It's very simple. I'm creating a table here. Create table, table name, city ID, number of four. City name, I'm just giving and create this table. Table city has been created. If you go down and then you can see here, I'm just inserting the data into the table. You can see insert into city values. I'm just inserting. I'll be executing all the records. After executing it, I'll be committing it. Okay. There is no, after executing, I'm just committing it. There is no duplicate value on the city ID. Okay. Now, can I create this table? Now, trying to create. Now, you will not get that particular error, but you are, not, you are getting some different error. No matching unique or primary key. So, this error, we are getting it. So, what is this error? No matching unique or primary key for this column list. What is this error, right? So, as I told, if you are referencing with another table, this table is this from this table, we are referencing another table. For this column, this is the parent. Okay, this is the parent. You can see here. So this is the parent, right? You can go for, so this is the parent one. So this is a child one. Okay, this is the child one. This table, this is the parent, this is a child. This is the parent. Customer table, this is the parent. Okay, customer ID will be a parent. This will be your child. Whenever we are referencing it, this should be a primary key, right? But we haven't, previously we haven't created as primary key. That's why it is not creating it. Customer table not able to create. You are getting no matching unique or primary key for this column list. So after that, after creating a table, can I make the column as primary key? Yes, you can make. So you have to use alter statement. Alter table city. Okay, city. So what is the column? You have to add primary key of primary key of city ID. You have to use city ID. To use city ID. Here. So what is this right? City ID is nothing but you'll be having primary key if you are uh, you're doing it. This primary key, this should be a unique value. This should have a unique value. Then only you can alter it. So table has been altered. Now I'm going to create this table. This table will be created. Now it has been created. Okay. So now I can check whether it is correctly validating all the data. Yes, we will check it one by one. So if you look at here, I'm going to execute the statement. We select insert, you know, we know already is insert statement or not. Insert into customer table values. This one, I'm going to insert it. I'm going to insert it. Everything is valid. 20 is nothing but it's a city ID. It's a valid record. I'm going to insert it. One row got inserted. Again, I'm going to execute the same statement. It will not get inserted. We are getting error like unique constraint violated why we are violating the two things one is we are violating the primary key and also unique key in order to rectify this error we have to go for another record can i have the 
same name here yes we can have okay the second column we have given us not null only we can have the duplicate so not null column will accept a duplicate but null value it will not accept look at here null value it will not accept next one null value i am passing here it will not be accepted cannot insert null into not null column this is the error you will be getting it you have to give the column here not null okay can i have the same mobile number here same mobile number here no you cannot do it you are getting again unique constraint violated okay if you are getting error like this right so in real time how will you identify which column we are violating which column we are violating how will you identify we are getting simply unique constraint violated since we have created we know just now we have created we know that this column has unique this column has unique but in real time project someone has already created you are trying to insert you are getting the error like unique constraint violated by describing it can you find it no by describing it you cannot find which column is unique column we can find which column is not null column but you cannot find which column is unique column so how to find it you have to go with one table called select star from okay all underscore constraints all underscore constraints this is the one table where owner equal to hr see data are case sensitive in oracle the data are case sensitive owner equal to hr and table underscore name equal to what is the table name table name equal to customer so you can use customer so for the customer table it will show you what are the different constraints are there since we haven't give the constraint name system itself it, it is defined the constraint okay here u is nothing but unique constraint r is nothing but preferential constraint p is nothing but primary key c is nothing but check constraint check constraint and not null constraint see you can see here all this but you don't know why which column it is right see here the unique constraint has been defined but you don't know which column it is right see is there any column with details here no here there is no column details what is the constraint name constraint name is 9883 so you can take this constraint name you will be having one more table all underscore constraints underscore column this is the table you can you can execute the statement now you can find what is the column name 883 right you can see mobile number is the column so you can identify okay mobile number we have defined as unique constraint okay do i need to manually check like this no you can go for join okay you can go for join like this you can execute the join query you can get the i have joined these two table all underscore constraints all underscore constraints uh, columns okay these two by using the constraint name just time executing it you can see whatever the column we here we have we can find which is the check constraint which is the primary key constraint unique key constraint all this you can execute the statement you can able to find which column is all this constraint has been defined so definitely you will be using this kind of uh, code in real time okay now this is what the primary key violating we will identify okay this this column is the primary key column we can go for another mobile number just you can execute it will get executed the one row got inserted now you can go and check this table select star from customer select star from customer table you can see this data will be loaded based on our validation only the data will get loaded you will not get any ages less than 18 if you look at here i am trying to insert the data with the ages less than 18 you will be getting violation like check constraint violated we are getting check constraint violated like this you will be getting the error then this one whether it will be inserted no it will not get inserted why because here 60 you are getting foreign key constraint that is integrity constraint violated parent key not found this is what you will be getting error integrity constraint violated parent key not found so what is that reason 60 is not available parent key not found see i am trying to insert 60 here the 60 is not available here that is what so either you have to add 60 here or you have to remove the city from 60 60 from here you can go for 30 itself 30 or 10 or anything 20 or anything you can go for i can go and insert 30 now it will get inserted you can see here 
select start from the table, all the data has been inserted with correct validation. You can commit it. Once inserted, you can commit it. Normally, this is what will go for primary key, foreign key relationship in our real-time projects. Okay. So this is what the primary key, foreign key relationship and all. Now, if you, if you look at this table, I'm going to delete this particular record, this particular record from this table. I want to delete this record from the table, table called customer. Is it possible to delete? So now I'm trying to delete, delete from table name where customer underscore ID equal to some customer ID. This customer ID, I'm going to delete it. Which delete? So I'm going to delete this customer ID. Is it possible to delete from customer? Yes, it is possible. You can delete it. From this table, you can delete it. Okay. From this table, you cannot delete. So for an example, I am trying to delete city table. Delete from city where city underscore ID equal to 30. I am trying to delete it from the city table. I am trying to delete this table city, but it is referencing here. Okay, you cannot delete from here. So you cannot delete from here. Integrity constraint violated child record found. See what is this error? Child record found. That means for this record, we have the child record. For this 30 here, child record found. That's why we are getting error. In order to delete this one, we have to delete these two first, then you have to delete here. Okay. You have to delete these two first, then you have to delete. So how to delete? Delete from table name where? Again, we have to delete the city ID from here. Okay, city ID delete customer table. Customer table two rows deleted. Then you can delete it. It will get deleted. Look at here. So that is what. But I am not doing anything. I will be going for rollback. I'll do rollback now. So this is called parent key child relationship. Model. Okay. Now I have one more option called on delete cascade. So what is this on delete cascade? Right. It's nothing but Whenever I'm deleting a record from this table, the corresponding record in this table, the child should also be deleted. This is called on delete cascade. If you are deleting here, the child also cascading that. Okay, that's what on delete cascade that error. Okay, so how to do it? First of all, while making the table itself, while making this column itself, we have to make on delete cascade. So like this, we have to make on delete cascade like this you have to make since we haven't made this options while creating the table after creating the table is it possible yes it is possible how to do it so we will check what is the constraint name we will check the what is the constraint name here we will check it what is the constraint name constraint name is there for hr schema just execute for hr schema what is the relationship constraint we have this 84 at 84 we will we will drop it drop constraint constraint name just we can drop see here so why i am dropping it already constraint we have created without on delete cascade just i am dropping this constraint this one this is this is a relationship constraint right i will drop this constraint the foreign key constraint now it has been deleted okay so you cannot delete as it is that's why i have checked what is the constraint name i have deleted now now I'm going to create this table foreign key. I'm going to make it this column as foreign key with on delete cascade option. Okay. Alter table, table name, alter table, table name, add constraint, constraint name I'm giving. This is system constraint. Now I'm giving a constraint name. Foreign key of city ID references city, city ID on delete cascade. Since I haven't given previously, I have just, I am executing it. It will be given now. You can check here. So all will have the system constraint name, but here, since we have given the name, it has taken, this is called constraint. Okay. Now, if I'm trying to delete this record from here, so you look at here, select star from city, select star from city. You have, you have four records, select star from customer. How many records we have? We have four records. I'm trying to delete 30 from the city table. How many records are there before deleting it? 
four records are there in customer. I am deleting only from city table record 30. Okay, how many records should be there in city? Three records. 30 should be deleted. Customer also, the 30 record got deleted. Okay, I have deleted from here only. From here only I have deleted. Since I have given on delete cascade, has deleted the child table as well. So that is why the on delete cascade is very, very important. Okay. So in real time and all, they will ask in interview, what is meant by on delete cascade and all. Okay, this is what you will be having. Uh, if I want to check metadata tables, all the column, table name, column names and everything, you can go for all underscore tables. All underscore tables where owner equal to HR, nothing but schema name. See, these are all the tables are available in HR schema. You can check all the table list. And also all underscore tab underscore columns. All tab column means column level details will be there. I want to find out in HR schema how many tables salary column is present. How many tables column salary is present. See, these many tables salary column is present. Okay. The column name salary is present on these tables. So like this, you can check some metadata tables, all underscore table, all underscore table, underscore columns, all underscore constraints, all underscore constraint, underscore column. See, these are all the metadata tables uh, we can have in our Oracle table. Okay. So you can check it. So now I will go to the, I hope you are clear. If it is a little bit confusing, don't worry. Just to practice it. If you are practicing it, definitely you can able to get. Okay. I will tell you what is composite key now. What is composite key? I will drop the existing table. I'm going to drop the table. Drop table. Drop table. Table name. Can I drop customer table or can I drop city table first? Drop table city. Can I drop it? I'm going to drop. You're getting error. Why? Because it is referenced, foreign key reference. First, you have to drop this table, customer table. And then you have to drop the city table. This is what the parent key, parent and child. Okay. So why I have dropped? I'm going to create a table with composite key. Look at here, composite key. So like this, I'm trying to create. Since we have dropped the city table, we are getting the error. This error we are getting. Okay, table are view does not exist. So I'm going to create this table with the primary key. Table has been created and altered. Now I'm going to create this table. Create table, table name. This the customer table I'm trying to create with customer ID, mobile number as primary key. Okay, customer ID and mobile number. Both the column as primary key. Okay, what is the use of this one? You can look at here, insert the table like this. Okay, look at here. So I'm going to insert this record. It will get inserted. Again, I'm going to insert, you'll be getting error. Unique constraint violated. Why? Because the combination again, I'm repeating. Same, same statement I executed. If I'm going to insert this particular record, it will get inserted. Why? Because here, even though this is a same value, since we are not giving this column alone as primary key, we have given both combination as primary key. Since this is different number, this will allow now. Okay. Same again, it should not be repeated. Look at here. Same zero should not be repeated again. Okay. Can I have the same mobile number with the different customer ID? Yes, we can give. That is also allowed. So you can look at here. So different, different data, same earn only. But here, same customer ID, but different mobile number. Here, same mobile number but different customer ID. The combination should not be repeated. Okay. That is called a composite key. In order to maintain a history, we'll go for a composite key. Can I have where care column as primary key? Yes, we can have. See, can I have where care column as primary key? Yes, we can have. See, if you look at here, country table, so I'm country code, customer country code, I'm creating as primary key. And country name I'm making like, both are like where care. If I'm going to have this one, See, first record will get inserted. Second record will not inserted. Why? Same ID we are passing. Same ID we are passing. This is the primary key. So this one should be a US. Then it will get inserted. Can I have bad care column as primary key? Yes. See, I have given the 
uh, all the statement I have given. Please go through this and practice it day two, and they'll be doing the hands on all the constraint related questions. You can ask, you can go through that, what all the different tables are there, just to practice it. You can able to get all the constraint related stuff. In our next session, we will see the select statement. Before go to the next session, please complete the exercise on day one and day two. All the exercises you try to complete day one, day two, day three. All the day threes you have to complete it. Okay, next session we will meet. Hello friends, welcome to Nikkei Academy. In our today's session, we are going to learn about session four, select statement. In our previous session, we have seen, so first session we have seen what is SQL, what is RTBMS and we have installed and then we have seen the setup. And second session, we have seen all the DDL, DML, how to create a table, alter the table and delete, truncate, drop everything we have seen. And third session, we have seen the constraints in our Oracle, all the constraints like primary key, foreign key, and check constraint, not null, and unique constraint, all the constraint we have seen with example. And then we have seen what is on delete cascade and everything we have seen. And what are the metadata tables are there for maintaining the constraints that we have seen. If you haven't watched the previous session, please watch the previous session in the order. Then you come to the fourth day session. It will be useful for you. And moreover, you have to practice the session. I have given the all the SQL queries in the link, you can download and you can install the software and you can practice it. Thank you for watching the session. Let us start our session. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe the channel and click on the bell button so that you'll be getting all the notifications. Okay, in our today's session, we will learn about all the select statement and single row functions in Oracle. The single row functions and select statement will be used in Informatica or any other languages, any other softwares, any other tools very much. So watch this session without skipping it. And also uh, you can practice it. You have to practice it. Then only all the single row functions will get memorized. Okay. So now we will have this. See, in our HR schema, we have a table called employees table. So we have the table called employees table. If you look at here, this is employees table in our HR schema. You haven't installed Oracle software. Please watch the installation and then install it and then practice it. So select start from the star is nothing but all the columns. So we'll be having all the columns here. So how many columns are there in the table? All the columns will be populated here. Okay, star, and we haven't mentioned any where class, so we'll be getting all the rows. So in our HR schema, how many records are there? You can right click on the data, you can go for count rows. We'll be seeing 107 records. So totally we have 107 records, all the 107 records with all the columns you are getting it. But if you want to restrict some columns, you can go for, you can restrict some columns here. You can see here, we can mention the column names. So employee ID, first name, email, hire date, salary, department ID. See out of 11 columns, we have just mentioned some six columns. We can see here all the six columns here. Only six columns will be showing here. Okay, this is called restricting the column. And we can go for something called alias. So alias is nothing but, for an example, if you are looking at here, the employee ID as associate ID. Okay, associate ID. Just I'm making that it's alias name. Okay, alias name. This is called column alias. Column alias is nothing but we can alias the, we can give while selecting the column, you can give some other name. Okay, look at here. This column has been aliased with associate ID. It will not physically renamed. We have seen in our previous session, renaming a column. Renaming a column is nothing but it will physically change the column name. But alias is nothing but it will, while selecting it, it will change the column. Okay. So either you can make this way or you can go this way also. The column name, you can mention space some name, it will take it as alias name. If you look at here, so this is what it will take, the alias name. This is called alias name. Either you can mention this way or this way. If you look at here, I'm going to make the column employee ID, first name, 
come on last name also i'm going to make last underscore name ma i'm going to make first name and last name i'm going to concatenate so how to concat this is called column concatenation so i want to make concatenate of both the columns you can go for column concatenation column concatenation so concatenation is nothing but you can concatenate the column i have the first name last name i want to concatenate both i can mention one more time here comma make it like concatenation is nothing but concat of the column names concat concat of we can have first name comma last name okay if you look at here this is what we have first name comma last name you can alias it as full name or we can make this way as full name full name if you look at here this will be denoted as full name but i need some space between the first name and last name so how can i make space here so in order to make the space if i'm going for concat this concat function will take only two arguments first you have to take single quotes okay single quotes we have to take one space one space with single quotes then again you have to go for concat see concat of this resultant comma last name why because this concat function will take only two arguments first concatenating by using first name and space and the resultant i'm concatenating this one this is called nested function okay nested function we can see here full name we can see this is the full name if you look at here the column concatenation either you can go this way or you can go for pipe symbol first name pipe symbol last name okay space and last name pipe symbol you can go for above enter you be having two pipe symbol so you can use this and you can have the single quotes again pipe symbol last name then you can make this as full name okay this is what we can go for this is also called as column concatenation so you, you can see this concatenation many many uh, times you will use concatenation in our real time project please make sure that say for an example if i'm going to give here so this way so i forgot to mention the salary comma here what will happen i forgot to mention comma here higher date i forgot to mention comma salary so whether it will throw error no it will not throw error it will give you the higher date column as salary see here higher date column with the alias as salary why because here whatever the column name comma whatever the column name space some name we are giving it will take it as alias name okay it will not throw error so this is also a column alias okay next one is called column calculation so you can see here column calculation so we can go for something called column calculation is nothing but i have the salary port salary plus 1000 i'm adding 1000 dollars with the existing salary will be having the new salary so here new salary you can see salary column and then 1000 dollar has been added as new salary salary's name this is what you can able to see here okay this is called column calculation so we can do i want to know the instead of new salary i want to find out annual salary this is salary into 12 i can make this as the annual salary annual salary here you can execute this will be your annual salary okay so this is called column calculation you can go for plus symbol of any number of columns we can make plus symbol of any number of columns it will be calculated the values but it should be a numeric one so if if i have many values they have many values in the if you look at here's employees table i will show you the data so that you can able to understand so this is employee id you will have the unique key so here it's a primary key unique values will be there then the first name last name email id phone number of the employee hire date and then job id that's a designation and then salary commission percentage so commission percentage means whether this particular employee is getting commission for the particular month or not some of them are getting commission some of them are not getting commission manager id department id so you have all the employees are working in different different departments okay you can say see this uh, department here okay this is what the department id will be there okay i can go for i want to know how many departments are there 
So if I'm going to select only select a department ID, department underscore ID from employees, you can see only the department ID. You can see the department ID. See all the 107 records would be selected. But I want how many unique department IDs are there? 90 we have, 60 we have, 100 we have, right? How many unique department ID do we have? Then that's called distinct. Okay, distinct. Distinct department ID. You can go for these are all the distinct department ID. If you want to make order by, you can make ascending order. If you click on this one, it will make ascending order. From 10 to 140, we have all the departments. So some employees tagged with null value. Null value means the some employees not tagged with any department. That's what we have the distinct department ID. Okay, how many distinct department IDs are there? So how many distinct department IDs are They can go for count. So you can go for count. See, remember the count will not consider null value. So only it will it will it will show you only 13. So 13 unique departments are there. That's what it will give you. Any aggregate function will not take the null value. It will not consider the null value. This is called distinct value. Distinct. We are taking the distinct. Okay. Column concatenation, column calculation, column alias we have seen, column distinct we have seen. Now we will go for something like a where class. The where class is nothing but restricting the data. So you can see where class. I will show you. I have given all the uh, nodes. So please practice it. See, I'm going to use this where class. This is basic where class only. You can go for n number of where class after some time, some complex where class. Select star from employees where salary greater than 10,000. Those who are getting more than 10,000, it will be taking. So that's what we'll be getting. The those who are getting more than 10,000 here. Okay. Those who are getting less than 3,000 as salary, it will be uh, populated here. Okay. I want to take here. You go here. These are all the salary. You can take different, different views. If you look at here. So this is salary greater than 5,000 and less than 7,000. 5,000 and 7,000, it will not include 5,000. Why? Because it's greater than 5,000, less than 7,000. It will give you salary between this 5,000 one to 7,000, uh, less than 7,000. It will not include 5,000 and 7,000. If you want to include, you can go for greater than or equal to less than or equal to something. Uh, you will be getting the 7,000 also. You can go for between keyword. This between keyword will give you 5,000 to 7,000, it will include 5,000 and 7,000. It is equal to the above syntax. You can able to see here, 5,000 to 7,000. It will include the 5,000 and 7,000 also. It's a, so you have to make sure that if you are using between, you have to use and the keyword. Between 5,000 and 7,000, not between. That means below 5,000, greater than 7,000. That's what you will be having the not between. So you'll be having all the records here. So this is what you can use some where class on the numeric column. Select star from employees where department ID, department underscore ID equal to 30 I'm using. So what it will, it will fetch those who are working in department 30, it will be picked up. So you can see only the employees working in 30th department. That is what you can able to see here. And the employee need to work on 30 and 60 also. Can I use this way? No, I cannot use it. If I have more than one value on the same column, instead of equal, you have to go for in keyword, in department ID in 60 and 30 like this. If I have more than one value on the same column, same column, if I want to mention more than one, one value, then you have to go for the in keyword. So I can use in 30, 60, and you can use any other column, or any other value also. 70 also, you can use it. So this is what you'll be having there. 30, 60, 70, all this. I can go for not in also. Not in. What is the not in? So not in this particular value. So you can go for 30 and 50 and 80. So I'm going with this one. See the, those who are working other than these three department, I'm going to take. So that's what you can have this other than these three departments. You can get it. See 10, 20, then 40, then 60 like this. You are getting it. So this is called in, not in. You can go for any other uh, character column also here. So you can go for where job ID in. You can use like this. 
character column also you can go for where job underscore id in you can make something like single quotes you have to use single quotes and then job id i'm using the it programmer okay single quotes this is the character column right you have to go for single quotes so you can use how many see if i have more than one value on the same column you have to go for in keyword see in these three job ids only eight employees are working you can see here only these eight employees are working you can go for in or not in okay if you look at this one what is this condition where department id equal to 80 and salary should be greater than or equal to 10000 see if i am using and condition both the conditions should be satisfied the person the employee needs to work on 80th department and getting salary greater than 10000 so you can get this value and you can make this 80 and greater than 10000 here you'll be having the department id equal to 60 and r salary greater than 15000 r salary department id should be 60 or the salary greater than 15000 see here salary greater than 15000 right you can see here it is not from department id 60 so either one of the conditions should be satisfied that's all here you can go for nested condition also either the department id should be 60 or two conditions should be satisfied so that particular record only it will be taking so you can see you can validate this record so either the either the employees are working in 60th department or both the conditions should be satisfied you can see here this is what you can see the values and you can go for row number so what is the row number right row number means say for an example in in the real time project you'll be having millions of record in the table so always don't use select star from the table name okay if you are going to use it will get impacted query will not be working fine okay you the, the query may be hanged if it is transaction table or some other table if there is no partitions so definitely it will get hanged you should not use select star from the table name so if i have millions of data i want to sample i want to take only five records or ten records you can go for row number so each and every record in oracle will have the row number if you look at here i will show you the row number what is the row number you can see select row num row number comma row id row id from employees table so what is this row number right see the left hand side whatever you are seeing here so this is the row number see row number you are seeing this row number one two three four five all the 107 record will have the row number row number in future it will change for each and every record if you are deleting this particular record the row number 34 will become 33 but row id will not change it's a memory location row id it's a unique id for each and every record in the oracle database remember row id is the unique id in oracle database okay it will not change even if you are deleting this particular record this record will this row id will get deleted it will not be assigned to any other record after some time some time only it will, it will assign see here you have a capital letter small letter some special characters and all we have okay then this is what it will be making the row id then it will not be repeated in the near future okay so i want to select can i select row id comma all the column star can i make like this i cannot make like this so you'll be getting error can i make star with all other column remaining column no if i want to make star with other columns right you have to use like this you have to alias like table name as employees as e this is table alias previously we have seen column alias this is table alias table i, I have alias like e then e dot star you can make e dot star so this is what you can see each and every record will have the row number and row id row id is unique row number also unique only but it will change in the future but row id will not change okay this is what even if you are not aliasing like this you can make employees dot star okay employees dot star it will fetch you the same result so this is what you can go for so what is the meaning of employees where row number less than or equal to five you are selecting only five records see out of all the records you are selecting only five records the 
row number will work with less than or less than or equal to only it will not work with equal symbol it will not work with equal symbol it will not work with greater than symbol you can remember this okay always work with less than less than or equal if you look at this our table employees table select star from employees where commission percentage it has some null value commission percentage is null so if you look at this table if you look at this our employee table some employees are not getting commission some some of the employees are getting commission okay i want to know how many employees are not getting commission so is null is null is not null you should not do you should not make equal to null equal to null will, will not work okay you have to make is null is null is not null is null means those who are not getting commission is blank column okay blank empty null or same is not null is not null means those who are getting commission see this is what you are getting it okay how many of them are getting commission so i can go for select count of star you can make count of star count of star you can make it count of star 35 employees are getting commission how many employees are not getting commission not getting commission can i go for this way see this is the way you have to go with like where commission percentage is null so you can go for 72 you have to make select count of star you should not make any other column star means all the columns so this is what you have to make the values null value not null value all this you have to make this way okay count of star if you are making count of commission percentage what could be the result it will take only the not null value why because i i, I already told you that count will take only the values it will not count it will not consider null values so only 35 employees so this is equal to this one okay okay clear that is what you have to go with and so in our uh, in our our employees table if you look at this employees table right i am selecting only this select star from employees we are executing this one whatever i have selected that only will be executed in our employees table we have the higher date date column so i want to take only year part from the date column so i can go for something called character function so character i can use character i'm converting the higher date into character so this is date column this is character column so i'm i'm taking that only year part the only 2003 so you can alias it like year year of the higher higher date so i want to make year and the month i can go for two care of month you can go for month mm mm means number you will be getting mon means month you will be getting look at here i'm going to use mon see these are all very much used in our real time project so definitely if the database is oracle so look at here definitely you will be using it and it will be slightly changed for the other uh, other one if you are using m capital then first letter will be capital here m o n t h m o n t h means full uh, you will be getting the month you can go for d d you can go for d d d d is nothing but date so you can go for date and even you can go for day also see what is the day of this one either monday or tuesday if you want to first letter capital then first letter capital see monday tuesday wednesday that you have to use here like this so i want to know how many of them joined this particular year okay then i have to use where class right see where class you have to use i want to know how many of them joined on 2005 see this is the way i have converted higher date into character and i am using this one 2005 this is one other way other way we can use it in the to date column to date function i will show you after some time okay this is to date 2005 so those who are who have joined on 2005 you can take it here this is what you can take we can go for to date function also so this is nothing but those who have joined from september 2005 to september 2006 this is what only four employees joined this is what you can able to see here okay 
between you can use and you can use if i want to filter out the date column if i want to filter out that the month february month those who have joined on february month if i want to take in oracle this is what you can take and march 2005 march 2005 this many employees have joined and you know that whichever the employee has joined on monday you should not use day alone you have to use fm day okay fm day this is called format month okay so format this one so you can use you have to use fm day and then you can use this way also d also d means day weekday weekday one is nothing but sunday two is nothing but monday so you can use weekday so this is what you can use their monday or tuesday or something you can use it like this okay and what is dual so if you look at your dual is the dummy table so select start from dual is dual is nothing but dummy table so you will not have any any value in it so dummy table you want to go for and i want to i want to know what is the today's date i can go for system date sys date from dual i can go for say today's date is 19th december 2021 you can go for current day also current you can check it current underscore date you can go for current date if you can go for system time stamp also system time stamp it will give you the time stamp along with all this it will give you the time stamp you can see along with time stamp we can make select sys date plus 1 tomorrow's date it will show you okay sys date plus 10 after 10 days it will show you sys date minus 10 it will go for before 10 days so you can use any date column like this system date system date plus minus you can go for any columns okay this is what you can go for the columns okay now you can we can see the pattern matching so what is the pattern matching right i i do not know exact value of the column you can go for pattern matching see what is the pattern matching right like keyword you can use like keyword within single quotes if you know the value you can mention that value if you don't know you can mention the percentage percentage means if you are using two percentage left hand side you can have anything right hand side you can have anything in between so it will be coming anything so if you know the left hand side very well remove this and then ending with anything or you can keep like this starting with anything and ending with one value something okay this is what you can go for like keyword is a pattern matching if you look at here select star from employees where first name like a percentage starting with a first name starting with a a percentage means starting with a after that you can have any number of character any values okay starting with a can i make starting with small a oracle is case sensitive as i told in oracle data is are case sensitive if any value starting with a it will be any first name starting with a it will show you otherwise it will not show you starting with j yeah we have one employee starting with small j ending with small s okay lower case you can have ending with s in between you can have an so all the first name will be having a an in between and something starting with capital s ending with small n in between you can have anything that's what the meaning of this one so like this you can go for any pattern matching and what is this underscore right so if i'm using 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 underscore so seven characters it will be displayed the length should be seven characters first name seven characters length the first name six characters second character should be a that is what is this one first name should be six characters seven character see second character is a first name is six characters second character is a fourth character is t like this you can take something like you can go for select star from employees where salary you can make like keyword like like something like this you can have any characters one character you can use 500 what is the meaning it should be only four digit it should be ending with 500 salary should be four digit ending with 500 five digit 
ending with 500. So like this, five digit ending with 500. So like this, you can go for. So you can have zero zero also, zero zero or something like this. Any characters, okay, five characters, any characters after this. That is what you can go for the underscore. You can use underscore. So these are all the pattern matching and everything. Then order by class. So what is the meaning of order by, right? The order by is nothing but if you look at here, select star from the table name. It will select based on the employees. What is order? We have inserted the data into the table. We have uh, inserted the data in this order. That's what it is showing. I want to make order by. Order by first name I want to make. Order by first name. First underscore name. So this is what you can use. First name here. You can go for order by first name. Alphabetic order to make. See, whenever you are making art, order by right, see this capital A is different, small a is different. Based on the ASCII value, it will define. Okay. This will take the ASCII value of this one. That is what it will take. ASCII of A is different. ASCII of small a is different. Capital A is 65, small a is 91. So, based on that, if you look at here, it is making the order by. You can see here after W, you are having the J. Why? J is lower case. J, this John is lower case. It will not be coming with this John and all. Why? Because the ASCII value of this J is higher than the this, this W. That's why after this, you are having it. Based on the ASCII value, it will make. Okay. I can go for order by first name descending order. Descending order means if you don't use the descending, by default, it will make ascending order. Descending order means highest to least. So since we are the J is lower case, first it is coming, then after that you are having the descending order. So this is also descending order. Okay, I want to make order by descending on the salary column. Order by salary descending. I can make salary descending order. Okay, if you look at here, it is making the salary descending order. Okay, but how it is making the order? Two employees are getting same salary. If two employees are getting same salary, how it is ordering? This is the order. Then Shelley will ask question, why I'm the second person among us, right? Then how can I go for order? I can go for one more column. I can go for one more column. Order by salary descending, comma, I'm making higher date. Those who have joined very first to our company, based on the order, it will make. See, if you look at here, first it will order by on the salary column only, descending order. If you look at here, descending order. If we are getting any duplicate value on the first column, duplicate value on the first column, then it will go to the second order. Second order, the higher date. Higher date, June 2002, then August 2002. You can see here, here I have four records on 10,000 salary. Okay. 2002, 2004, 5, 6. It is ordering based on the second column. You can go for n number of columns. If it is column is value, we have duplicate value, then it will go for the second. The first column itself, order by, if you are making employee ID, it will not check second column. Why? Because employee ID is unique column. If you are using unique column, then it will not go for the second column. Instead of like this, order by eight, I can use. Order by eight is nothing but eighth column. See what is eighth column? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighth column is salary. Order by salary descending. Then sixth column is ascending. Higher date is ascending. This is what you can see. This is the value. Okay. Salary column, descending order, then ascending order. You can sometimes you will be seeing this kind of scenario, right? Select star from employees. Okay. Employees order by two, order by three, something like this. Order by three means star. We are making all the columns. So one, two, three, third column is the last name. It is ordering. Okay. So now is that same select star instead of star. I'm making employee ID. I'm making employee ID, first name. Okay. First name, email, email, and then salary. If I'm going to make order by three, is that order based on this last name? No. It will make first column, second column, third column. Third column is email. So that's what email column it will order. 
clear so whatever the column you are selecting that particular order it will make so this is the order by we can see i have mentioned everything you can go through this and you can have this so these are all some of the select statement in our oracle database please go through that all the select statement you'll be getting the idea and moreover you have to practice it you have to practice it then only you'll be getting a lot of lot of concept here i will post some exercises so you can complete that exercises then you'll be getting most of the stuff here okay then we do have single row functions in our next session we will see that single row functions hello friends welcome to nikai tech academy in our oracle sql series so far we have seen four days of session we have completed introduction about sql and then we have seen what is rdbms what is oracle db what is schema how to set up our oracle how to do installation everything we have seen in our first day and second day we have seen how to create a table and how to alter the table ddl dml drl everything we have seen and third day we have seen the constraints like primary key foreign key not null unique constraint and check constraint every constraint we have seen and the fourth day we have seen the select statement all about the select statement what are the different select statements are available in our sql that we have seen and today we are going to learn about all the single row functions in oracle so single row functions are very much used in our real time projects so learn the single row functions kindly practice it i have given all the sql queries in the description so please please follow it and you can practice it if you haven't subscribed my channel please subscribe the channel click on the bell icon so you'll be getting all the notifications let us continue our session in our today's session we are going to learn about single row functions in oracle we do have different functions single row functions aggregate functions analytical function that's a window function we have we will learn about single row functions the single row functions are mostly used widely used functions in our informatica sql pl sql queries this single row function we have to learn one by one very clearly if you learn this and then if you are practicing it so definitely you can solve lot of business logic by seeing it it will be looking like very uh, easy but the logic we are we are creating it right we, we may go for some nested function they would have used some nested function that time you should know what this function will do it's very easy only if you practice it it's very easy we will see single row function single row function is nothing but aggregate function we have sum of count of minimum of max of average of these functions will aggregate the data and then it will give you the result but the single row function each and every record it will give you the result okay that's what the single row function will do if you look at here i will share this document to you you can practice it no uh, no issues watch the session and then practice it if you look at here i'm selecting select employee underscore id comma first name and i'm making like upper of first name lower of first name init cap of first name length of first name reverse of first name see what is the upper of first name it will convert the first name into upper case this is the first name actual first name then it is making this first name into upper case lower case initial letter capital then length of the first name and reverse order of the first name this is what the function will do okay what is the use of these functions for an example i want to know how many of the employees named as john i want to know how will you make select star from employees where first name right first name equal to john so which john i can go for can i go this way right go this way it will select only this john only it will not select capital john or lower case john so you have to select then you have to go for r class r you have to use r class like this you have to use first name like a john r first name like this john okay capital john capital john r you can go for this way like small john so how many is there anything like yeah so we have some 
records, right? Mm -hmm. If you are using this way, only three records you are selecting, that's wrong actually. You might be missing two records, right? See, like this you have. But in real time, we cannot mention all the cases that you can go for upper case. How upper case? If you consider this is upper case of first name, it will make all the John into upper case, right? It will convert all the case into upper case. Then you can equate to upper case. If you look at here, where upper of first name, upper of first name, we are making the first name into upper case and then equate with upper case. Then you are selecting it. You can ask me, you are you are equating only upper case, right? Why you are selecting all the records? We are selecting select star from employees. This is where class only. Where class you are converting this into upper case and equating with upper and you are selecting the records. Okay, that's what you will not miss any value. Something like this country equal to India, you are getting it. If I use lower of address equal to Chennai, here you have to use like this lower of address equal to Chennai, lower case, upper of address equal to upper case. So, like this, you have to take. So, this is what the upper of lower of length of reverse of all this to be used. Substring function. If you look at the substring function, substring function will take either two arguments, string, given string and from position or three arguments. It's very simple only substring, given string, from position and number of character, number of character. If I'm giving like this, substring of welcome to India. Okay, substring of welcome to India. This is hard coded value. I'm just giving it. That's what I'm using dual is a dummy uh, table. 12 comma 5 starting position of the from position that is 12 and 5 characters. 5 characters not position here. 5 characters. What is the 12th position? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 is high. So from here to 5 characters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. India it will give you the result. Okay. Substring and instring is very much used in our Informatica. Please, you can practice it one by one. From position, then you can mention that. You can simply mention 12 alone. 12 alone. 12 alone means from 12th character, right hand side it will take. Okay. From 12th, right hand side it will take. You can make minus also. You can make minus, minus 12, something like this, minus 5 or minus 8. You can mention minus 8. What is the minus 8, right? Minus means from right hand side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So India, 3 exclamatory symbol, you will be getting it. I want to take only India. Only India, how to take? You can make minus 8, comma 5. Only 5 characters. So this is the way, this is the way you have to take it. Okay. And if I'm going to use like this, 1, comma 4. So what is 1, comma 4? 1 comma 4 is nothing but job ID from first character, four characters. From first position, I have to take four characters. From fourth character, I have to take what I can do? Four. That's all. Four comma four means from fourth character, four characters. From fourth characters, one underscore is there. If you look at here, one underscore is there in between. That's what from fourth character, four characters. Why three characters only we are getting? Only three characters. From fourth character, only three characters only available in this. That is what you can have the substring. You can have the substring here and you can go for minus and all this. This is called a substring. Okay. I can go for in string. In string will return position of the character. In string will return position of the character. What is that in string will do? If you look at here, in string of this value instring of corporate floor. So I'm having like R. So where is R? First occurrence of R it will give you. This is the first occurrence, right? You can take first occurrence of R. If I want to take second occurrence, see second occurrence, you have to mention this is R from first character, second occurrence. From first character, second occurrence. You have to take second occurrence is nothing but See, this is six for getting one, two, three, four, five, six second occurrence. So like this, you can take one comma two. What is AB? 
Carpet floor is there any AB? If there is no letter with AB, then it will give you A is there. But we are checking AB, then it will give you zero. If there is no matching, then you'll be getting zero. Okay. Zero means there is no match. From third character, second occurrence. This is OR. OR is nothing but from third character, second occurrence. Second occurrence. If you are giving only three arguments, three arguments here, three arguments, like this three, you are giving, see, we have given two arguments, we have given four arguments. If I'm giving three arguments, what will happen? So this is the OR, it is giving you the five. Five means this is the one it is taking from third character, from third character it will take. From third character, first occurrence it will give you. See, three comma one is same. 3 comma 1 is same. Okay. 3 is nothing but from third character, first occurrence. What is the first occurrence from third character? This is the one first occurrence, right? First occurrence. From beginning, it will count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. This is what. Even you are mentioning OR, it will starting position of the character, it will be return. So that is what? 5. Okay. If I am making like 4, 4. What is the result? You'll be getting same result from fourth character. If I'm making 10th character, 10th character, first occurrence. So this is the one it will return, 14th one. From here, you have to, run, have to check, it will be 14. So this is what it can go for in string. Okay, where it will be used normally in string and all. See how it will be used in string. In string and all. Say for an example, you have something like this character. I am getting see in, in our informatic and all. We will get like this. I am getting one particular uh, value like department insurance. I am getting value like this insurance and tilt symbol. I am getting the location as something like this. I want to take the location ID and I am taking HR department and location is something like 430, something like I have the value. So whatever the number of character you have, you have to take insurance alone, you have to take HR alone, the location ID alone, you have to split after the till symbol. So how can I take, I have to write the query to, to take insurance HR alone under 200, 430 alone. First, I, first we will write one query for taking the insurance alone. How can I take insurance? Select substring of sub str of substring of this is given string that's what i can make single quotes given string from first character how many characters i can mention how many character i have to mention one two three four five six seven eight nine nine characters one comma nine i have to mention can i do like this hard coded if i do like this it will work only for this value only this, this particular code will not work for this one. If I'm going to give this one instead of this one, it will not work, right? If I want to take instead of nine, I have to go for the dynamic way of finding the nine. How to make it? You can go for in string function where this position is coming, this tilt symbol, right? Find the tilt symbol. If it is tilt symbol position is 10, 10 minus one is nine, right? Then that you have to make it here. Can I make like this? Select in string of INS string of the string you can make. Where is the finding letter is the tilt symbol and then first occurrence, right? Where the occurrence you can go for from dual. From first position occurrence. It will give you 10, but I want to know the minus the nine up to nine, right? You can go for substring. It is giving you the 10. Okay, instead of nine, you place that minus one, minus one. It will give you correctly. I'm not hard coding the one value. Instead of this, uh, this value, right? If I'm placing this value here, it will give you correctly. See any other value is coming. See normally you'll go for column name here. Since I'm using hard coded one, it will work correctly. It will remove, it will take only HR from here. Same way you can take 200. You have to, here we have used minus one, right? There you have to use select substring of plus one. Substring of 
the given string plus one right hand side you have to take right plus one right hand side 430 and if you are giving this one it will take 200 correctly if you look at here it should take 200 correctly see this is what you'll be using in string and substring in our real time project so definitely this kind of uh, scenario we will be getting it in real time project and all they, then you will be taking it the same way if i'm having some some employees you are getting email id okay email id i want to take from this email id i want to take username alone from this email id i have to take username alone how can i take same way how we did it for this one right same way here also from email id instead of this i'm going for some other email id okay some other email id i'm going with email id of this one so i'm making this one so it will take correctly okay this will take correctly even if i'm going to make underscore here it will take the value correctly clear on this this is what dynamic code dynamic code we are writing clear this is what we will take in string and substring in our real time project okay next one is l pad so what is l pad right see if you look at here l pad l pad means left hand side padding that's what we have we have welcome it should be 15 characters if it is not 15 characters place star on the left hand side star on the left hand side you can see if you count it it will be 15 characters if you make a length of l-e-n-g-t-h length of this one it will become 15 characters if you are making 30 here yes it will be 30 so why because we are making 30 characters should be there if it is not 30 characters make star on the left hand side okay this is one star on the right hand side r pad is nothing but right hand side uh, whenever you are making something like a uh, uh, in the demand draft and all demand draft we are making we are making one lakh something like that you are writing after that they will be having some space right hand side right you can make that space for an example 500 characters they are giving 500 characters totally 500 characters you can make you have to write the maximum character is 500 if you are writing simply one lakh remaining characters you can make star on the right hand side no one feel, can able to fill right, fill right after writing it. That's what we'll be using this function, nested function. Look at here. Sometimes account number should be 15 digit. If it is not 15 digit, left hand, left hand side you make zero, right? Normally we will do in the bank account number and all. It should be some 12 digit. If it is not 12 digit, make left hand side. How many characters? Remaining characters you change it like zero. So this is what L pad. This is salary column. It should be a 12 characters. If it is not 12, left hand side, you make the zero. How many zeros? Remaining zeros it will add. It should be a 12 characters all the way. So this is what L pad and R pad will be used. Okay. Next one is trim function. Trim function. I have given some exercises on this uh, substring and instring. Please go through that. You can able to complete. In the description, I have given some exercises for the substring and instring, please complete that. The next function is called trim function. L trim, left hand side, if you have any space, it will trim. R trim, only right hand side, if you have the space, it will trim. Okay, it will not trim in between. If I have any space, it will not trim. Trim function, if I'm using left hand side, it will trim. Right hand side, it will trim. But in between, it will not trim. If I want to use in between, you have to go for replace character. That's what we will have. If you look at here, L trim means left hand side, it will trim. If I have space on the left hand side, it will trim. You will be getting like this. It will trim only on the right hand side. Left hand side space is there. It will trim both, but it will not trim in between characters. If I want to use rim in between, I have to use replace one. So in between, if I want to replace, you will see separately, but I will use here replace of this trim, comma, this is nested function. You want to replace with space with null. Space with null. Simply like this, you can use. This will remove the in between space, it will remove space. Then you are having without space. So, like this, you can make. This is what you can go for 
trim function with replace function or not. It's a nested function. In real time project or not, we will be going with nested function only. Okay. So you can use L trim or R trim for instead of space, you can go for some other character also. What is the meaning of L trim of this one, right? L trim of this one. Left hand side zero, it will trim. Left hand side zero, it will trim. That is what L trim, the character I have given, then I'm making that zero. It will left hand side, it will trim. If I want to trim some special character at all, you have to go for regular expression. That we will see separately. Okay, here, what is the meaning of this one? Here, only one character I have given, but here I have given three characters. It is not combination, it is not combined one, it is a separate one. Either zero, R2, R1 from the left hand side. Either zero, it will trim, trim, it will trim up to here, it will be trimmed. Up to here, it will be trimmed from the left hand side only. So you'll be getting from, from this one, you'll be getting all the records. Even in between you have zero or two one or something, it will not trim. Here, right hand side. See, right hand side, it will trim up to here. Six, five, you'll be having up to here. Okay. This one, both the side, it will trim. We are using nested function L trim, right trim off. Both the side, we are using left hand side up to here. Right hand side up to here. This is what it will do the trim function. You can use trim functions for space as well as num the character also. You can go for any other number character also. You can trim. This is what L trim and R trim. What is replace? Replace is nothing but I told, right? If I have the word called Jack and Geo, wherever J comes, replace with BL. Okay. J comes, replace with BL. It will, wherever J comes, it will replace with BL. Black and blue, it will convert. Okay. Wherever J comes, it will change to BL. What is this one job we are taking? Job is one of the column from employee. Wherever manager comes, wherever manager comes, it will replace with the boss. Okay. Think about one time we have the manager like this, one time manager like this, one time manager like this. So if the above, above syntax, the query will change only this one only. It will change this manager only. These two manager, it will not change it. If I want to change it, then you have to use upper of job, upper of job. You have to use upper of job. You are con you are converting job into upper case, then equating with manager. All they will become a manager. This kind. Then whenever manager comes, it will change it to boss. Okay. This is what the upper of lower of functions will be used very much. This is called replace. What is the meaning of this one? Right. Phone number. Replace of phone number. Dot comma null. This is dot actually dot command null see wherever dot comes wherever dot comes replace with null that means remove the dot from the phone number remove the dot from the phone number i want to add some plus nine one and all then you can go for single quotes plus nine one hyphen single quotes concatenation so like this you can use look at here plus nine one hyphen this is the way I want to make first five characters, then I find next five characters. How will you make? You have to go for substring. Substring, right? First five characters, I find next five characters. You have to use like this. This is what in real time on all, if they are asking some questions, you have to use first five characters. Substring, can I use? S U B S T R substring of this one, one comma five, right? One comma five, five characters. Concatenation single quotes, hyphen, single quotes, concatenation, then I can go for, you can go for six comma five, six comma five, look at here. See first plus nine one hyphen, first five characters, hyphen, next five characters. This is what you can go for. This is you can make new phone number. The alias name is called a new phone number. So instead of having column, this much level you can make alias it this is what you can have this this is phone number this is new phone number this is what the functions are used here we have used substring replace right and also we have used alias column alias so that's what to be used concatenation everything we have used in one single statement 
Okay. Then next one is called a translate. So what is this function translate will do, right? Position wise, it will translate. Say for an example, if I'm giving like this, A, B, C, D translate to X, Y, Z. If A comes, it will replace with the X. B comes, replace with the Y. C comes, replace with the Z. And D comes, it will replace with the null. So this is what you can use it. See, if I'm using the same thing for replace, whenever A, B, C, D comes, then only it will replace with X, Y, Z, right? If it is translate, position wise translate. A, it will position wise X. That is what it will translate. If I'm giving like this, then it will translate like this. See, welcome to Chennai. If I'm using like this, then translate. Wherever A comes, it will replace with uh, W. B comes, it will replace with X. C, position wise, it will translate. Okay. E and F, it will replace with the null. Why? Because here I do not have any character for six, fifth position and sixth position. This is what it will convert. Something like if you want to go for uh, some encoding, decoding and all, you can go like this. Okay. Then if you make reverse order, it will replace with the correct link. So you have to give this one, replace with this one. So it will be replaced. Okay. Then null values. If I want to deal with null values, if I do any arithmetic operations on null, you'll be getting null value only. So value plus null value, null. Value plus, that is known value plus unknown value, you'll be getting unknown value only. Known value minus unknown value, you'll be getting unknown value only. If you do any arithmetic operations on null, you'll be getting null only. If you look at here, we are the salary column. Select employee underscore ID, comma, first underscore name, comma, that taking the salary, comma, commission percentage. So what is the commission for this particular employee for this particular month? You can make, I have to make total salary. Salary plus salary into commission percentage. I can go for commission underscore percentage. This is what you can make total underscore salary. This is what total salary from employees. Total salary is nothing but your alias name. So you are executing it. Look at here for the employees who are getting commission your, the employee's salary this this much, and commission is this much, and then total salary we are not getting it. Actually, the total salary should be populated as twenty four thousand a year, right? But the the employees who are getting commission it is populating correctly. Why? Because salary into commission if it is null value, null. Okay, this is null. Null plus salary you are getting null value again. That's what we are going with the total salary as null. Okay, we should not go like this. We have to go with the function should be uh, used. What is the function, right? To deal with null value, we have four functions. One is NVL, NVL2, null if, and collage function. What is NVL? No value or null value. That is called NVL, NVL2 and all. NVL, it will take two arguments. NVL2, it will take three arguments. Null if, it will take only two arguments. Collage function will take n number of arguments, okay? You have to practice it, then only to, you can able to understand this. If you go here, NVL of argument one, comma argument two, if argument one is null. So what is the meaning? If argument one is null, it will take the argument two. If the argument one is not null, it will take this value itself. NVL of five, comma six, it has value, so it will give you five. NVL of null, comma six, it will take six. Okay, that's what it will give you the result. You can see here, NVL of 5 comma 6, it will give you 5, null comma 6, null. Null comma null, it will give you null only. Both are null, so it will give you null. So that is what the NVL function will do. Where it will be used? You can use like this. Say so like this, you can use NVL of commission percentage, comma 0. What is the meaning? If commission percentage is null, replace with zero that's the meaning then it will calculate correctly okay if it is null replace with zero zero plus salary you'll be getting zero here so look at here so you'll be getting zero zero into salary zero zero plus salary salary that's what you are getting the salary here those who are getting commission also calculating correctly so that is what nvl function used in, the, in our real time so whenever you are you want to deal with any arithmetic operations on null, 
you have to use nvl function or coalesce function also coalesce function it will take n number of argument it will return first normal value okay what is that nvl2 nvl2 as i told it will take three arguments if nvl if first argument is null remember first argument is null it will take the third argument it will give you the result third argument if it is not null it will give you the second argument it's like a if then else logic okay if you look at here this is what you will be getting nvl2 of 4 comma 8 comma 12 what could be the result it should result give you the 8 if it is not null it will give you the, this one if it is null it will give you 12 okay third argument so where to be used if you look at here i do not have any table like this but uh, for an example this is what to be used in our real time project see we have the employee id employee name allocation id if the employee has any allocation id if it has value then it will show like allocated as employee allocation status if employee id is null then waiting for a project it will return this one Either it will return allocated or waiting for a project. It will not allocate, it will not return allocation ID. Allocation ID we have to select here. That's what we can go for if then else logic. Okay. So now null if. What is a null if, right? So null if is nothing but we can take two arguments. If both of the arguments are equal, then it will give you a null. If not equal, it will give you argument one. So null if of five comma eight. If not equal, it will give you the first argument. If both are not equal, it will give you the first first argument. If it is equal, then it will give you null value. Where it will be used? See the, the both statements are same. The above one is same, the below one also same. The both the SQL queries are same. First name equal to last name. Our name is first name equal to last name we are checking here also we are taking first name equal to last name what is that meaning if both are equal you'll be getting null correct null if of this one you'll be getting null equating with null that's what you'll be getting the same result if i want to confuse you in the code i can take like this okay i can write something like this both are equal only okay this is what null if function college function you can go for n number of arguments it will return first not null value. Okay. It will return first not null value. You can see here we have used uh, salary, right? You can go for instead of NVL, you can use college function. Also, both are same. If you look at here, both are same. So, where it will be used in our real time? If you look at here, I'm going with uh, this one. This is also another example. I'm, I'm making commission percentage, manager ID, and department ID. Whatever the first not, not null value, it will return. If everything null, it will return zero. If you look at here, first not null value is 90, right? 90. First not null value 100 is returning 100. So some of the values are first not null value is 0 0.4. We are getting the 0 0.4. Like this, you'll be getting the coalesce function. Where it will be used in our real time? Look at here. So I'm collecting from, from our em employee or customer, I'm collect collecting mobile number, official number, then residential number. Some employee giving mobile number, some employee giving both, some employee giving all the three, some employee giving only office numbers, only residential number. Some of them are not giving. But our preference is if they have given mobile number, take that mobile number. If they haven't given the mobile number, check for office number. If both are null, you take the residential number. If everything is num null, you take the you return like no phone number. That is what you can go for the coalesce function. Clear? This is what will be used here. Okay. Then round function. See round and truncate. We do have numeric function here. Uh, you can go for round function and all. See, look at here round function. So what is round? Round. It will make if it is more than 0.5, it will give you the next value. If it is less than 0.5, it will give you the base value. Round of 0 0.7. If it is more than 0.5, it will give you 1 as the value. 2.8, it will give you 3. 4.35, it will give you 4. This one also, 5.35. This is decimal. 5.35.78. 0.78, we are, we are giving it. And 0.7 is more than that. 
will give you 5, 4, 3, 6. Okay. 5, 4, 3, 6. Here, 5, 3, it will give you 5, 4, 3, 5 only. Then, here we have 5, 4, 3, 5 point, 7, 8, 2 decimal point. I am giving two argument here, 2 decimal point. Consider 2 decimal point here. The third one, if you are considering is more than 5, it will give you 7, 9. It will, it will give 1 carry forward to the previous digit. Then it will give you 0.79. Why 0.79? So 0.2 decimal point. Okay. The third one is more than 5. It will give you 1 carry forward. Here 2 decimal point. See, since it is 9, 9, it will give 1 carry forward here. 5436, it will give you 5436. Okay. Here you can go for 3. So what is 3? Three? 3 digit. But here 4th digit is 2. Then it will give you 783 only. But here four digit, so one, two, three, four. But fifth digit is five, it will give you three, three. So like this, you can go for. Even you can go for minus also. What is minus two? Minus two means, or minus one. See what is minus one, minus two and all. Minus one, minus one means here, it will go for minus side. From decimal point, left hand side, it will go. Minus one means it will make this as zero. If it is making this, this as zero, since it is more than five, it will give you one carry forward. It will give you five, four, four, zero. Okay. It will, the value will get increased. But here, if I'm going to use zero, something like a four here, three, four, I'm using. It will make this character as zero, but since it is a four, it will not give any carry forward. It will give you three, zero only. Okay. Three, zero only. That's what it will give you. Look at here, minus two. You can take minus two. Minus two, just to practice it, then you'll get it. Minus two, minus one means here. Minus two, this one. It will make both of the digits as zero, but the, the last digit is three. It will not give any carry forward here. So five, four, zero, zero only. But if I'm giving six here, it will give you what is the value? It will make zero here, zero here, but it will give you five here, five, five, zero, zero. Okay, that's what you'll be getting minus characters in round function. See, whenever you are going for round, either it will go for left hand side or right hand side, base value or highest value. So if I have one, one here, either it should take more than 0.5, it will take one. So less than 0.5, it will take this value, right? This value. But trunk function, trunk function always it will take the base value. Trunk function always it will take the base value. Remember this. So if I'm going to use the trunk function, always it will take the base value. Trunk of 0 0.7878 it will give you 0, 5435. This is also 5435. It will take always two decimal point, 78 only. 3 decimal point 783 only. No need to calculate here. 4 decimal point, it will take 4 only. So even you can go for minus and all. You can go for minus. If I'm going to use minus, so minus 2, I'm going to use minus 1 or minus 2. So minus 2, it will make 0, 0. It will not make any upward and uh, it will not go for any carry forward and all. Okay, it will take this. This is called trunk function. Trunk function, you can use it in the date timestamp function also. You can use it trunk. So, what is system timestamp? See, if you are getting if in, in Oracle, if you are getting any any column with the timestamp, if you want to take only date column, use trunk function. Use trunk function like this. Trunk of system system timestamp, then this is what you'll be getting. The only date column you'll be taking. Ceiling and floor. So, what is the ceiling and floor? Ceiling means always will take the top value. Floor means it always will take the base value. Ceiling and floor here. If you look at here, ceiling and floor. Floor means base value. Always will take the base value. 5.999 is almost equal to 6, right? But even it will take 5 only. This is also floor. Floor means in our home, we have the floor and ceiling, right? Ceiling means always will take the top value. This is almost equal to 5 only, right? Look at here, 5. 
5.000.0.1 so almost equal to 5 only but if i'm going to use ceiling ceiling is highest value next value so it will take 6 only okay so ceiling and this one we cannot go for any argument so only single argument it will take what is mod function mod function will return always remainder in the division operation it will give you the in the division operation will give you the remainder what is the remainder 55 comma 4 remainder you can make 3 same way what is the remainder for this it will give you remainder as 1 where it will be used if i have the higher date if i want to take only leap year I can go for mod of, you know, already two care of this function. This function I'm taking the year part alone, then dividing by four, for zero, those who are, those who were hired on leap year, leap year, 2004, eight, all this leap year you are getting. Not equal to zero, you're getting non-leap years. Okay, non-leap year. Then you can go for odd number, even number. So this is what you can use the, functions so odd number even number so alternate record if i want to take you can use like this so these are all the functions practice all the functions okay i have given the notes in the description follow it practice it okay next function is called month between so month between is nothing but if you give two dates it will find how many months are there in the between two dates month between two dates so here is the syntax month between date one comma date two. If you consider this particular statement, you consider this particular statement month between. So this is the month you can see here. So just I have given two, two date of two date of just I'm giving the month one date. I'm giving one, one, 2022, one, one, 2010. So we have almost 10 years. So how many months are there between these two date? We can find okay. 120 months. So it is an alias name, column alias, we can see. So this is the 120 months. So if you consider next one, next date, so a month between today's date, system date to 112K. So how would it be that? So if you consider, so this is a month between 2000. So you can execute almost 21 years, right? So we have these many months. So now it's giving this, this many uh, decimal point. If I want to convert this decimal into normal one, you can go for round off. So round off this particular one comma, we want to give some decimal point. I can give decimal point or if you do not want to give the decimal point, we can remove it. It will get round off. So here, so this is what it will be round off 264 months. So this is what we can do. The round off function also we can do it on the result end. Okay, next one can go. This is month between. Next one is days between. How many days are there between two dates? We are the date one minus date two. We can give. So here, if you get, if you see here, so this is what we can see. So this is one date. This is another date. So this will give you how many days are there between this date. So if you, we can see here, select this date. So we can give this date minus one particular date. I can give from system date to so this particular date, how many dates are there? We can define this one comma and give this one from dual. So from dual can execute, it will give you these many days are there between these two dates. Okay. These are all the month between and days between we can find. Next one is called next day. So next day, this function will give you next weekday of the given date. So if I'm going to give 31st March 20, then this is what the next Friday after this date, when is the next Friday? So you can go for this particular date. Next Friday is coming on 3rd April 20. So this is what we can see the one. And I want to know from today's date, from today's date, when is the next Thursday? If I want to find out next day, this date of next Thursday, it will find you, it will give you, okay, next day, Thursday is coming on. 23rd December 2021. So this is what we can go for next day function. Okay. Next one is last day. Last day function will give you last day of the given month. Whatever we are giving that last day of the given month. If I'm going to give 
last day of the system date this month last date this month last date 31st december 2021 so this is what it will give you and then last day of this date plus 25 i'm adding 25 dates with this today's date then if i add this this one it will become any date in between the january so it will give you january last day 31st jan 2022 so this is what you will be getting it the result and when this will be equal system date equal to last year of six uh, six date this will be equal only on month end only on month end it will be equal whenever we want to run any job on last day of the month we can put this logic ne then next function is called add month add month is nothing but so you can get the date so if i want to add number of month you can give the add month here so from this date i want to add three months then i can go for add month of this one it will add three months from this particular date this is november 1st 2003 so this is what it will give you and i want to say for an example sometimes you will make some loans for five years right then i can go for if i'm going to take one particular loan when is the closure date i want to know then 60 is nothing but number of month so five years and then you can see 21st December 2026, this loan will get completed. This is what you can see the add month. Add month is the one of the function. So these are all the function like add month, last day, next day, month between all these functions related to the date column. And we have round and truncate of dates. We can do round and truncate on numbers, just we have seen, and we can do the same thing on the year, the date column also. Year we can do the round of, quarter we can do the round of, or trunk of, or month, or day we can do it. So how to do it? So just I have given this particular document. Please go through this document. It is very useful for you. So I will explain this. If I'm going to take year, if I'm going to take year, the year will be divided into two part. Six month, six month. So if we go here, it will be divided into six month. So if you take, this is the year. You take this is the year and we can take six month six month so this is january january to june and this is what we can take jan and then december so i'm going to take one year so up to january to june i can take from here and july to december i can take from here july to december i can take from here this is what i can go for the year so if I take here, the round off is nothing but taking off and off, right? So whenever, if you are giving any date, if the date falls on the first half of the year, so it will give you the first day of the year. If any date falls on second half of the year, it will give you first day of the next year. So if the year is 2021, so it will give you, if any date falls on this particular one, it will give you 2021, Jan 1st, 2021. If any date falls on the second half, then it will give you 1st Jan 2022. 1st Jan 2022. This is what it will give you the result. So here we are taking the year into two half. Then look at here. I'm going to round off this one. So round off on the year. So I'm going to take round off on the year. If you, if you could see here, rounding off 22nd August 2021. See August 2021 is like second half of the year. August 2021, second half of the year, then it will give you 1st Jan 2022. It will give you the result as 1st Jan 2022. Next one, 22nd April. So April, I'm rounding off on the year part, then it will give you 1st Jan 2021. I'm taking the system date, today's date, I'm rounding off, then it will give you 1st day of next year. 1st day of next year, 1st Jan 2022. So this is what it will give you the result on year part on rounding up. Okay, so where it will be used in real time? Say for an example, I want to find out last day of the year. Last day of the year, I can go for this one. So last day of the year, so I can take round of state comma year, and then this one I want to take last day of the year. I want to go for last day of the next year. If you add 360 day from here, it will be one of the December month, right? December date. Then if you take last day of the month, it will give you 31st 
December 2021. So this is the way you can find last day of the year. You can find first day of the year. You can find first day of the year. After that, you can find last day of the year. Our first day of the year minus one. We can go with this is what last day of the year. Then you can go for quarter. So the quarter is nothing but we are splitting this into the Q three months. We are taking January, February, March. We are taking this Jan, Feb, March. If you look at here, the same thing we are going for Jan, Feb, March. So instead of year, I'm going for the quarter. So this is the one. You can go for Q. Q here, Jan, Feb, and March. So this is the one I'm going with. If any date falls on first first half of the quarter, then this will be your first day of the quarter. If any date falls on second half of the quarter, first day of next quarter. So this is if the year is 2021, the quarter is January, then we can go for first day of 1 1 2021. This is one, this is what you will get. So here, if second half, then it will give you first one four. Okay, first April 2021. First day of the next quarter. So this is what it will give you the the result if you rounding off on the q okay if you look at here so this is what explanation i have given please go through it round off select round off this one i'm going for the q select round off 22nd august see august where it will be july august september august will be second half of the third quarter second half of the third quarter then it will give you july august september then october first is the result See, October 1st is the result for this. So you can see here, October 1st, 1st October 16. So you have to practice it. I have given this, all the statement in the link. You can description, you can practice it. And you can see here, 13th April, 13th April 2020. So where is the April? So April, May, June, first half of the Q, then it will give you this particular first day of the quarter. So first day of the quarter is 1st April 2020. So this is what it will give you the result. Okay, next one. So this is the one I can go for the Q November, 2nd November. So you can tell 2nd November, it will give you 1st October. So this is what the Q, you can go for Q. Then month is nothing but month, it will do the month of, so first half of the month, second half of the month. So it will take, if any date falls on second half of the month, first day of the next month, it will give you first of uh, first, first day of the next month. Okay. This is first half of the month. So it will give you first day of the, the particular month. Then this is also first day of the month. So this is what it will give you the month. Then we can go for the day. So weekday. So we can go for weekday. So since we have seven days in a week, it will split up the weekday into 3.5 days, 3.5 days. If any date falls on, if you look at here, you can go with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is the one. If any date falls on first half of the week, then this Sunday date it will give you. If any date falls on second half of the week, it will give you this Sunday date, not Saturday date. This Sunday date it will give you. So this is what on the day, rounding of the day. So we can go for rounding of the day. So if you are running this, if you look at here, so I'm going to run this. So this is 22nd August, 2016. 22nd August, 2016, you can see here. So what is the date? And you can take the system date. Uh, today's date you can take and what could be the date so today's days you can take today's 21st december tuesday that is what it is giving last sunday date and we can see this this is the one and then you can able to find whether it's a last sunday or the current sunday next sunday this is what it will give you okay so this is what the day on rounding off but we are going with the trunk right so trunk function will always give you the first day of the year, first day of the quarter, first day of the month, or first day of the week. You can see here. So this is what the trunk 
no need to do any calculations just you can go for so this is year so if you are rounding up the year sorry trunk do trunk on the year it will give you first day of the year first day of the year so you can see first day of the year first day of the quarter first day of the quarter this is also first day of the quarter then this is what first day of the month first day of the month this is also first day of the month first day of the week sunday date so this should be a sunday date you can see and i am adding that five days or seven days then it will give you next sunday date might be first day of next week then this is what you can find each and every day so can we do sis date plus 3 yes we can do it no issues we can do it so this is what i have asked one question before in our uh, channel so if i'm going to if i'm going to take two date month between so whether it will give you numeric date or it will give you numeric value or it will give you date column so here if i'm going to execute this month between it will give you numeric only it will give you the numeric result and also i'm going to take date minus one more date it will give you the numeric data only the output is numeric only so how many days are there how many months are there so remember this i have asked this question previously okay this is what trunk and round of all the functions i have given so this is the where to be used this trunk and round of all the functions right so if you look at here i want to find out first day of the month see all this four functions will give you four queries will give you the first day of the month so if you look at here so i am going to find out from system date i am going to take only year and month and i am i am going to add 0 1 in the in the before so i am going to add this is the first day of the month it will give you first day of the month okay then we know already trunk of any date it will give you first day of the month then find last day last day of the month okay then trunk of on the month it will give you first day of the month then last day of the previous month this will give you last day of the previous month then add plus 1 last day of the previous month it will give you 30th november 2021 if you add plus 1 it will give you first day of the month so how can i find so this one always you first you go to the inside one so add month system date minus 1 so it will go one month before so one month before we are going with and then we are taking last day of the particular month so last day of the previous month then you are adding one so this is what you can find last day of the month i have given this and you can find first day and last day of the quarter so how to find first day of the quarter we know already trunk trunk of system date comma q it will give you the first day of the quarter so it will give you first day of the quarter i want to find out last day of the quarter so this is what they will ask you in interview last day of the quarter how will you find normally directly we do not uh, we could not find it just i am making that trunk of system date it will give you the first day of the month right first day of the quarter then i am finding last date so last date i am going to find so first day of the quarter then adding 75 days from the quarter adding 75 days of the quarter say for an example this is first day and adding 75 days of the quarter it will give you so somewhere around third month right third month i am finding last day of the third month then it will give you last day of the quarter so this is what you have to do even 70 also will give you the same thing 70 also i am going for it will give you the same result so adding 70 days in the existing one so that we can make so this is the one last day of the particular quarter so this is what we can find last year the quarter instead of system date i'm giving a hard coded date it will find you the date so this is what we will find find first and last day of the last quarter last quarter we have to find out so this is what i have given this code just to go through this code you can able to find and we have something like a the type casting functions type casting is nothing but next one is called type casting functions conversion functions so you can see this is the number i want to convert this number into a character we can convert like this okay character and this is also we can convert this into a character like character here 
and this is again the character we are converting so this into a character adding dollar and making some comma this one this is now character only you can see here uh, this is 730 it is finding and also i'm making only one here so it is since it is 8 it will give you one carry forward that is what it will give you the 8 here so if you look at here so 1210.8 that means it is giving one carry forward to the adjacent characters okay this is one system date i'm taking system date in different format so you can take this format so this is what in oracle we will do if i want to display the system date in different different format you can make this format mon is nothing but three character of the month and ddth is nothing but date and yyy so this is what you can find mm is nothing but the numeric numbers and then whatever the way you want to get it so you can get like this and i want to know the system date in this format after that i want to add plus one after converting it i'm adding it so this is number this is character character i'm converting as number number i'm adding plus one that is what you are getting 2022 okay so here two care of system date plus one this is different so this is different and this is different and then system date i'm making like hours minute second look at here hh 24 colon mi colon yes yes minute and seconds so it will give you in this way so this is 24 hours minute second and even date also and am and pm so it will, it will be at 12 hours so this is what you can able to find the uh, date and time format okay next function is called abs so abs is nothing but absolute value so if i'm going to give any negative value it will find the, the positive value okay so these are all the functions the single row functions please go through all the functions in addition to to this we have many functions are there we will see uh, if rest of the functions like aggregate function analytical function or advanced function later point of time so kindly practice this session if you have any suggestions or if you have any questions raise your questions through comments so add comments and i will respond to the comments thank you for watching we will meet in the next session Hello friends, welcome to Nikkei Academy. In our today's session, we are going to learn about joints. In our Oracle SQL series, we have already covered five day sessions. Uh, so far, we have covered all these five sessions. If you haven't watched these five sessions, please watch one by one and kindly practice it. I have given all the SQL queries in the notes. You can complete that five day sessions and then you can come to the sixth day session. In our today's session, we will learn about completely on the joints. What are the different joints are there? What is EQ join, non EQ join, Cartesian product? In EQ join, what are the different joints? We have like inner join, left outer, right outer, full outer, and how to write the join condition by using implicit method and ANSI method, and how to write in using keyword. So everything we will see one by one. And after completing this, you can we can go with aggregate function. I have given all the notes and exercises in the description. Please download it and practice it by watching the video if you are very new to the channel please subscribe the channel and then click on the bell icon so that you'll be getting all the notifications thank you for watching let us start our session we have majorly two types of join one is equi join so we can classify this join into uh, two types one is equi join, other one is non equi join. These are the two types of joins are available majorly in our Oracle database. Equi join is nothing but we will have equal conditions. In the join condition, we'll be having an equal symbol. Non equi join is nothing but non equality. You can have less than, or we can have greater than, or we can have less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, or not equal also. This is what condition we can write in the join condition. So if you look at here, the joins are two types of joins. One is equi join. An equi join is a type of join that combines table based on matching values in a specified columns. 
So this is what equal symbol will be mentioned. Non-equivalent is nothing but the same way. Non-equality we will test it like less than, greater than, less than or equal to all this expression we will use it. So non-equivalent we will see after some time. Equivalent we will start with. Equivalent again splitted into four type of joints. One is inner joint, left outer joint, right outer joint, full outer joint. If you take two tables, so this is what the inner joint. If you consider inner joint is nothing but if you take two tables, here I have the one table, this is left table, so this is right table. If you take two tables, if you do inner join, so this is left table, this is right table. Inner join will give you the result of common record between both the tables. Common record between both the tables. The first table, if you are mentioning in our join, join will be a left table. Second table we are mentioning in the join is the right table. So okay, inner join is nothing but common record between both the tables. If the record is matching, the result you will be get it. The record is not matching, we will not get the result. Second join is called left outer join. So what is left outer join, right? All the record from the left table. So left outer join is nothing but irrespective of right table, all the record from the left table and matching record from the right table. So we will see in detail about all this with uh, some examples so that you will be getting very clear idea. The third one is called right outer join. It is opposite to left outer join. The first table, whatever we are taking, this is a left table. And second table we are taking is the right table. And if you do right outer join of these two, we'll be getting all the record from the right table, all the record from the right table and matching record from the left table. If it is not matched, we'll be getting null value on the left hand side. Here, null value on the right hand side. If it is not matching, we will see in practically so that you will get clear idea. Fourth one is called full outer join. The same way, first table is left table. The second table is right table. You can go for right table. So this is what the left table we have, right table. If you are going for full outer, so matching, non-matching record from both the tables matching non matching record from both the tables so this is what full outer join so we'll be getting full outer join these are all the four types of joints are available in oracle inner join left outer right outer and full outer we will see the joints practically consider these two tables this is what the customer table this is what the country table in customer table i have customer related data like customer id customer name mobile number email country id in country table I have country information like for this particular country, what is a country name? So if I want to know from which country this customer is belongs to, then you can say that this is country ID 203. Be checking here 203, what is this country? Then 203, 203 you are matching. And then we can say he is from Singapore, right? This customer 202, 202 is nothing but USA. This customer is from USA. That's what I can join it and then I can get. So how did I join? We can take customer.country ID and then country.country ID. The column name might be different. Column name might be different. Column data type should be matching. In order to join, I need to have a common column. So one column, two columns, more than two columns also it's possible, but the column should be matching. Here country ID, country ID, you can have another column also, mobile number, mobile number or country information, zip code, zip code. So that's also we can do some join, but as of now we are seeing only one column joins. This is the join condition, customer.country id equal to country.country id. So we are connecting it. So now if you, if you take the customer table and country table, if I do inner join, what could be the result? So I can take customer data. So customer, I want to know each customer's details and their country details, I want to know then I can go for the inner join. So if you do inner join, see all the records. So we can take this particular record. Country ID also we can take this particular record. We can take the country ID. You can make it here. And then country name 200 is nothing but India. We can take 200 India. 204 is nothing but UK. So I can, you, I can take UK here. 202 is nothing but USA. So you can take two USA here. And 203 is Singapore. And take the Singapore from here. And next record, like 1004, 
this record, the country ID 205. So if I'm seeing here, country ID 205 is not available. So inner for inner join, this record will get filtered out. It will be opted out. So it will not be populated in the inner join result. So you can go for other records. Same way you can join it. 200, it is India. Then 202, it's a USA. So this is what we'll be connecting. So this is the result of inner join. This is the result of inner join. So for inner join, we'll be getting the matching record from both the tables. If you look at here, 201 China is available on right hand side, but the 201 country is not available in the customer table. This record also will not be coming on the right hand side. So matching record between both the tables, that is what inner join will do. What is left outer join? So left outer join is nothing but irrespective of right table, irrespective of right table, we can take all the records from the left table. So irrespective of right table, we can take all the records from the left table. Then so for each and every record, we have to match the condition. If it is 200, so I can put 200. What is a 200? 200 is nothing but India. 200, we can mention that India. So you can fill all the 200 as India. And 204, UK. So you can take UK. So 202 is USA. That is what two is USA. 203, nothing but Singapore. Then Singapore. But 205, I do not have any value. So it will be null. So you'll be getting null value on the right hand side. So this is what you'll be getting it. If it is not matching, you'll be getting null value on the right hand side. If it is left outer join. Okay, this is what you'll be getting it. 202 is USA. We can populate all the values. So this is the resultant of left outer join. Okay, so now we will go to the right outer join. So what is the right, right outer join? We'll be getting all the records from the inner join resultant. We'll be getting all the resultant. Then for right outer join, so we'll be getting all the record from the right table. So right table, we have 201 China. So this is what we have. And here you'll be getting null value. On the left hand side, you'll be getting null value. Why? Because I do not have any customer details for this particular country. So this is what you'll be getting right outer join. All the records from the right table. If it is matching, you'll be getting the value. If it is not matching, you'll be getting null value on the left hand side. If it is full outer join, then it's a matching non-matching record between both the tables. So this is what you'll be getting the full outer join. So resultant of full outer join here, we'll be going with full resultant of full outer join. So this is what the result, inner join, left outer, right outer, and full outer. So when will you go for inner join? If I have matching column, I will go for normally inner join only. When will you go for left outer? In order to get all the records from the left table, I can go with the left outer join. Then say same way you can, if you want to get the right hand side, say for an example, I want to know in, in which country I do not have customer. In which country I do not have customer, I want to take 201 China. We can do right outer join. In addition to the right outer join, we can make one condition like customer ID is null. Okay, you can make one more condition as customer ID is null. Then this record alone will be getting it. That is what we can take. Okay, in this particular country, I do not have any customer. Same way, you can go for full outer join also. Matching, non-matching record from both the tables. This is what you can get. For an example, if I'm having a record like this, instead of 205, I have 201 here. All the record is matching with all the record on the right hand side. Okay, record is matching with right hand side. 200 is matching, 204 it's available, 202 is available, 203 available. 201 also it's available, 200, 202, 200. Everything is available. We'll be getting this particular result, 201, 201 here. And here we'll be getting China's country name so that this is what the inner joint result. So this is the result for all other remaining joints. Left outer joint also, this is the same result. Right outer also, full outer also. So why? Because all the record is getting matched. That's what we'll be getting the records. How to write the queries for this? The same table I have created. So I have given the script in the descriptions. You can download the script from here in the descriptions. You can practice it. If you are finding any difficulties or any issues or any suggestions, you can write your suggestions in the comments. I will answer it. So we can write join in Oracle by using two methods. Normally we can write join by using two methods. One is implicit method. 
another one is ansi method we will see all the two methods why because some if you are going for a real time project there might be so one of the developer writing queries in uh, implicit method one of the writers might be writing in ansi method we should know all the two types of uh, methods so that's what i have mentioned here first i have created a table here we can select the table select start from customer you can see here this is what the customer table same way we can do the select start from country we have, i have posted all the four select start from country we can have this table okay so now inserted all the five records so now we will write ansi method how to write the join queries we can use first implicit method by using implicit method how to write it we will see now okay we use implicit method and ansi method we will see one by one there are two methods are available we will see one by one so implicit method is nothing but we can go to select column names this is what you can do the practice implicit method join is very simple if you follow this join is very simple select all the column names from first table first table is customer you can see here first table is customer okay comma second table second table is country country where we have to write the join condition by using where plus where customer dot country id equal to country dot country id this is the join condition this is called join condition this is called join condition so we have to write the join condition after that you can make and condition filter conditions that we can write filter filter conditions this is join condition okay now after writing it you can you can select the column names always you have to select the column names customer dot customer dot customer id so instead of making every time customer dot customer id and everything i can i can alias it this table as a this table as b so instead of customer you can make a dot this is called table alias we have already seen that in our previous session if you haven't watched please watch the previous session you will get all the stuff very clearly so a dot customer id then a dot customer name the same way you can mention the customer name then mobile number so the all this column from a a table so you can mention that a dot mobile number comma a dot email comma a dot country id so all the columns from a table comma we can go for b dot so i need b dot no need to take country id so country id we have already taken from the left table we can go for b dot country name so we can mention b dot country name so this is what the finally you no need to mention the comma here just you can mention the so no need to mention the comma here so this is what the implicit method join so after writing it here also you can change the queries a dot country id here also you can mention that p dot country id here also we have to change the conditions then you can copy this go here you can execute the statement we can get the result so if you look at here so for all the customers we are getting the country name if i want to get only customers are from india then you have to mention that and b dot country underscore name equal to india so case sensitive you have to make in this way only india this is what only india we have three customers this is what i can find out by joining the columns so this is called inner join this is called inner join in implicit method in implicit method we are written the inner join okay how to do the inner join in ansi method see ansi method is very simple ansi method is very simple we can copy this the same way we can go to this same way we can up to here it is simple the same way we have to write select all the column names select all the column names from first table inner join or join join or inner join inner join or join we can write inner join second table is country b then you have to use the keyword called on so there we will be using where class here we have to use on so on a dot country id common column is a dot country id equal to b dot 
country underscore id this is what we have to write and this is called ansi method so normally which method will be used most of the time in real time project most of the time we will be using ansi method performance wise the ansi method is better one you can see the same result you will be getting either from ansi method or implicit method we will be writing it see what is the difference here from first table comma second table where class here first table inner join or join second table on okay you have to use on if i want to know any filter condition then you have to use where class here so again where class so here we might be using that and class right here we have to use where class we can put this and then you can select it it will select only customers are from india so this is what we can write ansi method for inner join okay how to write left outer join so left outer join means see all the record from the left table matching record from the right table so in order to write the left table in implicit method in implicit method you have to make this is the join condition right in join condition the right hand side we have to make plus symbol on the bracket if you are making this is the syntax if you are making plus symbol in the bracket on the right hand side of the join condition it will become a left outer join left outer join if you look at here all the record from the left table matching record from the right table if i if it is not matching will be getting null value on the right hand side so this is what left outer join okay how will you write left outer join here so simply we can write left join or left outer join both are equal you can see here select all the column names from first table left join second table on condition you can mention that on condition just i'm executing it the same result you'll be getting it all the record from the left table matching record from the right table if it is not matching null value on the right hand side this is what left outer join and see method how to write right outer join in implicit method very simple you can take the plus symbol on the left hand side of the join condition this will become a right outer join all the record from the right table you can see all the record from the right table you can get null value on the left hand side if it is not matching okay you can see here country id you are getting null value right country id you are getting null value but if i want to know country id for this 201 for china then instead of taking country id from a table instead of taking country id from this table so 201 it will not be available here that's what we are getting null value so instead of taking country id from a table take country id from b table so if you are taking that this is what you are getting it i want to know how many countries i do not have any customers then i can make one more condition here and a dot customer id is null if you take it this way you can find 201 china i do not have any customers if any other countries also there it will be populated here you can remove the other columns you can just remove other columns okay this is what you can use the use of right outer join okay this is what the use of right outer join so how to write in ansi method instead of left join we have to make right join right join simply right join we getting all the records from the right table matching record from the left table so you can have here b dot country id this is what you will be getting right outer join okay how to write full outer join can we write full outer join plus symbol both both the side no it will not work okay in order to write full outer join we have to go with set operations here first of all i will do left outer join union okay union will remove the duplicate union right outer join union right outer join it will remove the duplicate and this is the way we will write the full outer join if you go and check here this is what the full outer join it will give you matching non matching record from both the tables so you look at here right hand side also you are getting null value left hand side also we are getting null value so this is what full outer join but in ansi method is very simple instead of right you can make full full join or full outer join both are equal so this is the four type of join we have to understand clearly that okay i have given all the queries just to create a table 
you can watch this video and you can get the details and we will go to the another tables also we can have two tables three tables all this if you this is what i have given implicit join all the joins if you take the tables say for an example i have the three tables here so customer city and country same way we can create look at here i have i have the shankar from here i want to know which country he is from which country is from okay so in order to get the country details i cannot direct connection from customer table to country table i do not have any direct connection to this table i have to go via this particular city table so we can take customer dot city id equal to city dot city id first you have to join it you have to get this detail region id then region id from city table okay region id from city table city dot region id equal to country dot country id column name might be different data type should be matching so you can see here 201 201 so this customer is from china so what so this customer where is from this customer so 102 102 is nothing but 200 200 is nothing but india so this is what i can get join this is the result of inner join so i want to know each and every customer city details and country details then i have to go for joining so the same way in our in our hr schema we do have three tables we know already we do have three tables like we have table called employees table department table location table how these tables are related so employees we have the department id in department table we have the department id so employees dot department id equal to departments dot department id you can join it you can get the department name from here and we can go to the location id we can take the location id from here okay this particular department where it is located so location id 2005 sorry location id you can get this id then location id from here location table i can say he is from chennai india right so that's what i can do the joins so for joining you need to have the common column same way in our table also in our hr schema in our hr schema we have the three tables select star from employees we can see the employees table i have the employees table all the employee details are available select star from department table department table if you haven't have this but if you do not have this particular environment oracle setup i have posted already video you can also check the description i have given the oracle installation step you can install it any of the version and then you can practice it we have the two tables like employees table and departments table so here we have the department id department name and location id and first of all we will do the joins on these two tables so how to do the joins so this is what joins simply first first two tables i'm joining it so select all the column names from first table employees e comma departments d where plus e dot department id equal to d dot department id so this is called implicit method so why it is simply implicit method if you are seeing more than one table in the from class then it, that is a join more than one table in the from class with the comma that means it's a join and also you are seeing the where class without any plus symbol that's what it's a inner join inner join inner join of two tables employees and departments okay this one is again inner join of two tables employees table and departments table here we are writing inner join this is called ansi method this is called ansi method if you look at here the same result you'll be getting it you are getting same result we can get it here same result for each and every employees we can get the department name and location id okay so this is what i can get left outer join yeah plus symbol on the right hand side right outer join so in the ansi method you can go for left outer join left join or left outer join both are equal so if you do left outer join or left join so you'll be getting all the record from the left table all the record from the left table if it is matching you'll be getting the value if it is not matching you'll be getting null value on the right hand side so for this particular employee there is no department id tag so for this department id in this employee table not tagged with any id that's what we are getting null value on the department name okay this is what left outer join 
right outer join so plus symbol on the right hand side you can see here all the record from the right table you are getting it right you are getting it so what is the use of this right outer join so i want to know how many departments i do not have any employees how many departments i do not have any employees you can see here this department i do not have any employees these departments i do not have any employees right because here left hand side you are getting null value right so you can execute it and along with this you can use one more condition and e dot employee id is null okay employee id is is null then only this department names you are getting for all these departments i do not have any employee so i do not want these columns i can remove the e dot column names so that if they are asking in interview how to find all the record from the right table and uh, matching record from the right left table this is what you can tell them okay if they are asking questions like this so you want to do all the records from the right table so you the record is there in right table not in left table so that is what you have to make the queries like this okay then we can go for full outer join full outer join full outer join is nothing but so this is what we can write full outer join as i have mentioned you can go for union also so full outer join is nothing but matching non matching record from both the tables matching record non matching record from both the tables this is what you'll be getting it okay next one is called so this is what full outer join how to do the three tables join how to do three table join here so i have employees table departments table locations if i want to do three table join we can write select all the column names from three tables whatever the column we want we have to mention if it is employee table just i am aliasing like e departments table d location table l so how many tables are there you can mention all the tables in the from class this is called implicit method we have already seen that if i have one more table jobs we can make comma here jobs we can mention four tables five tables you can go for a number of tables here but the thing is you need to do the join condition you need to do the join condition here you need to do the join condition so you take all the columns from the tables from the table name and where class you can put the join condition this is filter condition that means i want to know how many employees working from uk that's what so without joining i cannot find how many employees are working from uk so without joining can i find no i cannot find so after joining it we can make one more condition here okay these many employees 35 employees are working in uk that is what i can get the details okay so how can i change this one into a ansi method see very simple first table inner join second table instead of where class you can go for on on class then you have to remove this okay first you have to do the first two table join so more than two table you cannot join in the ansi method first table inner join second table on condition again you have to do the join okay inner join inner join third table on condition on condition you can remove the comma from here just i have copied inner join third table on condition here you can use where class where class is for filter condition this is what the where class you can use you can the same result you will be getting it same result you will be getting it this is what i have tried if i have one more table like a jobs how to do the join so here inner join again again you have to go for join or inner join inner join jobs j on j dot job id okay you can go for j dot job id equal to e dot job id like this you can go for the join condition and more than two tables three tables four tables this is what you have to use inner join fourth table write the condition inner join fifth table write the condition then this is what the where class is nothing but filter condition after joining it if you look at here after joining it i want to take only uk then i can write uk here where class so this is what the four tables five tables all this you can do it okay 
So you can practice it. I have given this query just in our HR schema. You can practice it. Then you'll be getting all the stuff very clearly. So what is the meaning here? So after joining it, this is called the same way how I have mentioned. We are getting country equal to CA and getting salary more than $10,000. So this country from L table, country ID from L table, salary column from E table. So you have to make sure that from which table you are taking that columns. Okay, this is what join and four tables join, inner join. Okay, four tables. See, you can take all the columns. First, you can take select all the columns from first table, inner join, second table on condition, inner join, third table on condition, inner join, fourth table on condition. You can go for four table, five table. See here, instead of writing table name, here we have written on query itself. So you can write this query itself, department ID, department name, location ID from departments D. So you can write subquery also here. So instead of writing the table name, we can write the queries also. This is what four tables, five tables, join query. You can see here, just I'm right, I'm joining it and I'm getting the country from United Kingdom salary getting more than $10,000. So this is what the query you'll be getting at. So this many customers, eight customers are from United Kingdom and we are getting the salary. These customers are getting salary more than $10,000. So this is what you have to write. From first table, inner join, second table, second table, instead of table, I'm writing the query. So here, so if you write, this is called subquery. Right, subquery. So this resultant will be placed here. Inner join this one D will be taken as D. You can take whatever the column from here. D dot department ID, D dot department name, D dot location ID. So that's what we have taken D dot and on class on join condition. Inner join or join both are equal. Join locations the third table on condition. Join fourth table on condition. Join fifth table on condition you can go n number of tables here. Same way in implicit method also. Here also you have to go with implicit method also you have to go with. So these are all the join types. We have four type of joins. So we have seen four type of joins. Inner join, left outer, right outer, full outer. I hope you are clear on this particular join. So after practicing it, I have given some exercises in the description itself. Kindly practice it. So now we will go with cross join or Cartesian product. So what is the cross join or Cartesian product? If you look at here, this is the this is the join here. So here we are writing the join condition, right? If you don't write this join condition, it will become a cross join. So what it will do? It will take one record from here. Since we haven't mentioned the join condition, it will take this record. It will join with all the records. So one record here, five record here. Eight, the same way for eight records, eight cross five, you'll be getting 40 records out of it. If you forget to mention any join condition in the join query, it will go for Cartesian product. Okay, that's what we have to understand. What is Cartesian product? So here Cartesian product is nothing but, so this is, what is this join? What is this join now? It's an inner join, right? From first table, comma, second table where join. So I forgot to mention this join condition. What will happen? Here I have 107 record. Here I have 107 record. Departments table, I have 27 records. You'll be getting 2889 records. So look at here. I forgot to mention join condition. Then you'll be getting 2889 records, right? See one record on the right hand side table. It is connecting with all the records here. Then another record. So take another record from the right hand side table. So you look at here, another marketing after administration, you can go for marketing You do join with all the 107. So that is what you'll be getting the, all the records. Okay. How to do a cross join in this ANSI method. Just you can mention that cross join. Okay. Cross join. Then you'll be getting that same result from first table. You can do the cross join second table. Just you can execute it. It will give you the cross join result. Look at here, same result you'll be getting it. So this is what cross join will be getting it. Sometimes if I want to do, if I want to load some data, 
some dummy data into the table. I will write insert into table name. I can go for cross join Cartesian product. Then dummy data, I can load it into the table. For more records, it will create, right? Some millions of record I want to create, then I can create in this way. Okay, so this is what cross join will perform. Okay, next one is called self join. See what is a self join, right? If you look at here, the self join, so you can take this particular table, say so employees table. So employee ID is there for each and every employee. There is some manager ID tagged it. So who is the manager of this particular employee? For this employee, manager is one not three. So I want to know each and every employee's manager. Then I have to go for self join. What is the self join? Why we are going for self join? You take the manager ID from here, one not three. On the same table you join it, one not three, and I can say Alexander is manager of Wally, right? This is the way we can do it. Who is the manager of Daniel? Then I can go with here. So I can take 100. I can take 108. So 108 is nothing but Nancy is manager of Daniel. So how to write query here? Same table we have to join it. Select column names from first table. So I can take employees table, employees E. I can take E1, comma, same employees table, right hand side you consider. Okay. Employees table E2, where E1 dot manager ID, E1 dot manager ID. You take the manager ID from here, take the manager ID from here, E1, E1 dot manager ID. You take the E1 dot manager ID here, and on the same table, you can join with employee ID. So E2 dot employee underscore ID. Okay, then I can go with E1 dot employee ID, employee underscore ID, comma, E1 dot first name. So I can take employee ID in first name. I can take so one simple hard coded value reports to, okay, reports to. Then I can go with comma, E2 dot employee ID and first name, E2 dot employee ID and E2 dot first name. You can remove this comma here, just execute it. It will give you this result, but it is not in order. I can go for order by one first column. So Nina reports to Steven. So Lex reports to Steven. So all this you can see here, Daniel reports to Nancy. So you are getting all the result right correctly. Okay, so why the 100 is not coming? Since it is an inner join, it will not come. If I want to get it, instead of Inner join, I have to go with left outer join. If I do left outer join, he'll be getting Steven. So Steven reports to null. Null means he is the topmost person. He is not reporting to anybody. So that's what you can see. The same query, how can I write in, in the ANSI method? It's very simple again. Select all the column names from first table. Inner join, right? Inner join or left outer join. What is the way you want to do? Left join. So instead of where class here, you can go for on class. So remove this plus symbol here. Okay, we have written this. So this is what it will give you the same result. Okay, this is what the self join. We can see the self join here. So I have given all the notes, kindly practice it. So this is what the join will work. These are all about equi join. Now let us start with non equi join. So non equi join will, it will in the join condition will be having greater than less than all the symbols. So non EQ join is nothing but whenever we are making the join condition, if you are making any non equal condition of the join condition, then it will become a non EQ join. So if you consider this particular join, normally if you are not writing this article symbol, this is EQ join. This is simply EQ join. Whenever the department ID is matching with the department stable department ID, then we'll be getting it. For each and every employees, we are getting the department's name. But whenever we are making non-equal, right? So here we are going for non-equi join. So it will it will give you more results. So instead of 107 record, it's like the same like a Cartesian product. But what is this non-equi join? Say for an example, department ID 10 in the employees table. So here we have the department ID 10, and then here we have 20. Department table, we have 20. 
on 30. So like this, we have a lot of uh, records. So we made like a not EQV, right? So not equal. So this record alone, it will not be populated. So for this 10, this 20 is not equal. So that 20, it will be coming. So you look at here. So this is what you'll be getting all the records. For administration, we'll be getting all the records. Again, for marketing, you'll be getting all the records. One record, it will not be matched. So other than that, we'll be getting other records. So this is called non equi join. Normally, we will not write uh, more uh, non equi join in our, in our real time project. We'll be writing only equi joins. So this is what joins. So kindly practice all the joins. If you have any queries or any suggestions, or if you need any modification, please raise your questions through chat, through comments. I will respond to it. Thank you very much. We will meet in the next session. Hi everyone, welcome to Nikkei Tech Academy. In this series, we are learning Oracle SQL completely. In our today's session, we are going to learn about aggregate functions in Oracle. We have seen six different sessions previously. Like first session, we have seen introduction, then DDL, DML, constraints, all the single row functions, select statement, then joins we have seen. This session is completely on aggregate functions. So what is aggregate function? What are the different aggregate functions are available? So this aggregate functions are very much used in our SQL statement. So please watch the session without skipping it. And that finally I have given some questions on aggregate functions. So try to answer all the questions. If you have any questions, please post your questions in the comments. I will respond to it. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you'll be getting all the notifications. Thank you once again. Let us start our session. Welcome to the session. In our today's session, we are going to learn about aggregate function in SQL. So this aggregate function in SQL is very much important for our day-to-day -day SQL queries and Informatica also. So if you consider aggregate function, we have different aggregate function. One is minimum of, okay? This function will be used, min of. So we have five different function, max of, sum of, average of, and count of. So these are all the mainly used functions in aggregate function in SQL, okay? So if you consider this particular table, if you consider this particular student table, you can see here, student ID, student name, year of study, mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, all the marks we have. And I want to know, so this is the table. Sometimes interview, they will ask this type of questions. Okay, they have given the table and they want, they are asking like, okay, I want to find out each and every student total mark, each and every student sum of mark. If they are asking this way, so can you find each and every student's total mark? If they are asking this way, row level, then most of us will answer like, okay, we can go for sum of mathematics, physics, comma, chemistry, comma. In that way, we will explain. So if I'm asking like a row level for each and every student total marks or average mark, we should not go for aggregate function. This is simple function. Normally, if I ask, okay, this is a table. If I have, then I will go for the, this is row level sum. Row level sum means you have to add plus. So mathematics plus physics plus chemistry plus biology. So that's what you can find the total marks. In select statement itself, you can able to find. If I ask the average mark, you have to make all the mark total and then you have to find divided by four. So that's what average mark. But the, this aggregate function, right? This aggregate function is column level. Okay, so like this column level, if I want to know the minimum of all of this mark, okay, the minimum of all of this mark is 72, right? So this is the minimum of mark, maximum of mark 98, okay, 98. What is the sum of mark? Okay, sum 779. Then average of mark, average of mark is 
in mathematics what is the average mark so how many members how many students appeared for this exam nine members that's a count so so remember whenever i am doing the aggregate function if any null values are there so aggregate function will not consider the null values so if i ask a count of chemistry it will give you only 8 not 9 okay even for average or sum or anything it will not consider this null value so this is what we have okay just i want to create this table so i want to create this table and i have to find out the total marks and average how can i easily create the table and find out this value and aggregate function all this so you can go to this this particular database okay so we do not have table as of now just we can create so table table name i'm just creating a table so open bracket you can paste all the columns and this one is number so number of number of 5 or 6 i can give number of 6 student name year of study so i can go for number here so mathematics number physics is a number data type chemistry yes it's a number data type biology also number data type then finally we should not make the comma then close it then semicolon then control enter so this will be created so table has been created if you go to the hr schema so we will load it data we will load the data refresh and you can see here the table will be available here students table then what i will do i'll go to data here so as of now we do not have any data so i will manually add add this data so it's like insert into i have nine records right so i'll go for so nine records then i will add okay so keep the cursor here paste it it will be pasted then commit so simply within a minute you can create the table the commit successful you can see here commit successful then if you go and check here select star from the student then this particular select star from students this particular table has been created with the data okay so i will give this particular table creation so that you can make use of this okay so this is what the table i have all the data i have then select star from the table name students right so i have the select star from that student table you can see so this is what the data so i want to find out first we will go for each and every student's total mark so there is no function like this okay so some of them will tell like okay some of the students or some of the candidate in interview they will say okay i will go for sum of this mathematics sum of mathematics comma physics okay remember this aggregate function will not take more than one column okay so aggregate function take will not take more than one column if you are going for like this then this is wrong okay this is wrong actually so we do not have any function like this okay any aggregate function aggregate function will not take more than one value so if i am asking questions like row level you have to go for the row you have to add it the column you have to add it so here i'm just adding student id so each and every column i can take so in the select statement i can take each and every column like student id okay student name year of study mathematics physics chemistry then biology then i will add that sum we have to make this addition that's all so we have to make addition like this so you can alias it like total underscore marks total marks alias it so from students see here the total marks so here we are getting null value because it has null value on this so then you can go for nvl function so nvl so i will make one v for nvl of chemistry so what is the total mark so nvl of chemistry comma zero so that means if null value then make it like a zero nvl of chemistry comma zero so you can see 272 now value has been calculated okay so this is what you will go for row level addition i want to go for row level average 
so average marks average mark for each and every student so if interview they are asking like questions like this you have to go for this way only in informatica how will you do in informatica we'll go for expression transformation so in this particular scenario we'll go for expression transformation this is what each and every student's average mark okay so you can go for so this is the way we will do for the question but now we will go for the what is the maximum mark in mathematics what is the maximum mark in mathematics i will go for select max of maths from students this is what we can go for maximum mark is 98 so what is the minimum mark so minimum mark some average count or count so what is the minimum mark minimum mark is 72 so what is the count how many members attended max exam so nine members then what is the sum sum of mathematics will give you all the sum okay so this is what sum of mathematics you have the 779 same way you are getting and what is the average so average of mathematics you can see 86.5 if you want only two digit you can go for round function we have already seen right so round of average of this one comma two it will give you do two digit decimal point if you do not want to two digit just to simply make round that's all so it will give you 87 so this is the average mark in mathematics so this is what you have to find out okay then the question is okay, this is what average mark some mark even irrespective of number of record even if you have 1 lakh student or 10000 student or irrespective of number of student the aggregate function will give you only one result only one result okay we have two years here so first year and second year i want to group first year alone i want to find out maximum minimum sum i want to go for second year second year i want to go for what is the sum of average of all this then i can go for group by so group by so here i have to make say for an example what is the sum of mark or average of mark in each year okay or maximum of mark in each year so how can i go for each year i want to go for then i can go for here group by so group by year of study if i take group by year of study then we have 94 98 i may not know okay so what is this particular year so whether it is a first year student mark or this is the second year student mark then i can select this one here okay, first year student 94 is the maximum mark second year student 98 is the maximum mark so this is what i can find okay here you may ask question so i'm finding the maximum mark can i find who got this particular mark so maximum mark is 98 i want to know who got this maximum mark this way i want to find out student name no i cannot select it i cannot select okay this is the error we will be getting so what is error so i cannot select non aggregate column along with aggregate column okay this is what i will be getting error okay then how can i find the student name can i go for so like this so here how how can we find this is non aggregate column this is aggregate column we made it like a group by can i go for group by then so group by of student name so what will happen the query will work but it's uh, logically wrong group by student name some of most of the candidate will answer like this also okay group by student name i will go for if you make a group by student name all the names are unique names so it will not group by with any of the name it will not group it with any name so their name their marks will be getting it we are not going to get maximum mark person it's like a student name their marks we are selecting not maximum the highest student we are not taking okay if i want to take highest student either we have to go for rank or we have to go for sub query sub query we will see after some time so this is what we will go for the aggregate functions so if you look at here student from group by all this when will you go for group by so group by means we are grouping it the data and then finding the 
some or average or count say for an example here i have a student gender so male and female so i want to find out so male candidate how many of them appeared for for exam female candidate how many of them appeared for the exam then i can go for yeah we can go for the count of student okay count of student group by gender so we have to group by so each and every group so whenever we are having like a keyword like wise okay gender wise country wise product wise transaction status wise so different okay this kind of wise keyword then we have to go for group by keyword okay whenever the interview they are asking okay what is the this is some some sum of all this like a country wise what is the total city wise what is the total product wise how will you find then you can go for the group by column okay so group by column this is what we have to make group by i hope you are clear we will go with one more example so that you will get clear idea about all this functions okay we have in our hr schema we have a table called employees table select star from employees in this table also we will find if you take this select star from employees table in the employees table we have employee id first name last name email phone number hire date and job id salary all the columns are available then i want to find out what is the maximum salary i am giving for the employee then how can i find what is the highest salary i'm giving max of salary so what is the highest salary max of salary from employees maximum salary is this is the one only one record we will be getting it so minimum of salary so what is the minimum of salary i'm giving out of all the employees what is the minimum salary they are giving so 2100 what is the average of salary for each and every employee how much we are average we are giving okay 7821 okay you can go for round function to round off then how many employees we are giving the salary i can go for count of so you can make count of okay count of salary 107 employees we are giving the salary so what is the total sum of salary i am giving for all the employees okay so we have one company organization so we have some 100 employees working under that particular company i want to find out okay month end how much total salary i am giving so this is what the total salary sum salary i am giving okay so in our particular employees table we have some departments different departments i want to go for each and every department so this is the sum of salary okay each and every department how much i am giving i want to go for then i can go for each and every department department wise sum of salary what will you do so we have to make group by so group by department underscore id so this is what we can find so this is what we will get it so we have 14 unique departments that's why each and every department we are getting but we may not know which department this particular salary which department right i can go for the department id i can select here so remember always if you want to select a non aggregate column here so that column should be there in group by otherwise on another way whatever the column we are making in group by so that column alone you can select along with aggregated column okay so can i go for one more aggregate function here yes we can go for so department wise sum of salary and count of employees so how many employees are we are giving count of star or count of employee id all this we can go for okay this is the department id so this is a department id so in this department id sum of salary this much and four employees we are giving so that's what we can we can find okay but we cannot make one more column here can i make job id here can i make job id here no i cannot make so we will be getting this particular error so we can select if you want to select a job id so that job id we should make here okay so each and every job in this particular department how much we are giving so that we are going for then we have to make job id here the same order we have to make job id comma department id so look at here in this particular job id the department id we have only 60 okay so only 60 at the department or you can go for this particular order by class okay in 110 department we have two job ids 
one is accountant and manager so accountant we are giving this much salary for managers we are giving this much salary only one employee okay then for 10th department one 90th department then 100 so like this each and every department we can go for okay in 50th department we do have three different job ideas one is sh clerk st clerk st man manager so each and every department so 20 so each and every in this particular department each and every job id we have 20 members 20 20 and 5 members so this is the salary so like this we can find you can go for order by just we have made it like order by job id this is the way we can find okay this is the way we can find more than one column also but whatever the column we are here we are making so that particular column we have to make it here okay if you look at here this is what I want to go for department ID in order. Then I can go for order by department ID. I can make order by department ID. It will make order by department ID. Either you can go for order by department ID or you can go for. So some queries, they should have written order by one or two or something. One is nothing but first column. So if you look at here, one is nothing but first column. So this is what? Okay, in 10th department, this is the summer salary. In 20th department, job ID, we have made it like a group. So this is the way, if, if you consider this, 10th department, we have one employee, this is that salary. 20th department, we have two employees, and this is the total salary, 30th. So then we are getting it. Then null also we are getting, null value. That means for one employee, we do not have mentioned the department ID, in the table itself. So that's why, his salary is 7,000. That's why if you are taking group by, definitely this is also unique record, right? This is what you'll be getting it. Sometimes if you use group by, the performance wise, it will be better when compared to distinct. Say for an example, I want to know how many distinct department IDs are there or how many distinct job IDs are there in the particular table. If you look at here, how many distinct unique department IDs are there? So unique. 90, we have 60, we have 100, 140, 30, 50, like that we have, right? So how many unique departments are there? I can go for a distinct department ID, right? Distinct department underscore ID. So how many are there? We can choose here, 14, all rows fetched, 14. You can make order by be having all the departments along with null value. The same thing you can achieve, so in different way select department id okay so group by department id so if you use group by department id so what will you get group by department id each department it will make the group by and we are selecting the department id so this is also same these two queries are same sometimes if you are facing like performance issue on the distinct keyword then you can go for the group by so group by on the column and if you take the same column, then you'll be getting this. This will perform very easily. Okay, so this is what you can use group by. Okay, you may ask here, if this is the way, if I want to go for, can I find who is getting this maximum salary? Highest salaried employee. How can I get? Can I go for first name here? No, we have already seen, right? This scenario we have already seen in the student table itself. We cannot select in this way. Okay, we cannot select this way. Either we have to go for, we have to go for subquery or we have to go for a rank function. So here subquery means select. See, we, we can select a max of salary, right? Maximum salary. This is the way we will select. And we have to go for one more query here. Select star from employees. Star from, star means all the columns where salary equal to, equal to this salary I'm passing. Okay, so if you if you run this particular one, this query alone, inner query alone, this will give you this salary. Then select star from employees where salary equal to this one. I may get it right. So this is what first highest salary. So this is what you have to find out. If somebody asks an interview, you have to tell. The second highest salary or third highest salary, that is different scenario that we can make it in a rank function itself. 
but this is what i have to find out okay so if you look at here each and every department we found each and every department we found the sum of salary we found the sum of salary here right department wise sum of salary we found okay so i want to make order so order by order by one one means first column will be order like this first column will be order you can see order by first sum of this much this much salary i'm giving out of this much salary for each and every department i'm giving like this if you add all the salary to be equal to this particular salary okay so if you look at here the the interviewer may ask different questions or you may get in real time different way also what are the departments i'm giving sum of salary more than 50000 So what are all the department? I'm giving sum of salary more than fifty thousand. This particular department, I'm giving sum of salary more than fifty thousand, right? And this particular department, and this particular department, right? So these three departments, I'm giving salary more than fifty thousand. So how can I find the query more than fifty thousand? See, remember, whenever I want to filter out record, whenever I want to filter out record from the group by resultant. this is the group by resultant right so group by resultant then i have to go for having class i should not use where class the where class means if i i do not want this null value then i can go for where class here so where class here only we have to write where department underscore id is not null if you are writing like this so this null value will not be available so where class after from class you have to write the where class okay then only you have to use the group by okay so out of this departments i want to know which departments we are getting more than 50000 salary then how can i find group by department id then i have to use the having class having is nothing but having class it is used to filter out the group by resultant so if i want to apply filter on group by resultant group by resultant then you can go for the having class so remember this so whenever you are getting scenario in this way you can use having always it will come with aggregate function having sum of salary so whatever the aggregate function so having class is always come with aggregate function only having sum of having count of having average of okay so having sum of salary greater than 50000 this is what you can get it so 50000 more than 50000 okay i want to know this is what you have to find out okay i want to know so what are all the department name i want to know the department name here which department what is 50 how do i know the department name so in order to know the department name i have to go for the department table right so what is the department name 50 i have to go here i have to check 50 80 90 so 50 is nothing but shipping shipping department 80 is nothing but sales department 90 is nothing but executive department so these are all the three department i have to take so how can i take in this query i have to go for joins right so we know already how to do the joins if you look at here so how will you do the joins so select column names select column names from table name so employees e so i can alias it like e i can go for implicit method departments d so d where so here join condition and filter condition we will use it in where class only e dot department underscore id equal to d dot department underscore id and so one more join condition right here we will write then so here i want to take the department name so department underscore name so since department name and department id is from two different table we have to write okay which department which table this department id so i am taking e table employees table i am taking the department id d table department name so you remember when whenever we are selecting 
the columns that columns should be there in group by right so group by how many columns i have written only one column okay as of now only one column then so e dot department id is null so everywhere you have to write this way then if you are going to execute it will not be executed so group by you need to have so whenever i am selecting this column that column should be there in group by right so you have to use this column in group by so department id comma this one having this is the way we have to write okay 50 shipping department this is the way we can write and if you look at here so what is the order of in sql statement if i'm writing all the statements group by all this if i'm writing first we have to write the from class okay from class then i have to write the where class then i have to use the group by okay group by then i have to write having class then i have to go for the order by okay so this is the order we have to execute in oracle so in oracle sql so this is the order if you are changing the order then query will not be executed so this is the way we have to find out all this okay if you consider this is the way we have to find out group by having order by all this in single function okay i hope you are clear if you look at this employees table so i have given some exercise here so you can find okay this exercises the answer so this is the employee skills i think i have created the table employees table let me check whether i have created the table employee id employee name data birth salary skill set city and country okay so the table is already available i am going to add all the data so how many records are there i have 26 so 26 record manually i will add it okay i will add it 26 record choose the state format control c control v we'll commit it okay so now it has been committed so we have created the table and loaded the data so in this table so some questions i have asked so you can can answer this question okay say for an example find the total number of employees it's very simple so you can also create this table you can do it so find the total number of employee select count of star from employee this is what i can find okay how many employees are there 26 employees are there 26 then find the city wise total number of employees city wise so each and every city how many employees are there so we have hyderabad bangalore pune right chennai we have so city wise new york we have so different cities we have city wise total number of employees so how can i find so we have seen already city wise we have then we have the group by so each and every city group by city then we can find so here i have to make city come up okay these many distinct 14 distinct cities are there so that's why we are getting this many okay each and every city each and every city how many employees are working this is the way okay if you want to make order by okay order by on the city wise then i can go for order by two order by two column then i can get ascending order or i can go for a descending order then highest number of employees working in this particular city next highest next highest you can see this way right then find out total number of employees in each country this is also very simple each country i want to know so i can instead of city i can go for country so country then here also country each country i can go for this one then this is what i can make okay in india 11 employees are working in usa 15 employees okay then find the total number of employees in india alone so india alone i want to find out so how can i find total number of employees we should not go for group by that's why i have given so we have given the value right india then you have to go for where class where country equal to india so how many employees are working so data are case sensitive make sure that you are giving correct way so 11 employees are working in india okay find the cities where more than three employees are working in india 
So what are the cities where more than three employees are working in India? So if you look at here, look at this particular one. So this is what the city wise count, right? City wise count. If I'm asking one more question, city wise count I want only in India, only for India. India only I want to find out city for city wise count. Then what will you do? So here I will use where class. So where class before group by. So where India group by city, right? So in India, there are four different cities. So these are all the employees are working in each city. Okay. So here the question is different. Find the cities where more than three employees working in India. So more than three employees are working in India. We have only one city. So how will you make? So more than city after group by we have to use having, okay. Having count of star greater than three only for India. So if you do not want India, then you can remove this where class. It's for entire. Okay. So this is what we have to find out. Then who is the youngest person? Then this is what you can order by order by on the data birth. You can take the top one. You can go for these runnels sub queries only in which skill set highest number of employees are working. So in which skill set? So group by on the skill set we have to make. So group by on the skill set count descending order. So you can make skill set here and the order by this one descending. So look at here. So Java, we have six employees. If you want to take top one, yeah, we have to go for sub query or we can go for the rank. Rank we can take different way. Top one. Okay, this is what you have to find out. The is there any employee with the same name? Is there any employee with the same name? I want to find out. So if I have more number of employees, I cannot find out, right? So easily I cannot find out. Is there any employee with the same name? So how will you find? You have to group by on the employee name. Group by. Say for an example, two Ninas are there, two Davids are there. Group by count it. The count is more than one. Yes, we are the duplicate employee name. So we can go for select. Okay, select. The name of the column name is employee name. Okay, select employee name, comma count of star, count of star from from employee table group by employee name. Okay, having having count of star greater than one. Is there any name? Yeah, we have one employee name. So two times we have the same employee name we have. If you go and check here, so this John, but employee ID is different. This is different John. So one more John should be there. So here we have, right? Yeah, so two employees are there. That's what you can find all the questions. So I will give you this particular document. So please go through this document and find out all the questions. Okay, and one more question. Is there any duplicate employee ID? So find out duplicate value on the particular column. This one normal question, right? How will you find out duplicate on the column? So this is the same way. So whatever the column, if I'm going to ask, so that particular column, we have to make it here. Okay, so employee ID. So if, I, if I'm asking this, okay, there is no, there is no duplicate on the employee ID column. Okay, employee ID comma count of star from employee group by on the employee ID having count of star greater than one. So this is the normal question they will ask in interview. So can you find is there any duplicate on the particular column or particular table? Yes, this, the, this is the way you can find out. So these are all about all the aggregate functions. So please go through that. I will give you all the documents and notes. So please go through it and you can able to find so whenever they are asking questions related to aggregate function, you can able to answer it. Okay. Skill set wise, city wise, country wise. Okay. 
so youngest person that that means date of birth minimum maximum so that we have to find out okay that we have to go for who is the youngest person who is the youngest person then how will you find this is one more question right so select youngest means maximum max of dob from employee table right so which is the maximum this one who who is so we have to select select star from employee table where dob equal to dob equal to this one so this is the way okay he is the youngest person eldest person minimum of min of okay 2014 so this is the way we have to find out they will ask different way so can you find out how many employees are there in female how many employees are there in male so this is the way we have to make group by don't use it where class where class means in male how many employees are there that you can go for where gender equal to male so they have given the hard coded value right that's what you have to go for the where class and group by so i hope you are clear on this so kindly practice it if you have any queries you can ask me okay so this order by also definitely will be there in in our informatica i will tell you so that you will get clear idea so sorting algorithm sorting in sql so order by class so how to make order by class in sql so whenever we are going for order by class so we have to make at last only if you look at here in employees table if you look at this employees table select star from employees i want to make order by on the particular column i want to make order by on salary then i can go for order by salary i can go for order by salary salary will be ordered based on the ascending order so here we have 2100 2200 this is the way it will it is ordering it then i want to make order by on the highest salary to least salary descending order then this is the way it will make descending order so can i use order by on the on the instead of numeric column can i use it for character column yes we can use order by on first name so first underscore name so how it will order so how it will order it will order based on the ascii value if you look at here first name this is what it is making order so if you look at here finally it is making john so why this john is at last so based on the ascii value this j is lower case right the j is lower case the lower case ascii value will be more okay the ascii value of each and every so if you look at here select ascii of capital a from dual so you can see some value 65 right 65 select ascii of small a the lower case a will be getting 97 so this is what we are getting lower case in at last when we are making ascending order if you are going for descending order first name descending reason we are getting john at first so 97 is the first right so that's what we are getting this lower case in first okay so order by on the first name column okay can i make the same order by on the date column yes we can make select star from employees order by higher date so we can make based on the higher date the employees are arranged higher date descending so latest higher so this is what but if you look at here two person joined on the same date if two persons hired on same date how will you order and that's a question even if you are going for any column salary i'm making like descending order if two or three persons are getting the same salary how can i order if you look at here order by its salary descending three employees are getting same salary okay so how can i order so order by salary only but how can i order these three employees internally if you are going for any the marks right mark wise if you are going for any uh, cut off medical cut off or anything engineering cut off 
so mark wise we are going with total mark wise we will go for total mark then if so many of the students are getting same mark then we'll go for the next mark mathematics physics chemistry biology and then we'll go for the name wise also data birth wise also so we have to make it like another column if salaries are same then next column we can go for if salaries are same okay how can i order these four employees then i can go for another column order by salary can go for higher date order by salary descending first it will make order by salary and descending okay descending order only if same salary then it will make order by on the higher date okay so higher date so this is what if you look at here 7th june 2002 then 17th august 2002 then here also okay 11000 11000 11000 2002 2004 2007 so this is what it will go for okay 2002 2004 5 and 6 so this is what you can make order by on more than one column okay so how can i order if i'm if i'm having null values how can i order so how the null will be treated so order by commission percentage order by commission percentage remember whenever you have null value null will be treated as highest value so always so in sql null will be treated as highest value so if you make order by commission percentage this is the least value ascending order right least value then it is making ascending order 0 0.15 0 0.2 0 0.35 0 0.4 after that it is making null value okay if you are making ascending descending order then null value will be the first null value will be treated as highest value so remember this null treated as highest value okay same way first name employee id okay so here can i go with employee id order by yes order by employee id yes i can go with employee id order by employee id so it's already order by employee id only if i'm going with employee id yeah so this is the way employee id is unique here unique value so can i go with one more column here employee id comma first name can i go if i'm going like this second one will not be considered so because the employee id itself unique if i have duplicate value on employee id then only it will go for the second column right so here same salary then only it will, it will go to the second column this is what you can go for so since this particular column is unique it will not consider the second column order by the same thing we will be having in informatica also okay so sometimes we will write this way also say for an example sometimes we will write in sql query we will write salary column is how many what is the number of column the order one two three four five six seven eighth column eighth column is the salary column then you can make column number order by eight descending that means eighth column will be ordered okay so if eighth column is same order we have to go for sixth column higher date so eight comma six eight descending comma six ascending so this is what so if some numbers are there so this is what you can go for the order by class so order by and group by so what is the difference so group by you know aggregate whenever we are doing the aggregate function then you can go for the group by column order by is nothing but sorting algorithm so whenever we want to do the sorting algorithm we can go for the order by so i hope you are clear so how the order by class will be working so always remember whenever you are writing sql queries this order by will be at the last okay so at the last we should have the order by class i hope you are clear kindly practice it so that you will be getting all the stuff very clearly hi everyone welcome to nikait academy we are learning Oracle SQL in this series. In our today's session, we are going to learn about subqueries. We have already completed seven sessions in SQL. If you haven't watched, 
please check the description and watch full SQL series as per the day ways. Now let us move on to today's agenda. We are going to learn first what is single row subquery, what is multi row subquery, what is multi column subquery, and what is correlated subquery. So for all these subqueries, we are going to learn more examples for each and every subqueries. And finally, we are going to see how to find a duplicate record in the table and how to delete a duplicate record in the table. These subqueries concept are very much used in our real time project. So please watch the session without skipping it and practice it. I have given all the queries in the descriptions. You can download it and practice it. If you haven't subscribed our channel, please subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon so that you'll be getting all the notifications. So let us start our session. Welcome to the session. In our today's session, we are going to learn about subqueries. So we have seen single row functions, joins, and aggregate functions. Today, we are going to learn about subqueries. So whenever we are writing any SQL queries, normally we used to write select statement, right? Select star from the table, select star from the table name, and then we will write where class. But subqueries is nothing but writing select and one more select statement inside this select statement. So this query, we will call it as subquery. This query, we will call it as subquery. Then this one, we will call it as outer query. So this is outer query. This is inner query. So normally any subqueries, the inner query will be executed first. Then the outer query will be executed. The outer query will be executed. Okay. So this is what the subquery will be executed. So we can have either select within select or we can write any DML operations. Like you, you want to insert some record based on some select statement. Yes, we can write. This is also subqueries. Then update. So we can take update can go for select can go for delete so inside we can go for select operations insert update delete all the dml operation but in the inner query should be a select statement so inner query should be a select statement so this is what we will go for the sub queries so what, where it will be used so we do have different types of sub queries one is single row sub query the first one is single row sub query the second one is multi row sub query multi row subquery third one is multi column subquery fourth one is correlated subquery fourth one is correlated subquery so these are all the four different subqueries are available in oracle or any other sql so what is that we will see one by one so first we will start with single row subquery so single row subquery it means whenever we are writing subqueries in this way the inner query should return only one row. The inner inner query should return only one row. That is called a single row subquery. So if it is returning more than one row, that will become multi row subquery. So we have to write in different way. Whenever we are writing single row subquery, here we will be placing some relational operators. So that relational operator will be either it is equal to okay any different operators like you can go for equal symbol, equal, not equal. So not equal, you can go for this way or this way, not equal. And less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. Any of this symbol, we can use it in our single row subquery. So we will write one single row subquery. So here we know the select statement, select star from employees table. If you consider this employees table, if you consider this employees table, so we do have many employees details. I want to know who is getting highest salary. We know so which is highest salary. If I want to take which is highest salary, then we can take select max of salary. This is highest salary, right? We already we have seen select max of salary from employees. This is the highest salary we are, we are taking. But I want to know who is getting this salary. So we know already that we cannot write any name here non aggregated column we cannot write so that we have seen already in our aggregate function itself so i want to know the first name other columns also then i can go for the subqueries so how can i go so select star from employees where salary equal to 
this salary right so this salary i can put so this is the salary right highest salary i can make this one if you look at here this person only this employee only is getting highest salary but i cannot write always hard coded value instead of this value instead of this value i can make the query itself so today it's this is the highest salary tomorrow if any other salary is coming if any other salary is highest salary every time we cannot go and replace right so that's why we will keep the query itself here so what it will do so this query returns this value the highest salaried employee so this will return highest salary the employee table so only one particular row it will return maximum salary then we are equating so this is called subquery this is called single row subquery single row subquery means the inner query returns only one row the inner query returns only one row it will not return more than one row if it is returning more than one row it will become multi row subquery but here it is a inner single row subquery so now if you if you see here so this is a single row subquery you have to use only this relational operators only this relational operator we can use okay this is called single row subquery so if you look at here subquery the inner query can be executed without outer query the inner query can be executed without outer query but outer query cannot be executed without inner query can i execute no we cannot execute and up to here you can execute if you want you can execute up to here but we cannot execute this alone right this alone we cannot execute so this is called single row subquery okay so one more one more thing i want to take who are all getting more than the average of salary so select the employee list who are getting more than the average of salary so first we will find what is the average of salary select average of salary from employees so you can take average of salary here so who is getting more than the average of salary so i want to take right so select star from employees where salary this is the salary greater than or equal to who is getting more than or equal where salary greater than this particular query so we can use the bracket so this is called single row subquery so it will select the employees list who are all getting more than the average of salary so average salary we have seen it will select the employees list who are all getting more than the average of salary so these are all single row subqueries okay so this is what we have to write single row subquery so what is multi row subquery for an example for this scenario i want to take each and every department okay each and every department i want to take highest salaried employee each and every department i need to take highest salaried employee the one thing is we can go for rank analytical function we can write the other one is we can write in subquery itself i want to take each and every department then i can go for group by right so group by department id so here i will be using the group by department id can i select this particular inner query yes this inner query will be executed so for each and every department it will be executed with this is the value but i want to know who is getting this particular salary so i can go with if i'm going to execute this is the error we'll be getting it so what is error we are getting the error like single row subquery returns more than one row if you are getting this particular error so you can say because of this relational operator oracle assume that okay this will be a single row subquery oracle assumes that it will be a single row subquery so this will be your equal symbol not equal any operator relational operator if you are using so this will become a single row subquery if i want to take all the records then i have to use multi row for this i have to go with multi row subquery so how can i use multi row subquery so multi row subquery means instead of relational operator you have to use the keyword called in not in so multi row subquery if i want to use we have to go with in 
not in greater than any less than any or all so if this all or any always will come along with the relational operator so in i can go with so what is in here instead of equal symbol i can go with in in here so instead of equal i can i have to go with in so why i am going with in so this inner query returns more than one row it returns more than one row right so how many rows 14 rows it is returning if it is returning with more than one row then i have to go with in or not in or any or all okay if i am going to select so this is what we are selecting okay so what is the use case of this particular query we have to select each and every department maximum salaried employee the highest salaried employee for each and every department if you look at here 10th department it is taking one record 20th department taking one record 30th department yes one 40th department one then 50th department our query is returning two records 6500 also highest salaried employee 8200 also highest salaried employee why it is returning 6500 right so 6500 is highest salary for this inner query so that's the reason since we are using in keyword who are all getting this particular salary it is returning look at here who are all getting this particular salary it is returning that's not our use case our use case is for this particular department we have to take so this is something like some logical error then how can we solve this so instead of writing like this we can select the department id also to so select with department id comma max of salary department id comma max of salary from employees group by now if you select this particular inner query it will select two different column so multi row and multi column so multiple row also multiple column also it is returning then if i am going to run you will get error so why i am getting error it's showing like too many values so why it is too many values instead of selecting this way so inner query is returning two different columns but here outer query we are equating with only one column we have to equate with same number of columns here so department id comma salary if i am going to run this also it will not be executed whenever we are writing this var class so make sure that we are making that within the bracket okay within the bracket we have to write if i am going to execute now you can get the correct value so each and every department you are getting highest salaried employee so only one record we are taking if two persons are getting same salary that's okay we can take two two employees list so here if you look at here so this inner query is returning multiple column and multiple row multiple column is two columns and multiple rows we are returning right so this particular query we are passing to the outer query that means this is called multi row multi column sub query multi row multi column sub query if you look at this above query what we have seen this query will give you only the logical error right the logical error it will give you logical error who are all getting this particular salary it will pick the employees from here outer query this is wrong actually this particular scenario this is wrong actually this query is wrong it will give you the wrong result so for that we are going for the multi column multi row sub query i hope you are clear if you consider these four statement select star from employees where department id greater than any of this value so i want to select the employees list who are all working greater than any of these departments that's the meaning so where department is greater than any of this value i'm going to run this outer query if you look at here what is the where class right so this should be your inner query inner query resultant i have given as hard coded value you can write select department id from this table you can write some based on some condition you can take department equal to this one but here i am writing 30 60 90 s some hard coded value if you select select the departments select this employees table 
if you take 90 department id 90 where department id is greater than any of this value greater than any of this value yes 90 is greater than 30 any one of this value right yes we can write this way and then 90 yes 9 60 is greater than any of the value yes 60 is greater than 30 100 greater than all of the value the same way we can go with but if i have 20 20 is greater than any of this value no 20 is not greater than any of the value so that's why the 10 and 20 10 20 30 these three departments you will not get it so from 40 you'll be getting it so select the employees where the department is greater than any of this value any one of the value so instead of writing this 30 60 90 we can go for sub query also so this is the actual query say for an example here we are writing select department id department underscore id from departments where some condition i'm writing okay so you assume that this is inner query where department name in to explain you i am writing this way this inner query will give you the department id 30 60 and 90 so, so that, that's what i have written here so this is in this is sub query right if you are going to execute this query this query will give you from this so this is what i am i'm writing this sub query okay less than any of this value select star from employees where department id less than any of this value 10 is less than any of this value yes 20 yes 30 yes up to 80 at the department will be getting the record from 10 to up to 80 we'll be getting it so 80 is less than 90 so that's why less than any of this value select star from employees where department id less than all of this value less than all of this value so 10 is less than all of the value yes 20 is less than all of the value yes 30 no so 10 and 20 only you'll be getting it then select star from employees where department id is greater than all of this value that means greater than all of this value from 100 we'll be getting it some scenario if if they are writing if you are getting use case in this way you can go for any or all so this is this is what you can go for the any or all statement okay i hope you are clear on any and all we will see more example in our single row subqueries so first one whose employee job is the same as job of stephen so if you look at here first we will check what is the job of stephen okay first we will select select start from employees if you check here so we have the job ids here in our employees table and what is this job for stephen so i will check where first name equal to stephen right the data are case sensitive so we have to make sure whether we are making the first name very correctly so if it is stephen yes then we will not get anything lower case the case sensitive so make sure that we are making the correct one or we have to make with upper of lower of see the stephen job is st underscore clerk the question is whose employee job is is same job as stephen so who are all working as st clerk that's a direct question so we can take this is the job id right so we can take only job id from here only job id from here job id and we can go with sub queries select star from employees where job underscore id equal to so this particular job id okay you can see here so this is the job id right so we can get the job ids so who are all working as st underscore clerk We'll be getting all the employees okay this is what the job id how many record this inner query is returning only one row this is called a single row sub query okay say for an example so here we can see one more example if you look at here i'm going for james going for the name of employees james so here i'm getting two different record two different james are there for this we are getting two records right two records so, but both are st underscore clerk. 
if i'm going to directly write this particular query this cannot be executed so we are getting the error like single row sub query returns more than one row so as we have seen whenever we are making equal symbol then oracle assume that it's a single row sub query but the inner query how many records we are getting more than one row two james are there that's why more than one row if i want to make this particular query in single row query itself single row sub query itself then i can select distinct job id if i'm going to use distinct job id we'll be getting only one job for this particular scenario for this particular scenario the results will be getting one and then we can use it the record we are getting now same as t clerk we are getting right say for an example some other jobs some other record we have in this particular table we have some other name so i'm going to select one more record with steven so if you look at this particular query for this scenario for this particular query i'm getting two different job ids can i make distinct job id again if i'm going to use this again i'm going to get two different two different records only two different records we are going to get it so even though i'm going to make distinct so definitely i'll be getting two different records how can i select so for this scenario see this is what we will be getting it definitely will be getting two different even though we are making distinct we are getting two different records so that's why single row sub query if you use equal symbol will make single row sub query for this scenario we have to go with multi row sub query so how can i use multi row sub query so instead of equal symbol i have to go with in okay so in keyword so in we know already how to use it so in is nothing but you can go for multi row sub query multi row means the inside query we are returning more than one row so for that we have to use in if you look at here ad underscore president st underscore clerk so these two different jobs we are getting it so this is what we have to use so all the queries i have given here kindly practice it okay the next question is so who salary is more than the maximum salary of the job as sales manager okay so first of all we need to get the maximum salary of the sales manager so how can i get sales manager if you look at here select star from employees select star from employees do we have any sales manager here so we do not have any directly the sales manager how can i get it the sales manager i can go and select in jobs table in hr schema we have the jobs table go and check here jobs table where if you look at here jobs table so this is a job id this is a job description job title so we will take where job title equal to where job underscore title equal to the sales manager if you use so what is the job id here i am getting sa underscore man so for the sales manager i have to use sa man here so i have to use job id job underscore id select job id from jobs where job title equal to sales manager so this will return job id sa man so where i have to pass so this one to here okay maximum salary of the sales manager so what is the maximum salary of the sales manager star from employees select star from employees where job id equal to this particular query i can use this query will give you who are all working as sales manager if you look at here who are all working is sales manager what is the question who salary is more than the maximum salary of sales manager what is the maximum salary of sales manager 50000 so here i have to get the maximum salary so max of salary so max of salary so i can get maximum salary so 50000 who is getting more than the salary right who is getting more than the salary who salary is more than the maximum salary of the job is sales manager okay so you can go with select star from employees where salary greater than where salary greater than this particular query we have to use we have to close it so we have written three different queries here so this is inner query 
this resultant will be passed to this this outer query this resultant will be passed to the outer query so this is what nested sub queries so this person is the answer for this question whose salary is more than the maximum salary of the job is sales manager so nested sub query okay next question is whose employee job is same as job id is elon okay so first we will go with this one whose employee job is same as job of elon this query will give you right select job id from employees where first name equal to elon so what is the job id of elon sa underscore rep so this will give you the first answer sa underscore rep and who are earning salary more than the elon salary so i have to find out what is elon salary select salary from employees where first name equal to elon so this is two different condition so who is getting who are all working as a sa underscore rep and getting more than the 11000 that's what the question right so if i'm going to execute we'll be getting okay this particular employee is the answer whose employee job is same as elon the lisa's job is same as Alan s a underscore rep and getting salary more than Alan salary so Alan salary is 11,000 and this salary is 11,500 so that's what we can write so this is also one of the and condition we are writing here this is also one of the sub queries here so we can make use of the sub query okay next question display the senior employee among all the employees display the senior employee so if you look at here in employees table select star from employees table select star from employees table if you look at this employees table we have the column called hire date if you make order by on the hire date so we can see this particular person joined first and the next person so he is the senior member so we can go for ranking on this particular column and take the top one in sub query. How can I take? So first we will take the minimum of higher date. So minimum of higher date is the first higher date, right? 13th Jan 2001. Who are all joined on this particular date? We have to take that's a senior member, right? So who are all joined on this particular date? Select minimum of higher date from employees. That particular higher date equal to in employee step if you look at here the same answer we are getting it so lex is the senior member among all the employees next question find the second highest salary from the employee table okay so this is what the question so if you look at the question find the second highest salary of the employee table this is the question so first of all we will find what is the first highest salary okay the question is second highest salary only not second highest salaried employee so first highest salary is this one and the second highest salary so whatever the next highest salary i'm asking so first we will take the highest salary here first we will take the highest salary here and which is the less than this particular salary if you look at here the maximum salary is this one select salary from employees where salary less than this particular query where salary less than this particular query i can make this way to understand better so these are all the less than of this maximum salary maximum salary is this much less than the maximum salary among all the salary which is the next highest one if you go with next highest one is fifty thousand. among all this if you are going to take maximum so that will be your second highest salary right so that's what instead of taking salary I'm taking salary, maximum salary, second highest salary. Select max of salary from employees. This salary will be passed to outer query. Select maximum salary among all this, where salary less than this particular salary, where less than this particular salary. This will give you the second highest salary. I want to know if I'm asking second highest salaried employee, then who is getting the salary for that person right so you can go for 
what is the salary here 50000 who is getting this salary so we will take one more query select star from employees where salary equal to this particular query we have to use if you look at here then this is what the second highest salaried employee in the employees table so just to practice it you can able to understand clearly the next example sum of salary of jobs if the sum of salary of the jobs are more than the sum of salary of job is clerk first of all we have to find out more than the sum of salary of the job id as clerk so how can i find job id as clerk so do we have any directly clerk so how many distinct clerk is there if you look at here select star from employees we have different clerks actually so we have st clerk we have sketch clerk so some different clerks is there right so among all the clerk what is the sum of salary sum of salary of the job as clerk so how can i take all the clerks jobs so we can go with job id like job id like percentage clerk this one sum of this one so what is the salary 1,33,900. this is the sum of salary of the clerk more than the sum of salary of jobs what is the sum of salary of jobs sum of salary of jobs if you look at here sum of salary of jobs if the sum of salary of job are more than okay sum of salary of jobs first you will find based on the job id these are all the sum of jobs if you look at here sum of jobs so what is the more than this particular jobs more than this particular salary this job right sa underscore rip among all the jobs each and every job id each and every designation this is the job id sum of salary among all the sum of salary what is the maximum of salary this particular job that's a question sum of salary of jobs if the sum of salary of jobs are more than so if i'm going to run this we'll get it so this is the group by resultant right so this is the group by resultant from the group by resultant if i want to select this particular salary then i have to use having class we have seen this particular query in our aggregate function if you haven't watched aggregate function please watch the previous session day seven session so this is the answer for this question then we will go to this this question select the departments where no employees are working select the departments where no employees are working so if you consider particular two queries if you take employees table employees table the employees are working from 90 60 100 30 right 50 and 70 all this employees are working in this particular department but how many departments are there in my departments table from 10 to 270 so for all the departments whether the employees are working no so up to 10 to 120 or something employees are working so i i have to select so by manually comparing we cannot select right if i have more data so we can write some queries so how can i write see here so how many distinct departments are there in the employees table right so select department id so i'm going to select department id from employees this way i'm going to write so how many departments are there these many departments employees are working it is repeating if i want to select only unique records i can go for the distinct right so distinct distinct department id from employees okay how many departments we have from 10 to 20 30 these many departments employees are working then 120 150 up to 270 i have to take right select the departments we can take this way select the departments where department id department id not in not in this particular list am i correct so not in this value if i'm going to select what will happen not in this value 
if i'm going to select i am not getting any value so why if you look at here select department id from employees okay so this this is giving value select star from departments where department id not in so not in we have some value right so we have some value why we are not getting any value so remember whenever we are writing sub queries so remember this option whenever we are writing sub queries whatever the column we are selecting here so that particular column should not contain any null value okay if you have any null value while equating with null values with outside the outer query you will not get any record so to avoid that we have to go with we have to remove the null value from the inner query where department id department underscore id is not null where department id is not null so why we are writing if you look at here this inner query is returning null values because of this null value this outer query is returning null value all the values are null so that's why we are removing the null value by using department id is not null see here from 10 to 140 we are writing then i'm going to execute it so now you are getting it so 120 yeah 150 160 this is what i'm getting so this is called sub queries okay this is called sub query right this is inner query inner query will be executed without outer query but outer query will not be executed without inner query remember this okay the same same queries we can write right outer join also what is right outer join for an example i'm going to select employees table here employees table we are here we have the data so how many data are there so employees are from these departments in departments table i have department id from 1 to 270 for this scenario can i go with right outer join yes what the right outer join will do all the record from the right table all the record from the right table matching record from the left table up to here it will you will get matched up to 110 130 140 so up to here it will be matching right for these value it will get matched for these values you'll get null value on the left hand side correct you will write now then i will show you select how will you write join select all the column names from first table first table i'm going with the employees table i can alias it like e right outer join so i will write select all the column names from first table employees right join you can go for right outer join or right join both are equal right join departments d on e dot department id equal to d dot department underscore id why i'm writing joining here the above query we can write in join also e dot employee id so what is the result you will be getting see for some of the employees we are getting null values right why we are getting null values here so you can take e dot star also e dot star means all the columns from employees table so employees table we are taking all the columns if you look at here from 100 we are getting department name but some of the values so here we are getting the value on the right hand side we are getting the values on the right hand side but null value on the left hand side right null value on the left hand side if i want to take this record alone this record alone what should i do so i can put where class where e dot employee underscore id is null so this is what so no need to take all the columns if i'm going to execute same result 14 records so here also 14 right here also 14 records 120 150 160 same result you'll be getting so based on the scenario we have to go for right outer join or left outer join how will you write the same query in in implicit method same way here you'll go with employees table comma departments table instead of on you'll go for where class so here you'll use and this is inner join result so for right outer join this is the way we have to write so if you look at here 
same result 14 records we are getting it okay so this is what single row subquery multi row subquery multi column subquery then joins also sometimes instead of going for subqueries we can write joins also okay i hope you are clear on all the three different uh, subqueries now we will go to the correlated subquery so correlated subquery means it's a correlated okay it's a correlated that's the meaning of correlated subquery if you look at here the inner query is related to the outer query outer query is related to inner query so how it will be executed for every one record for every one record in outer query it will execute the inner query okay for every one record in outer query it will execute the inner query so if you consider this particular scenario this particular two examples find the employees having at least one person reporting under him okay this can be achieved by using normal query also find the employee name having at least one person reporting under him so overall having at least one person so select star from employees where employee id in so i'm going to take manager id so this is distinct manager id so that means if you consider this employees table for this particular employee who is manager 103 is the manager right 103 is the manager then david 103 then for this employee 114 this employee 100 is the manager so to take this particular these are all the manager id right so at least one person should be there for so that's why i am taking the inner query select manager id from employees group by manager id so i am taking that we are getting this value right so here i am taking manager id here i am taking employee id that's why no need to put this null value so we can take so this is what we are taking it clear these are all the employees at least one particular employee is reporting under okay the same can be achieved by using this is normal query only this is inner query this one is outer query but correlated subquery means select star from employees a okay so i'm taking this as a where one is less than or equal to we are taking so if you look at here this cannot be executed select count of star so what is this count of star will return count of star will give you the count if i'm going to select one yes one means one will be equal to one it will return that particular record so it will take this particular record you take this particular record first record for every outer record it will be executed inner query you take outer query first record to the this, up, this particular query select count of star from employees same table i'm taking as b where b dot manager id equal to a dot employee id you remember the same query we have did it like self join right b dot manager id so this manager id equal to this employee id who is manager of this particular employee so we will take manager id equal to employee id right employee id that's what we will write here so this will select okay for this particular employee this will select manager id which is not equal so it will not select any any value right for this particular record it will not select any value okay this particular record so how many record one it will be selected one will be selected right so that one will be getting here if it is matching this hundred this hundred is matching and this query will be returned so that's what the correlated subquery is returning the values okay so this is what the correlated subquery so execute the inner query using the values i can give you more examples also i will put one session on correlated subquery separately so that you can understand very clearly the correlated subquery so these are all the subqueries which is available in our oracle database if i have duplicate record on the table how can i identify the duplicate record if you consider select star from employees underscore one if you consider this particular table whether this particular table contains duplicate record is there any duplicate record on employee id how can i find so i will make 
Yes, this way. If you look at here, is there any duplicate record on the employee ID? Yes, we have duplicate record, right? We have the duplicate record. 104 and 105 is a duplicate record. So I have to identify. So here very less number of records are there. So we can easily find out it has duplicate record. But in real time project, we may have huge volume of record. So that time we cannot write, we cannot go and check manually. So how can I write the query? So this is aggregate function itself. We have seen select employee ID, this column only, whichever the column we have duplicate. So that particular column you can select, select employee ID from employees underscore one table, employees underscore one table group by the particular column, the employee ID. This is what we have to select, right? We have seen this already in our aggregate function itself. So employees table, we will not have any duplicate, but employees underscore one, yes, we'll be having a duplicate. Employee table is employees table has primary key. That's why we will not have any duplicate. So this is what the employee ID we are getting, but this is what distinct employee ID we are selecting. It will not show you any, any duplicate. This is equal to select distinct employee ID. So distinct employee ID, if you are selecting, whether it will show you the duplicate, no, it will select only distinct. But if I want to select duplicate record, if I want to select duplicate record, you can go with, you can take count here, count of star. So how much is the count for each and every employee ID? So these two are duplicate, right? Whichever the count is greater than one, then this is the duplicate. How can I filter out on the group by resultant? We have to use having, having count of star greater than one. We found that, okay. We found there is two records are there in duplicate. We found, okay, we have the two different records are having duplicate, 104 and 105 has duplicate yes i have to remove out of two i have to remove only one out of two we have to remove only one record this is wrong actually we should not give the same employee id for two records out of two records we have to select only one record can i go like this select or delete from table name delete from employees table employees underscore one where employee ID, employee ID in, shall I go like this? What will happen? Can I go like this? No, I cannot go right. So here we have the two records, two columns. It will not be selected. We have to select only employee ID. Okay, whichever the employee ID here I have, if I'm going to delete it, what will happen? The two records will get deleted. 104, we have two. 105, we have two. All the two will get deleted, right? All the two will get deleted. Four rows got deleted. We should not go in this way. What can I do? I can go for rollback. Can I do rollback? Yes. Delete statement, you can go rollback. So now if you go and check here, yes, you'll be getting. I should not go like this. I have to select only one record out of it. Only one record out of it. How can I select? Deleting a duplicate record. How to find a duplicate record? So this is what we found. So 146, we have duplicate. 205 we have duplicate then we found like this okay count is two here count is three here whichever the count is greater than one we have taken so that's what but i have to delete the duplicate record so how can i delete the duplicate record so this is one way so deleting duplicate record in oracle we can do six five to six ways so this is one way so how can i delete it in oracle each and every record will have unique row ID and number also, row number. Row number is nothing but each and every record will have the row number, one, first row, second row, third row. This is what, if I'm going to delete this particular record, as of now, this record is having five row number. If I'm going to delete this particular record, this will become five. This 146 will become five. So row number, will change at any time, but row ID will not change at any time. Okay. At any cost, this row ID will not, it will not be changed. 
if you look at here in our employees one table the employees one table can i take row id row number yes if you look at here select row number row number row num comma row id from employees underscore one if i select it for each and every record we are getting this row number and row id this is what we are getting for each and every record i have to select we cannot take all the other columns right can i take star here no i cannot select star here if i want to select all the columns we have to go for table alias so here i can use table alias here then i can i can select now if you look at here each and every record is having unique row id so even for 104 also if you look at here okay we will make order by order by third column we will make order by 3 you can see this these two are duplicate right these two are duplicate but even though it is duplicate the row id will be different row number yes it's different only but row id will be different definitely so each and every record unique row id so with this row id we can delete so how can i delete we will keep one row id for each and every record how can i take one row id can i go with max of row id from employees underscore one so what it will do employees underscore one max of row id means it will select maximum one group by group by employee id so for each and every employee for each and every employee i am taking maximum one if i am going to take maximum one only one record is there maximum or minimum anything you can go for only one only one row id so out of these two row id it will take max of row id out of these three it will take maximum one right it will not select this one that green color whatever i have mentioned it is a unique row id we can leave this record unique row id record we can delete other than this right whatever i have mentioned with other colors we can delete this records correct how can i take unique records row id max of row id from employees one group by employee id you can see, you can see how many records we are getting 107 out of 109 so we have to keep these unique records and delete other records how can i do it so delete from sub query right we can go for delete from table name employees underscore one where row id not in where row id not in this one row id not in this particular query that's what you can see now two rows only deleted two rows only deleted right if you go and check here it will not give you any result having count of star greater than 1 previously we were getting two records right now we are not getting any record that means there is no duplicate record in the table there is no duplicate record in the table in the column there is no duplicate it has been deleted you can see here if i'm going to make order by there is only one record and it has deleted other records okay so this is what we can go with sub queries this is also sub query only so delete from table name this is also sub query only the inner query will be executed and then outer query will be executed so we can go with sub queries this is the way so i will take separate i will i will post separate session for sub queries the correlated sub queries and something like with class so we will be writing joins with with statement right so temporary table we will be creating temporary table so that particular table we can make it like some a a here select star from a so that is also possible that i will take after some time i will take this concept in separate session i hope you are clear on this sub queries so kindly practice it i will give you all the whatever here we have practiced i will give you all the statements practice it you have to practice Hi everyone welcome to Nikkei Academy 
in this series we are learning oracle sql completely in our today's session we are going to learn about set operators so set operators we have union union all intersect minus we are going to see everything clearly and we will have practical sessions and before the set operators we have completed eight sessions on sql basic so if you haven't watched these eight sessions please watch it i have given the notes in the descriptions please check the description if you haven't subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon you'll be getting all the notifications thank you for watching let us begin our session welcome now today's session we are going to learn about set operators so set operators is very much used in our real time projects wherever we have same structure table if i want to combine the row level data then i can go for the set operators if you consider these two table customer 1 and customer 2 customer 1 i have some customer list list of data and customer 2 i have some list of data and i want to combine these two customer data in single resultant then i can go for the set operators the important thing in set operator is we have to have the same structure table if it is customer id first one is customer id customer name customer name mobile number here it is a phone number column name might be different but the column data type should be matching the data should be matching and city and city we can combine these two data into one single resultant then i can go for the set operators if it is join two different table customer table and location table customer table customer country table some different different tables two different tables we will join based on the common column is called joins but here we will combine the row into a single resultant this is the set operators okay we have the four different set operators in all the sql the first one is union the union operation the second one is called union all the third one is intersect and fourth one is minus operation so what is this union union all intersect minus should i use only two tables to combine it no there is no limitations you can go up to n number of tables but the thing is all the table should be in same structure table if it is customer yeah you will have all the customer data if it is employees data you will have all the remaining table should be employees data and if it is locations yeah we, we need to have the locations data so if i want to combine the row level data then i can go for the set operators then what is the difference of these four operations right if i do union operation when i combine these two table it will remove the duplicate record in the resultant for an example union will remove duplicate it will remove duplicate record when row level merge is happening union all it will not remove duplicate record when it is going to merge union all will be faster so why because it will not go and check whether it is a duplicate record or not that's what union all will be faster it will be faster then intersect is nothing but it's a common record between both the tables okay so common record so common record between both the tables and minus is nothing but differences so what is the difference we have so differences so these are all the four different operations we will perform in set operations before going to see this particular example we will see one more example then we will move on to this particular example so this particular example if you consider i have single column table called a table a single column table b single column this is a table so table a then this is a table b i have okay if i want to do a union operation between these two table can i do single column yes we can do so union operation it will remove duplicate if you look at here if i'm going to use yeah definitely a union b one one time only it will come so there is no two here then three then four one time then we have the five six and we do not have seven and eight we have only one time nine then we have the 10 so 10 we have and 11 we have 11 and 
on 12 we have so 12 also it will come one time then 13 we have one time it will come it will remove duplicate it will not the same data it will not allow 14 it will come one time so 15 and 20 and 23 20 and 23 whether this one will come no it will not come it's already available so it will not allow duplicate record so this is the resultant of a union b what is a union all b so you can take all the record from first table and you can take all the record from the second table so this is the resultant of union all okay it will not remove any duplicate you will get all the records what is a intersect b this operation is same as our whatever we have seen in our mathematics right the same operation only a intersect b so common record one we will get then we will get the four so you can see four is available in both the tables and the eight is available 13 is available 13 20 and 23 this is what you will get so whenever we want to find out common record between two tables then i can go with intersection then a minus b i want to find out the differences of these two tables. So you, if you take A minus B, consider the A table and if the same record is available here, it will get minus. If you consider this table, one is available here, it will get minus. Three, yes, three is not available, it will come. Four, it will get minus. Five, consider this table alone. This table alone. If the same record is available here, it will get minus. So five, you will get. Eight, it will get minus. 9 we will get it then 11 we will get it there is no 11 here 13 it will get minus 14 yes 14 we will get it 20 it will get minus 1 it will get minus here and 23 also it will get minus here so this is the resultant of a minus b what is b minus a you take 1 it will get minus 4 minus 4 minus here 4 it will get minus 6 so you'll get six here and eight it will get minus 10. So you'll get 10 here. Then we have the 12. Yes, 12, you will get it. And 13, it will get minus then 15. So this is the resultant of B minus A. In real time project, whenever we want to compare two different tables, we are migrating the data from one table to another table. We want to check it whether the data has been migrated correctly we will go for minus operations so if you if you know this particular operation very clearly then understanding the union operation union all operations very very easy okay now we will go to this particular table if you consider these two tables are same structure table then can we do set operation yes we can do if you consider the first one first record so we will take this first record then second record that is available so we will take this one third record yes we will take it then this record it's already it's available okay so one more time it will not come then this one it's already available here four is not available i can take four here and i can take five also three also it's available already so it's a full row duplicate only it will not allow if any one column is changed right so one column value, say for an example here, I'm making Rakesh Kumar, okay? Something in this way. Then this record, so here we have one time it has the data, but this record again it will come, okay? So this is the union operation. So these two are different data, right? It will, it will check for the full row duplicate only, okay? So remember this, so I will remove this one. I will remove this particular data as of now. This is the resultant of customer one, union customer two. Okay. I have created a table here. Select star from customer underscore one. If you look at here, the same table I have created. I have given the create table statement in the below. You can also create this table. Okay. Now I will go to the second table. Select star from customer underscore two. So this is also some different data, but I want to do A union B. So first table, union, second table. So we will check it whether we will get it correct record or not. So A union B, we're getting five records, right? 
you can see here the same five record we got it here same five record we got it here this is what the resultant of a union b the structure if the structure is same and you can have the same column see here i have a column mobile here but column phone number here so what is the resultant column the first whatever the column we have so that's a column name you can get it you will not get it like phone number okay the column since the columns are same you can use the star here if the columns are different different number of columns then you cannot use a star then you have to mention the column names so we will check that also after some time so this is a union b so what is a union all b a union all so we will take first all the records from here all the record from this table i will take this all the records from this table all the records from this table this is a union all b you will get eight records okay so you will get eight records if you go here so this is what the resultant of the a union all b a union all a stable union can i have one more table yes you can have one more table you can put any operation union so resultant of this one will be union with other table so you can have one more table also this is the way but the thing is all the table should be in same structure all the table should be in same structure if you have the table called 3 then we can do union union all intersect minus anything the resultant of first two will be union with the third one okay this is what we can have so what is intersect now that we will go with intersect so intersect is nothing but common record between both the tables so if you look at here what is the common record so common means full row duplicate so this record so this record is available to come on time then this record do we have here no so this record yes it is available this is a common record then i will take this one whether it is a common record yes we have already noted then one more time it will not come so you can make here first table intersect second table you can make intersect here intersect here then you can check now so you'll get only two records the same result the same result we got it okay this is what the intersect what is b minus a what is first table minus second table then we will go to the minus operations what is minus it's a differences so here consider customer 1 minus customer 2 i'm going to take this record will get minus here second one so there is no record you will get it third one yes it is there available here it will get minus this is also it will get minus so only one record will get it a minus b so first table minus second table minus so only one record second table minus first table so what is the result second table minus first table you can take this record is available it will get minus then this one four you will get it three it will get minus five you will get it so four and five you will get it in the b minus a see here four and five we are getting it this is what two different table can i have if i have one more column here as country can i do union operation of these two table as i have mentioned we need to go for the same structure table so here do we have same structure table no right no it is not same structure table but if you consider these four columns it is the same structure so i am going to add i will explain these two table we can go for set operation no issues either we should not consider this column if you consider this column or if you consider this column then you have to add null here null value here or less particular so we will do it now i will add one more column alter table customer 1 customer 1 add country as where care 2 of 100 i have added and i'm going to update the data update update table name customer underscore one set country equal to india for all the record i want to make it like country equal to india that's why i'm not using var class just i'm going to update all the four record got updated then whenever i'm using update dml operation i have to commit it if you go and check this particular table we have 
five columns, right? But this second table, we have only four columns. Can I do set operations now? Whether this query will work? No, it will not work now. So why? Two different structure. If you look at here, so this is what the error we will be getting. This is what the error we'll be getting. What is the error? Query block has incorrect number of result columns. This is what we will be getting it. So why? So here five columns are there, here four columns are there. So instead of taking column names as star, we have to go this way. So how to, we have to first, we have to select this table. So we have to mention the column names here. So what are the column names? So we can take the column names from here. All the column names from here, customer ID, customer name, mobile, city. I will take only these columns from this first table. Second table also, I will take the four columns. Instead of star, I will use four columns. Here it is the phone number, phone. Now it will work. So why? Because I have mentioned the column names here. But if you are thinking, okay, I need the column country here. Will it work now? No, it will not work. So country, five columns here, but four columns here, it will not match it, right? So that's what we'll be getting. This particular error, we'll be getting it. So how can I do? How can I rectify this particular error? If you have this way, either you have to match only that four columns or you can go with null here, null as country null as country. If you look at here, so for the other table, you will get null value. The other table, the card will get null values. This is what. So, but remember, whenever we are going with any set of operations, both the table should be in same structure. I hope you are clear on this set of operations. I have a two different table now. Customer table, then locations table. Can I do set operation of these two table? No, it is a customer table, different table. Location is different table. We have the common column called location ID. So what I can do now for these two table, I can combine the columns. I can combine the column in this way. This is called joints. Many of us will get confused for this scenario. Do we need to go for joints or do we need to go for set operations? If I have same structure table, if I want to merge the rows, then I can go for the set operations. If I have two different table, we have the common column, then I can go for the joints here. Okay. So this is what we have to make sure whether we have to go for joints or set operations. If you look at here, I will take the table name called employees underscore union underscore one. This is first table. They will take this is our first table. How many records are there? Three records are there. How many columns? 11 columns. All the column structures are same. Select star from employees union two. Two here. Same number of columns. Same number of columns, but the record is different. Here I have seven records. Here I have seven records. If I'm going to do A union B, Select this one, select this one, union, select this one. Since columns are exactly matching, I'm making star here. If it is not matching, select the column names. Okay, so you mentioned the column names explicitly. If you look at here, if I'm going to use select union, how many records will be getting it? Unique record between both the tables, right? It will remove the duplicate 100, 101, 102. Then these three from the first table, then second table, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So totally eight records will be getting it, right? If you consider, so this is what you'll be getting eight records. It will remove the duplicate and you'll be getting it. A union all B, you'll be getting all the records without removing duplicate also. If you look at here, duplicate we have, but full row duplicate, remember full row duplicate. If you, are, if, if you are going for union, it will remove the full row duplicate only. Union all, so everything you will get it. What is intersect? A intersect B, 
So what is the result we will be getting? A intersect B, common record between both. So these two are common, right? 101 and 102. So this is what we will be getting it. 101 and 102. Okay. Then what is minus? A minus B. First one minus B. This one minus this one. 100, it is not available here. So 100, it will come. 101, 102 is available here. So it will get minus. So first one minus second one, you will be getting one only. Second one minus first one. Second table minus first table. What is the result you will be getting? 101 will get minus. 2 will get minus. From 108, you will be getting. So how many records? 5 records will be getting it. I hope you are clear on union, union all intersect minus. I have a customer table has some customer location id here we have location id can i go for union no we cannot go with the union these two table structures are different structure this is customer table this is location table i cannot go with union instead i can go for join i can join the columns like this okay you take all the columns from here okay join these three columns here column level if i want to go for then i can go for join row level i can go for union i hope you are clear now i have a patient table so here i have a patient table here i have a doctor table so which operation i have to go set operations or join operations i can go with the join operations so patient and doctor based on the doctor id so i can check okay for this particular patient so which doctor is assigned so they, this one i can go with join so patient dot doctor id equal to doctor one dot doctor id so here i have doctor one table it has two different hospital you assume that hospital we have two different hospital under one management this is one doctor list we have another one doctor list now they are going to merge these two in one single some doctors are there here also some doctors are there here also so if i want to go for union it will remove the duplicate. It will have the distinct list. For these two table, doctor one and doctor two, we have to go for set operations. Clear? Doctor ID, doctor name, mobile, specialist, and here also specialization. Okay. Here also I can doctor ID, doctor name, mobile number, specialization. These two table, doctor one and doctor two, I can go with set operations. And doctor and patient, I can go with joiner. I hope you are clear how this table will work. Set operations, right? Okay. So here I have one questions. They will ask you in interview. If you consider these two table. So I want to go for join. And I have to go for set operations. Okay. If you know this, it's very clear. Sometimes they will ask. I have a table A. I have a table B. I have a table A and table B. For these two table, I have only one column. Column one, here I have table B, column two. I have only one column. Okay, you assume that. For this one, I want to go for join, inner join. Table A, inner join with the table B. I have some data here. I have some data here. So what could be the result? Select A dot column one. Select A dot column one, comma, B dot column two from table A, comma, table B, where A dot column one equal to B dot column two. I'm making inner join, right? This one equal to this one. So I can take one and one here. This one will be equal to this one. Yes. Whether this one will be equal to two? No. So for this, only one record you'll be getting. Second one. For this one, this one will be matching, right? This one and this one will be matching. So one, one, you'll be getting it. This one will be matched with this one. No, you'll not get it. Second one, this record will not match with one. This record will match with two. So you'll be getting two and two here. So this is the resultant of inner join. So what is the left outer join? So left outer join, you'll be getting all this. And three, null. So if you have doubt, then you can create the table, you load the data, and then you can check it. Write outer join. Write outer join. So all the records from here. 
So if it is matching, you'll be getting this one. One will get match. One will get match with this one. So one, 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 one. So you'll be getting this one. And this two will give you matching with this two. Two, two. That's all, right? All the records from the right table matching records from the left table. And then what is the full outer join? This is the full outer join, right? Matching, non-matching record from both the tables. This is what the full outer join. Okay, so what is the union operation? So table A, union, table B, the column name. So what is the union operation? It will remove the duplicate. One, two, three, that's all. This is union operation. What is union all? You'll be selecting all and one and two. This is union all. Intersect common record between both. So one and two is common. Minus A minus B. A minus B will be getting only three. B minus A will be getting null. B minus A will be getting null. So create this table, execute this particular query, you'll be getting it. Okay, sometimes interview, they will change the numbers here. So they will have numbers like this, one, 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 all the ones here, all the ones here, like this also they will give. So what is the result? So this one will join with this one, right? This one will join with this one. Yes, yeah, so one and one, you'll be getting it. And this one, so same one will be joining with this one also. So for one record in left hand side, you'll be getting two record as resultant for this one. One will be equal to one, one will be equal to one. That's what A dot column one equal to B dot column two. Again for this one, two records you'll be getting. Third record two, fourth record two. So you'll be getting like this. This is the result for all other joins. Sometimes they will ask questions. Can I get same result for all the four type of join? Yes, if it is matching, you'll be getting all the records the same. For this scenario, for inner join, left outer, right outer, full outer, for all the, all the values, for all the resultant, you'll be getting the same, same values. So what is the union, union all intersect minus? So union, you'll be getting only one record. Union all, all six, you'll be getting it. Okay, all six ones, you'll be getting it. Intersect, common record between both. Only one is common, right? One is only one common minus null. A minus B, B minus A, null. So this is what. So whenever we are going for any ETL testing, ETL testing, or in our Informatica, if you are going for any testing, so here I have the table, here I have the target table, here I have 100 records, okay? Here I have trans transferred all the 100 records. Then if you do B minus A, if you're getting null, that means I have transferred everything correctly, right? Then you are having 1,000 records here. You are having 1,000 records here. But you are getting only 100 records here. B minus A, you'll be getting null. But A minus B, you'll be getting some value, right? So that's why you have to do A minus B, B minus A. Target minus source, source minus target. So both you have to do it in order to check the whether we have migrated the data correctly. Even if I have any transformation logic, so that transformation logic we have to write in source query. So please practice all this, then you will get to know. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I have given the table here. I have given the tables here. So create tables I have given. I have given that A table, B table, all this select statement and everything. So please practice it. You'll get to know all this. Okay, intersect minus and everything. So this is what the set operations. So what is the difference between set operation and join? Set operations, same structure table. Joins will go with different structure table. Different table also. Set operation will be having customer table with customer table, employees table with employees table, locations table with locations table. But joins will go with employee table with the departments table, employee table with locations table, right? Product table with product description table. Some different, different tables will go with. That's called joins. I hope you are clear on 
set up patients so please practice it then if you have any questions you can ask me Hi everyone welcome to Nikkei Tech Academy we are learning oracle sql in this series now today's session we are going to learn about analytical function this analytical function is very much used in our real time projects we do have rank tens rank row number lead and lag functions if you haven't watched our previous session please watch the previous sessions i have posted nine sessions you can check the descriptions and you can practice it If you haven't subscribed our channel, please subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon so that you'll be getting all the notifications. Without wasting your time, let us begin our session. Welcome. In our today's session, we are going to learn about analytical functions. So analytical functions are nothing but window functions. So we may call it as window function as well. So we do have different window function. After of it. these five window functions are very much used in our real time project the first one is rank function so we have the rank and we have the dense rank and the third one is row number row underscore number then fourth one we have lead function and fifth one we have the lag function so these five functions are very much used in our real time project we will see one by one what is this rank function if you consider this particular table we do have different employees are getting different different salary i want to arrange these employees based on the salary from highest to least so i will do order by on this particular column right so i will do order by on the salary column then i can do okay this is what the from least to highest then i have to make order by on the descending so this employee is getting highest salary employee the next highest next highest salary so we have already seen aggregate function that we can able to take only this particular highest salary and we have also seen sub queries where we can take the highest salary employee the entire row we can take or uh, the second highest salary employee third highest salary employee that we can take it but if i want to take for an example i want to rank the employees based on the salary or based on the hire date or based on any other column like you can go for transaction table based on the transact transaction id we want to order it we want to go for transactional date and transaction amount so different columns we want to do and rank so for this scenario we can go with this analytical function okay now if you consider i have taken only the salary column for the explanation if you consider this is the salary column so different employees are getting different different salary one employee is getting 50000 another employee is getting 40000 20000 then 15000 so some employees are getting out of all this salary so what is the maximum salary so i have to compare all this record right i have to compare all this record then i can say okay this is the highest salary then i can go with another highest i can go with next highest salary so next highest salary will be 60000 next highest salary will be 50000 in that way i have to go with one by one whenever i want to do a window function or analytical function first of all i need to do order by on this particular column so here just i am doing the order by so consider i am going to do order by on this particular column so i am going to make largest to, to smallest i am making this largest to smallest i am just making largest to smallest order by so this is what i have ordered now then i can go with the rank rank is nothing but the first highest salary will be 1 first rank then second highest salary will be 2 then 3 then 4 next highest salary will be 5 so two employees are getting same salary then rank will be 5 and 5 so how we will rank in our school days right the same way here also we will do the rank 5 and 5 next will be 7 so if there is a tie then the one rank will be skipped out here so even if it is 5 5 5 next will be 8 only so rank will get skipped so here 8 and 8 and next will be 10 10 11 12 12 12 so since it is three members are getting same salary 
we will make rank as 12, 12, 12. The next rank will be 15, 15, 16, 17. So this is what, and so on, it will go with the next higher salary. Okay, so this is what the rank. Then what is dense rank? Dense rank is nothing but, say for an example, first rank will be one. So up to here, it is same only. Up to here, it is same only. So one, two, three, four, five and five. But next, if there is a tie, if it is dense rank, there won't be any skip. So next higher salary will be six only. So consecutive rank will be assigned six, seven and seven. The next one will be eight, nine, then 10, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is what we will do the rank, dense rank. Then I will go for the row number. So what is row number? Row number is nothing but same how we will have the row number, right? How we will have the row number. It's a sequence of number. So this is what we will be getting it, all these three. So rank, dense rank, and row number. Okay, you may ask questions. So where it will be used? What is the difference? Different scenarios we will use. So if you consider this one, salary, I want to take top 10 employees based on the salary. So in front of you, 100 employees are standing. Based on salary, you have to take only 10 employees, only 10 employees. Then you can go for rank. You can go for rank. 10 employees you can take. So from highest to least, whatever the employees are getting this salary, you can go for rank. But your, your question is different now. The question is select unique 10 salaried employees. Unique 10 salaried employees. So you can go with dense rank. But this time, so instead of getting 10 employees, you may get how many employees? You may get 14 employees. So 10 different salaries, 10 top 10 salaried employees. Salary we are getting, unique salary. So that's what, this is highest salary, next highest, next highest, next highest, next highest salary. Okay, two employees are there. We will take two employees also. So this is what I can go with, dense rank. Row number, whenever we have the same record, if I want to assign a different number out of these two numbers, then I can go with the row number. So based on some transaction. So if you consider some transaction table, transaction happened on this particular date. If I want to rank it based on the transactional timestamp, then I can give the row number. So this is what within the particular day, each and every transaction, I want to give the number, then row number you can go with. So this is what the difference of these three, then you can consider. Then consider, so this is rank. So how can I write rank? I will explain. So simple, it's very simple. You can go with rank is nothing but always you have to write a rank of over within bracket order by column, order by whatever the column, ranking column. So ranking column. So remember, this is the formula for rank, rank. Okay, ranking column. Either it will be ascending or descending. Okay, so this is the formula for ranking. What is formula for dense rank? So dense rank is nothing but the same way. Here we have to make dense underscore rank. That's all. The row number, same way. You can go with row number over order by. So this is for entire table, right? Entire table, thousand records are there. I want to rank based on the salary. Then I can go for entire table. I can go with order by. But here, to take one more scenario. There are four departments in our organization. So each and every employees are from different, different departments. Out of these four, different, different departments. Now I have to rank on employees based on salary within department. Consider this is the 10th department. Next 10th department, next salaried employee, next one. So out of these four employees, I have to rank it. So if you consider, so out of these four, highest salaried employee, this one, this person, the next highest salary will be 35,000, then 20,000, then 12,000. So I have to rank one, two, three, and four within 10. So this is what we can go for within the department ID. We can do the ranking one, two, three, four, five. This is called group by, right? So grouping it, department ID, we are grouping it and then we are doing the ranking. So in analytical function, the group by, we will call it as partition by. In analytical function, 
we will call it as group by is nothing but partition by so you can consider so normally how will you write a group by normally how will you write a group by so before order by we will write group by right the same way if i want to write any group by here so i have to go with rank of over so before order by i have to use partition by so in analytical function group by is called it as partition by so partition by group column so whatever the column we want to go for so that particular column we have to mention it if you consider so this is called this is called within the group we are making the function rank so one more example i will show you so you can go for dense rank rank any any functions on this group by also if you consider this is the employees table we are the employee id first name last name all this so each and every employees are getting salary i want to rank based on the salary alone then i can go for order by on the salary column descending if i want to go for group by on the department id so here this is what the group by on the department id within this group so what is the salary within the group what is the salary so within the group what is the salary this is what group by on the department id so this one we can say it's the group by on the department id consider this particular table i have the employee id first name and salary so for each and every employees i want to find out the salaries are defined i want to find out total salary total salary say for an example here i have the total salary all the employee salary here so 1,23,708. so that should be applied for all this it's nothing but over keyword over keyword so if you use over keyword it will be applied on all this and if you consider the department id 90 so within this particular department id what is the salary so this is what the salary 58000 then within within the 60th department what is the salary so 28800 then within this particular one 100 department we have the salary like sum of salaries 36908 right this is what if you are if you sum all this so it's a sum all this it will become this one 123708 so how can i take it this one we can use the keyword called over so that i will explain now how the over will be used in our real time project so sometimes in the rank analytical function we will be seeing that over keyword so the keyword is over so what is the keyword called over so i will tell you what is this over if you consider this particular scenario so there are 10 different representatives are there 10 different representative so representative one two three four five they are doing some sales value so representative one he did some sales value for thousand he did sales value for two thousand thousand five hundred two thousand five hundred three thousand the same way so many representative if i want to know each and every representative sales value then i can go for this way i want to go for for all the representative one to five i have the manager one okay manager one so i have to find out okay out of all the representative what is the manager one's target this is one he has achieved manager two manager two is for representative six to ten so this is what manager two here over class will come into picture then senior manager he has manager one and manager two then this is what we have to here we have to use the over keyword okay over keyword how to achieve this i will show you if you look at here select i will take employees table i will take employees table select star from employees table so what is this over keyword will do employees table this is what my salary salary column right i want to find out so highest salaried employee or whatever the way but i want to find out over keyword so what is over will do select the column names i will select all the column names so if you look at here what is this over keyword will do this is salary column right this is salary column this is a department id column so can i find the sum of salary here along with employee id first name all this 
can i find sum of salary okay if you look at here so select star from employees employee id first name salary department id can i select sum of salary here can i select sum of salary here in our aggregate function we have seen is it possible to select sum of salary we cannot select okay say for an example this particular scenario i want to take each and every representative salary their sum of salary that means this salary and some salary so 10000 can i take like this here their salary and sum of salary okay if i'm going to take it will give you error this is not a single row function right not a single group group function this is what the error will be getting then how can i find out is it possible we can use the keyword called over okay if you use over right along with this you will be getting this value you can see employee id their salary their salary individual salary their department id and overall salary so out of this much salary this employee is getting this much salary out of this much salary this employee is getting this much salary out of this much salary this employee like this you can find out okay can i can i find okay out of this much salary this 90th department how much we are getting can i find yes that is also possible how can i find so 90th department i have to go for okay so look at here i have to go this way their department id over we have to make group by on the department id correct group by on the department id so how can i make group by right in in analytical function we have to use partition by okay so partition by department id so here you have to use partition by department id if you look at here so this is individual salary okay so sum of i can make alias name i can make alias name here here i will go for so department wise sum salary okay sum alias name that's all then if you look at here this is what we are getting it right individual salary is this much only one employee is there in the department that's what uh, department wise 4400 and out of total okay out of this much salary 20th department if you take 20th department alone out of this much salary this department is getting 19000 out of 19000 only two employees are there one employee is getting 13000 one employee is getting 6000 okay this is what we can use over class over and partition by partition means here group by so whenever you want to go for group by on analytical function we have to go for partition by i hope you are clear if you look at here so 30th department there are six employees are there so out of these six employees so out of this much salary 30th department they are getting this much and they are getting this much same scenario is applicable in this particular scenario if they are asking like this question okay how can i find out this is the way for each and every representative manager wise total and senior manager wise total we have to tell them i will go for the over partition by clear this is what okay now how can i find out rank rank is very very simple the same way if you look at here so i'm going for rank rank of okay so we have to make the keyword called rank of over in the within the bracket you have to make ranking column on the order by so which column i i'm going for ranking that column we have to go for the order by least to highest means order by on ascending order a rank highest to least means descending order so that's the way we have to make same way a rank of over order by salary descending highest to least then how can i make rank on each and every department this is the rank column so we will do first one then i will i will go for department wise so this is the one employee id first name all this i can go for rank so i can use rank of so all the columns rank of over order by this one this is called rank r and k 
you can use rank from employees look at here employee id first name their salary department id then rank so how the rank is calculating first salary right ascending order we have made it first salary one the next salary will be two two so next will be four so four four then it is making six six seven eight nine ten eleven then next will be twelve so why all the six same salary all the employees are getting same salary i can go for descending also rank of over order by salary descending highest to list this is what it will make highest to list salary employee id first name salary all the column i can make descending order this is what i have to go for rank can i go for dense rank yes we can go for dense underscore rank dense underscore rank we can go for you can see here highest salary next highest 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 next will be 8 only this is called dense rank 8 9 10 10 10 next will be 11 so this is what so dense rank means consecutive rank will be assigned this is what okay this is called rank and dense rank okay we found the rank and dense rank so what is row number same way instead of dense rank we have to go for row number so we can go for the row number so row underscore number of so each and every person it will make row number here so one two three four five so if i want to find out based on the salary i want to go for each and every person uniquely then i can go for the row number column this is what i can go for then here if you look at here this is the salary and now consider there are four departments for this scenario i am taking there are four departments in our employees table so this employee is from 20th department getting 50000 as salary this employee from 30th department getting 40000 as salary this employee so different way we are getting the salary right this is the way we are getting different different salary then the question is so department wise you do the rank so 10th department you take 10th department so one employee two employees three and four employees are there in 10th department so out of 10th department which is the highest one 40000 next highest 35 next highest 12 next highest 20000 next highest 12000 so this is what i am ordering it so highest to list here i am making department id as the group by column in analytical function group by column we will call it as partition by so always group by it will come before order by right so that's why whenever we are writing group by column here in this scenario if i want to write a group by so group by always come before the order by right so here partition by partition by group by column department id so you have to practice it you have to practice it so then only same scenario if i'm going to give in different way you will get to know all this so this is what you have to find out each and every department we can find the salary if you look at here i'm going with over partition by department id so this is what you can so we have to use rank of so rank of over partition by so use rank of over partition by department id all this then each and every department will be getting the rank so 20th department what is this 30th department the rank right one two three four five even if you have a tie then it will make uh, based on the rank see here 50th department if there is a tie so here 11 11 then it is making 13 right so this is what it is making the rank you can go for dense rank also row number also anything you can find you can go with so dense underscore rank so this is what you will make a rank okay one question here this is that common question they will ask in interview right so i want to find out top five ranked employees top five ranked employees so if you look at here so top five salaried employee top five salaried employee right so here this is what the rank i'm finding i have to find out top five salaried employee that means i have to filter out can i use where r and k less than or equal to five 
no i cannot use it why because if i am going to select this this r and k is not a not a physical column in the table if any physical column then i can use the rank physical column i can use this column less than or equal to 5 but here r and k is a derived column we cannot use this way we will be getting error here so we'll be getting error so to avoid this we can go for the sub query say consider this one is the table if you consider this is a table entire select statement okay if you consider this one as a table then r and k is the column right so how can i make this one as a table select star from star from so this is the table select star from the table where r and k right so you can use it this is the way you can use it okay top highest top 5 salaried employee second highest salaried employee it's very simple second highest salaried employee you can go for the same way if you want all the columns you have to select all the columns here instead of dense rank you can select rank itself so rank of over second highest salary less than or equal to 2 second highest salary employee if i am asking second highest salary then you have to go for rank equal to 2 second highest salary employee third highest salary employee any way you can put this way okay i can i go with second highest salary employee in each department in each department it's very simple right each department partitioned by partition by department id so each and every department you will be getting second so why 10 is not available 40 is not available because in 10th department i have only one employee so these these are all the employees are getting second highest salary in each department second highest salary third highest salary if they are asking questions this is the way you have to tell them i want to go for top salary top salary de employee top salary de employee you can you can go for rank equal to 1 top salary de employee so you remember we have seen this one in our aggregate function itself i have told you that if i want to take sub top salary de employee either you have to go for sub query or we have to go for the rank here i am making the rank top top highest salary in each department each and every department who is getting highest salary so this is what we have to find out okay each and every department see here i want to know the highest salaried employee in each in each department or second one right so this is the top 5 employees but i want to know which department they are from department name i need is it possible to bring the department name here if i want to take take the department name i have to go for a join why because department name is there in department table so what is 90 i have to check in department table so for this i have to go for joins how can i make joins it's very simple we know already select column names right select column names from first table so consider this is the first table so from this is the first table i can alias it like e okay e inner join or comma also i can put inner join second table departments d okay on on e dot department underscore id equal to d dot department underscore id okay so this is what we have to do the joins then i can make i want in e column i want all the columns e dot star that means e dot star means whatever the column i have selected from the e table so that will be selected here comma d dot department underscore name so this is what i want to go for where rank so you can say select okay i want to go for order by class order by order by rank r and k so you can see here so the highest salaried employee from executive department next highest will be sales department 
next highest will be executive department so this is what you have to write the joints rank where class order by class the same one can be achieved by using the implicit join method also instead of inner join they should have written like this comma instead of on you have to go for where class so here you have to use and okay this is the way also you can write same so this is ansi method below is the implicit method employees e departments d where then and condition then this is what so this is what you can go for the rank dense rank row number all this i have given all the queries here so group by partition by so how can i make least five salaried employee so rank of right so least five salaried employee rank of we have to make order by on the ascending order top five earners top five salaried employee this is what employee with the department name that's what we made it now so instead of selecting a dot star here i have used all the columns name separately okay so this is what i can go for the functions then we do have the lead and lag function in analytical function we do have lead function and lag function what is the lead function and lag lag function will do right if you consider this particular query select employee id first name all the co columns i have taken so lead of select star from employees i will explain first so i want to know so who has joined before this particular person who has joined before this particular person if i want to know how can i do it who has joined before this person or after this person who has joined after this person i have to make order by on the higher date so if i if i'm going to order by on the higher date who has joined after this lex okay after lex william has joined after william herman has joined so this is the way i can find right after means lead before means lag so who is getting more than salary of william then i have to go for salary right order by so 8300 who is getting more than the william of salary jack is getting more than the william of salary so that's what i have to find out lead and lag so the same way lead of higher date it will take the date over order by higher date that means after higher the first name first name means which name it will take okay so it will make order by on the higher date for each and every person it will make the after lex william has been hired on this particular date okay next one william after william herman has been hired on this particular date this is what lead and lag function will do lag means the before you can go for lag also and lag also you can go for column name who is getting salary higher than me i want to find out then i can go for this way not only this particular person for all the person so why here it is null he is the first person highest he joined first the company that's why before hire no one is there so you can see this is the way lead and lag i have given all the function all the statement here just to go through all the statement you will get to know all the statement very clearly so these are all about analytical functions so start practicing it you can get able to get it so when will you use row number this is the way for an example if i have sample data i have given some queries here so take this particular table create this table here yeah, the transaction date transaction id account number name credit or debit amount balance amount we are doing the transactions i want to know select top five balanced account top five balanced account so this is a balanced amount is there based on the balanced amount we have to make top five so order by on the balance amount descending take the rank five select latest five transaction for each account latest five transaction for each account 
latest transaction five transaction do the order by on the transaction id to the transaction id why because transaction id is unique descending order okay group by account number each and every account number we have to find out latest five transaction group by on account number take the transaction id on rank descending order then take top five which is a top amount transaction in each day that means balance based on the balance amount so each day we have to do the ranking so if you want to take entire row then you have to go for the rank function only if i want to go for entire row we have to go for the rank only if i want to go for top or bottom in the column level entire row you want to take then i have to go for rank if i want to take amount only then i can go for the aggregate functions so i will give you this particular statement to you so just to go through you can able to find out all the rank and dense rank very clearly if you have any questions you can ask i will give you this document also So we'll start with views. So views in database. So what is normally views? Most of the project, most of the ETL project and everything, normally we will load the data into a table. Okay, if you take a production database, if you are, this is the database, in this database, we will load all the tables. Okay, the table will get loaded by a system user only. A jobs will be running, this will get loaded. So all this table, will get loaded by the system, will insert, update the record into this table. These tables are production table and this is very, very sensitive data and no one will have access to these tables, these tables, okay? No one will have access to these tables. So normally in real time project, what we will do, on top of these tables, we will create a views, okay? We will create a views. So what is views here? So views is nothing but on top of this space table. So it's a, on single table, you can create a view. Okay, whatever I have mentioned, this color, it's like a views, you assume that. A single table, you can create a view. Okay, one view. Or you combine multiple tables and create a view. So why? Because if you're writing, okay, if I want to write some reporting query here. So I want to take some reporting query here in this software, this uh, loading the data into this table. Then normally how we will do, so our, you assume that our client is asking some reporting. So they need to combine three to four tables. They need to take the data. So every day combining this and running the joining query will not uh, give them the good idea on the tables, right? Every day they need to prepare the query and then they, if they are going to run this, it will take more time. Uh, even the performance wise, so every day we are running one query, it will take first to parser, it will, then it will go for the explain plan and everything it will do. Optimizer and everything will come into picture. See, instead, if you are saving that query as the uh, object, the next time for database, it's very easy to give you the data. It's very simple, right? Already we have created a, we have executed that particular query. We have created an object so that will give you easily. 
So from here, whatever the report you are going to take, so that report from views you will take. Maybe a single table, maybe a multiple tables. You can combine. So first of all, what is views? You'll see in Oracle, we do have. So this is the agenda for views. In Oracle database, we do have uh, different views. What is the view? We have normal view. We have materialized view. We have inline view. The normal view we can create. Materialized view we can create. But inline view we cannot create. Okay. So inline view we cannot create it. It, it can be handled by system itself. We do not have control on inline view. So what is that inline view? I will tell you. So first of all, what is a view? Say for an example, if you take a book, you take a book, okay, you have some book. So if you are, it has some content here, it has some content, so some contents are there in this book. And then you are seeing the data directly, right? So instead of direct, that means accessing this book directly. So that is normal table access. You assume that table access, but you are not accessing the book directly, you are going to keep one lens here. You assume that you are going to keep one lens here. You assume that in that way, we are going to keep one lens. So through the lens, we are accessing the, the data. So you are you are zooming and then you are seeing the data. So what we are going to see, whatever we are seeing here, so that is coming from base in the book only, right? But this is simply a view, that's it. So where it is coming, the actual data, it's coming from the book only, right? The, the, the similar concept is applicable on views. For an example, if you take this is a table, it has millions of data, it has millions of data with multiple columns. So you have many columns here and it has millions of data. It has very sensitive data also here. For an example, banking, banking uh, you are taking. So who knows your uh, card number? Who knows your card number? Who knows your uh, PIN number? Do you know? Anyone knows uh, your PIN number in the bank? No. No one knows your PIN number except the system, right? Only system and you know this details, full details. So they will connect to the IVR and then they will check it, right? So all these are coming from the base table. But they will ask you to verify some details, right? So those details, they might be getting from different tables or they might be getting from the base tables only with some columns they will create. Even if you have hundreds of columns, whatever the column needed, so they will create one view on top of it. On top of the base table, they will create a view restricting the data, restricting the columns. So this is for one view. You can create one view here, okay, view one. You can create one more view on the same base table. Yes, right? So you can create one more view on the base table. Say for an example, this view is for US customer. This view you are creating for India customer or different product ID, whatever it may be. A different filter condition you are going to apply and you are going to create a view. So this is different view. It's a view too. You can create n number of views on this. And you can create a view on top of view also. On top of view also, you can create the one more view. So by combining two views, three views, you can you can create another view. It's fine. So view is nothing but virtual table. View is nothing but virtual table. For an example here, I have 1 million record. Okay, 1 million record, it occupies some space. So nearly I'm saying that 2 MB or 3 MB, you assume that, okay, simply I'm saying some rough calculations, like what 2 MB is taking. This is the only space it will occupy in the normal view. In the normal view, it is the only space it will occupy. In the base table only, it will occupy the data. But what about view? View will be created only with the definition. Okay, the definition only, say for an example, this view will be created. So you can create, create view, view name. So you will use view name, view one as select statement. So you will use select statement here to select the date, 
yes, you will choose select statement. You select a so view is nothing but simply a from select statement only. Whatever this select statement is going to return, so that is the view will return the data. So this alone will be stored as an object in the database. Only view definition will be stored. Whenever you are going to execute this statement, select star from V1. Okay. So what Oracle will go and do? So Oracle, but first it will check. First it will check whether it is a table, right? View one it will go and check the table. So is there any table with V1? No, it will scan all the tables. So here, for an example, if it is HS schema, it will go and check all the tables. Okay, it will say like, it, it, Oracle is not finding this V1 in the table list. Immediately, it will go to the views. So Oracle will go to the views. It will check whether V1 is available here, right? Okay, view V1 is not available. That is what it will return. Table or view does not exist. Clear? So what is the meaning? Table or view does not exist. So first, it will go and check the table list. And then if it is not finding the table list, it will go and check in the views list. If it is not finding the views list, it will return table or view does not exist. So it's a table is different object. Views is different object. Views is nothing but only definition will be stored whenever you are going to execute the statement. So that particular time only, it will go and check. Okay, it's a create statement. Yes, select statement, right? This select statement will be executed on the base table and it will give you the data. So remember, the views always give you the, the refreshed data, the latest data. So why it is latest data? So you are loading the data here today at 10 a.m. You are selecting the data at 10.30. So whatever you have, you have updated recently, so that data will be available in the view. This is simple view. Simple view means base table is only one table. Okay, you are taking the data from one table is called simple view. So you can create view. A view is nothing but you are creating. It's like a virtual table. A view is nothing but a virtual table. It is created by query. By a query joining one or more tables. You can join with one tables or more than one table. That's a one thing, query joining one or more tables. A view can be based on one or more tables or other views also. That's what I told. You can take the data from other views also. A view takes up no storage. Only view definition will be taken. That's what the, the view definition, okay? In the data dictionary, it will take view definition. If you open this view, right? So if you take, this is the view. So how it will store this? If, you, if I'm going to take this one, this particular time, it will go and run the view definition and then it will give you the data. Okay, this, this is giving you the data based on the view definition. But this is the SQL. If you open this SQL, so this is the view definition. How they have created? Create or replace views, view name. They have selected. So what is the view? So this is the view, HR, employees details view. They have taken all the columns, employee ID, job ID, whatever the column here we have, all the columns they have taken and select from how many tables? So one, two, three, four, five, six tables. They have joined six tables. They have put all the where class. This is joining conditions, right? This is joining condition, inner join. All these are inner join with read only. See, with read only means this is a read only view. So what is that? I will explain. Okay. So you can create this view is updatable view or read only view. That is different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a view. So for this employee statement, create view, view name, employees underscore V as select column names. Whatever the select name, select column I'm going to use. Select statement, select. I need employee ID, yes. Go for employee ID. Go for first name, first underscore name, comma. 
i can go with whatever the column i need email different order also i can select phone number phone number comma department id department id so you can put uh, salary also here phone number salary comma department id from employees table so always use hr dot employees so always use a schema name dot table name where class i'm using where the department underscore id equal to some or or in okay so in in class i'm using 30 60 and 90 i'm using okay so what is that this view i'm creating so those who are working in department number 30 and 60 and 90 that with that particular uh, employees with these columns only i'm going to create a view so view always will have a select statement if you run this whatever i'm going to get the result so that's what it will be created as a view this is the view so whether this will be this will be uh, this is the constant data no whenever i'm going to insert or update data on the base table the view also will get automatically refreshed so that's what the meaning here so this is the view so view has been created right so employees underscore view has been created so this is the view you can see here i'm going to do this select star from this one so if i'm going to run this if i'm going to run this so what underscore v is nothing but view so always you can see in real time project also if anything tables you are seeing that underscore v it's a view table if it is this one if you are going to run this if you are going to execute this oracle will go and check this one in the tables whether we do have the table no right in the table name can i create can i create the views on the table name no i cannot create see departments can i create views name is already used by an existing object so that means the views and table names is a unique one okay got it if i'm going to refresh this you will have the employees underscore v here this is only definition will be stored whenever i'm going to execute the statement so that particular time alone it will go and fetch the data from the base table that is what the view will be created this is updatable view so why so why because if i'm going to insert see here it has 11 columns in the base table okay here i have five columns in this table can i insert the data here in the base table yes if you are inserting this immediately if you are going to refresh this view you will get this data only for these columns here so based on the conditions right if you are going to refresh only these departments yes you will get the view data correct but can i insert the data in into the view can i insert the data into the view yes you can insert okay insert the view data the corresponding column will get inserted here data will get inserted here provided these columns say for an example these columns right what is the value it will be passed what is the value it will be passed since you are not passing a value it will pass a null value right since you have six columns remaining five columns will pass a null value it should not be a not null column got it if it is a not null column it is defined on the base table you cannot insert the value here even though it is updatable view if i'm going to insert the data here insert into this view values i can use employee underscore id sorry i can use employee id directly some value i'm using okay two three hundred employee id first name i can use some first name right and email see these columns only you can put no other columns and email so i can use some email id and i can go for phone number yes i can use some phone number here just i can use single quotes since it's a character 
and salary salary here and some records 60 i'm going to insert whether this record will get inserted how many columns are there six columns are there remaining five columns it will pass null value so that's why you are getting a value like cannot insert null into not null column why why because it has employee id first name what is the value will be passed for the last name column last name column it will be passed with null value but null value in the table if you describe the table dsc employees table it is a not null column so null value cannot be accepted so that's why we are getting this error so what i'm going to do can i refresh this view the yes, same definition can i refresh yes so you can use you can drop the view and create a view or you can go for create or replace so what is the meaning of replace create or replace view view name if i'm going to use create it is like an object only if already view is available it cannot be created one more time but replace keyword whatever the view is already available it will replace with view new view definition so for an example employee id yes first name last name you can use last name column also it's a not null column right last name yes then email not null phone number yes then higher date column phone number then i have to use higher date column job id higher date same order i will use higher date job id comma salary comma that's all right so that's it you can use uh, these columns department id so just i'm going to use this select i'm going to run see here view has been created now can i run the statement now can i run the statement but this statement will not insert why because we have updated two or three columns right so i can go with to so employee id yes first name yes last name also we have to provide right we have to give last name just you have to use the last name and the email id phone number higher date i will take system date okay this date and uh, job id okay so job id i will use uh, something like sa and score rep sa rep so sa underscore rep job id salary and department id so this one i'm going to insert it whether it will get inserted yes one row got inserted where i have inserted insert into table name it is not a table right it's a view can i insert a data into the view yes you can insert where it will get inserted on the view or base table view only it will get inserted or base table it will get inserted on the base table the last record if you go and check whatever the column we haven't mentioned that will be taken as null value here right the manager id so employee id first name last name email phone number higher date job id salary manager id and depart manager id alone i didn't make right so it will take manager id is null commission percentage is null correct so those two columns i haven't mentioned it is taking so it has inserted in the record so if i'm going to use select star from the view you'll get this record right yes you are getting this record so i'm going to run this statement one more statement here i'm going to use 70 70 here i'm going to use 301 some other value i'm using okay i'm using john some other phone number i'm using okay if i'm going to execute will this record will get inserted yes it will get okay, unique constraint related email column okay i will use uh, this is unique constraint that's what i will go for uh, another name just i can use one row got inserted where it got inserted 
on the base table yes if i'm going to run this view whether this record will get included 301 why why 301 is not included why this record is not included on the view see insert into view right we have included but i'm going to select this view why it is not selecting that 300 right you you are clear right why this 301 is not selecting why because this is department id 70 correct this is department id 70 but view definition we have put only department id this value so that is what it got restricted clear on this okay so what i'm going to do now i will roll back so whatever i have inserted i'm going to roll back so roll back only on the dml statement not ddl statement the view definition will be there so this view i'm going to make as read only so what is the statement i'm going to use with read only with read only i'm going to make this view as read only it is a read only view we cannot go and do any insert or update statement or any dml statement on the view got it i'm going to select yes view has been created with this data okay why 300 not available i did roll back that's right okay we have data but now i'm going to i'm trying to insert the data into this table this one whether insert will be supported it cannot be supported you can see here cannot perform a dml operation on a read only view this is called simple view why it is simple view we are taking the data from one single table that is a simple view okay got it so the view contains no data yes all the data it shows comes from the base table clear a view can provide additional level of table security by restricting access to set of rows columns on the table normally what we will give in real time project like a base table no one will have access this table list right no one will have access in the real time project everything will be locked no one will have access if you want to see what data is available on the table you have to deploy a view on the table normally that is what we used to see what data are available on the table if i want to know we will deploy one code on the view we will create a view then view we can select so that view also if it has any sensitive information that will be restricted and you can create the view so this is the way we will create the view clear so one more implementation of the the view so normally in re, it, it it hides implementation complexity say for an example my uh, client is asking one report the report should be executed on daily basis so what we have to do so it's a com the combination of multiple tables see this is the one they are asking employee details view they are asking this data right see is this coming from one single table no i need a salary commission department name their job title city state province and all this i want to get it right the region name and everything i need to get it so my customer is asking this particular view but this is a complex sql query you assume that this is also very simple the only thing is we have done with joins but we used to have uh, multiple columns also we can create it uh, use by using the case statement you can use uh, case when all this you can choose and you can put some views you can create okay that's what we will create a view and that is the view name we are going to give okay whatever you ask the data it is available in this particular view you always take the data from this view that's what we will take so we will put the view from the view we will extract the data and we will give it to the customer for any reports okay we will not take data from the base table that's a view okay so can i create a view on top of a view create 
or replace view view name employees underscore v2 right v2 select star from employees underscore v v where department underscore id equal to this this data only i'm selecting okay this data only selecting create or replace view view name as this one so view name you can put column names also like this view view name you can whatever the column names you are selecting here it's like alias name okay you can select like this and then you can put or you can put the uh, the alias name also that's fine so i'm just create sorry i'm just creating a view on top of you yes okay you can create if i'm going to select start from v2 okay this is employees underscore v2 it is nothing but this will go and take the data from view one it will go and check what is view this view v1 table sorry this view table it will run that particular statement so that's what it's like a inner query so how it will execute right so that's why it will execute can i join the tables yes you can join say for an example i want to know what is 60 you can join the table right so view one is view second one is table departments okay i'm selecting create or replace view so instead of selecting all the columns so i can put the employees v dot actually it should not you should not use star here we'll try uh, departments departments dot department name i will select here from the views where in this one right in this table dot in this one i'm just creating okay so a star also has been created here normally we should not use this way in real time it will take performance issue so i have created here you can see okay first name last name okay so since i'm not see what is the mistake i did i did only the filter condition it is when it went for cartesian product right see that's what See, 135 record has been created with Cartesian product. So I forgot to mention the join condition. So what is the join condition? So where the employees v dot department underscore id equal to departments dot department underscore id and right. So you can use this way. So since I have used a replace view, whatever the previous way view definition, it will get replaced. So this is the way you can see all are from IT department. 60 is nothing but IT. So this is a this is a view. This is the base table. This view is called complex view. Okay, what is complex view? So complex view means you are uh, creating a view combining more than one table okay can i insert the data into this table directly no it cannot be inserted we do have the so if i want to insert the data onto the complex view you have to use the triggers okay so why because directly you cannot insert or update the data it has the department id two columns right so we will get con the oracle will get confused which department id i have to insert to do any DML operations on the complex view, you have to use the triggers. So when we are going to see the triggers, right? So that time we will create one complex view. I will tell you how to do the DML operations on that. Okay. So this is like a complex view. Clear. So you can create a view on top of you. You can create complex view, all this. So subset of columns on or more tables. Yes. You can take any complex queries also. Say for an example, multiple function. So here I will take one, one sample queries from here. Okay. So what I'm going to do? 
So always my customer is expecting a top five earners with department name. So this query will give you the top five earners, right? This query will give you the top five earners. So this is combination of two tables, right? We are using. I have used, uh, sorry, I have used some. I have used some ranking also here. So if I'm going to execute the statement, it is giving some data, top five earners. So top five earners based on the data, this value will get changed automatically. So I'm going to create a view on top of this. Create or replace view, view name, EMP underscore top five earners. Okay, I select start from this one. I'm going to I'm going to run it. So I'm going to run. This has been created, right? If you are creating a view by combining more than one table, is called a complex view. See, this is a complex view. So whenever I'm going to execute this statement, this is not a table. Oracle, how it will take? If I'm going to to uh, take one, whether this is a table, no, right? Whether it's a view, no, that's what it will return. Table or view does not exist. Why it is returning this way? That means Oracle will go and check first in the table list. It is not there. Then it will go and it will go and check in the views list. It is not there. That's why it is returning table or view does not exist. So if I'm going to execute this statement at the moment, it will go and check on the table list. There is no table list. Okay, next immediately it will go and check the views definition. Okay, the views definition it will go and check. It will views definition is the select statement. In the runtime it will run this query and it will return the data. So this is a complex view. This is a view, not a table. So describe uh, the view. Yes, it will give you the date. So view definition, if you want to check, so you will have a select star from all underscore. I have given one dictionary view tables, right? All underscore views. If you go and execute, you will see this. So you have to use where. See all this view is showing here. Top five earners. You have to select the text here, right? So the view name is, what is the column name? View name. Select text here from this one and view underscore name equal to this view name. So this is the way in Oracle database, you can find the view def. So view definition, you have to take this one. Okay. If you see this, so this is the view definition. You have to remove this double quotes. So this is the view definition. Always you have to take from here, this table, all underscore view. Why? Because if you're, see, you know, you have created a view. Today you have created a view, this view. You know the view definition, right? So tomorrow I'm not giving the view definition. You are running this. You are running this. And you are seeing some data. But you don't know what is this. This is a view, a table list. You are not seeing that. Directly go and check in the all underscore views. So definitely views will be there. So you can put owner equal to HR, view name equal to this one. Then it will restrict. This is a complex view. If you want to do any DML operation on the complex view, you have to do the triggers. Directly, you cannot do it. Why? Why? Because you are having a complex view here. You cannot do it. So nor in real-time project, normally all the views, most of the views will be created like a read-only view. Okay. And we do have some schemas. Okay. Some other schema. One schema in the database, one schema, all the core tables will be there. The schema, no one will have access. Only system user will have access. All the views will be created in the schema. This schema, you will have access. Okay. Views should, will be created. You can view other, you can refer other tables also. You can refer other tables also, and then you can create the views. But if you see this, a view or complex view or whatever, maybe the view, normal view will take only base table data whether view will take more space no this is a virtual table it will not speak it will not take more uh, space 
will take only the data from this base table. It will not take the space. No more extra space. It is a virtual. Only this view definition will be stored in the database. This view definition, right? Whatever we are creating. So that view definition alone, this view definition alone will be stored in the database. That's what Oracle will execute the statement, will give the data. So what Oracle will do, right? If it is a complex view, so it knows, uh, say for an example, this is the same, same query you are running multiple times, daily basis. Oracle will put this access plan, okay, execution plan in the memory. If you're executing the same query multiple times, it will put this execution plan in the memory. Automatically, it will quickly give you the result. So very first time you are moving from one lo location to another location, by car or by travel or some, 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 somewhere you are going, very first time only you will you will find all the way right daily you are going then you will not find that much difficult the same way oracle also will put the entry but instead of running the query alone if you are creating a view so that will improve the performance and also you are giving one extra security on the data select row id from v2 i am selecting row id comma employee id Okay, you assume that row ID from employee ID. Select row ID, employee ID from V, sorry, employee, employee stable. Both will return different row ID or same row ID. Row ID from the base table, right? The V2, which table we have created? V2. V2 based on V1. V1 is based on V. It's all the data coming from the same table. If you see this row ID, I will take only two records. So this is the row ID, right? And you are seeing this record. Sorry, uh, that record has been restricted. 103 and 104, right? Okay. I will take 103 and 104. 103 and 104, right? See here, is it same or different? It is similar. So why it is similar? It is data is coming from the base table. Data is coming from the base table, right? So this is the physical memory of this data. This is, these two are like a virtual table. The row ID will be similar. For nor, remember for normal view, row ID is similar. Why? Because the physical data is coming from the base table. This is one of the interview question, but we do have materialized view. That is different concept. So this is normal view. What is view in Oracle? That's what I have explained here. The security reasons. Okay. Then reducing the complexity of a query. Yes. The prerequisite. The prerequisite for this. So in your own schema, you must have a create view system privilege. Yes, you should have. And create a view is another user schema you must have create any view system privilege. So who will provide this in real time? Only DBS will provide your request them. Okay, how will you create? The year create or replace view view name, any valid select query, read only view. So simply how to use with read only, that's what. This is describe view, you can see, you can put any DML operations. Complex view can be constructed on more than one base table. So in particular, complex view can contain join conditions, group by subquery or anything. It's a combination of more than one table. That is a complex view. I hope you are clear on the normal view. So if you see this, I have given all this uh, query here and uh, what this mean by uh, inline view. Inline view means it is not created by the user. It is created, handled by it is handled by the system okay it is handled by the system whenever you are running this query okay say for an example i'm taking this query okay this query select statement this is one of the example for inline view so inline views handled by system we are not going to handle it what is that view if you see this it contains a select statement and here we have one subquery right here we have one subquery while executing this query, Oracle first it will execute this statement 
Oracle will execute this statement and it will store a value in this table called A. Okay, it's a virtual table. It's an inline view. Okay, it's a, a virtual table. It will store a fraction of seconds. This A will get joined with the D, this department table. This is a physical table. Okay, this is a physical table. But this is not the physical table, right? This is not the physical table. A is not physical table. If you're going to use select star from A, you will get data. No, you will not get data. When you are going to execute this particular statement, at this moment only, the A will be present, right? This is called inline view. Whatever it is, Oracle handles this select statement that is called inline view. So this A is called inline view, nothing but the Oracle will take, this query will be executed and it will store this value for a temporary, like not that temporary table, temporary table is different concept, but this is called inline view in Oracle, okay? So it will store this value and then it will join with this D table. It will give you the data. It will get the A dot means inline view table dot, the column names. There is no physical table called A. It will take this table. So that is called inline view in Oracle. So normal view, we have both a simple view, complex view and inline view. So I hope you are clear, but inline view is not handled by the user. Inline view handled by the system. Materialized view. So what is materialized view? For an example, in real time project, you'll be having a, a different locations. You assume that you are in one location, North America regions. Okay, so other regions also you might be having Europe regions or uh, APAC regions. Okay, so some other regions you have. So normally what we will do in real time projects. So this is one scenario I'm saying. This is one scenario. So you have a tables, a table, one main table in this particular regions. In the particular regions, you have one main table. It has all the data. You assume that it has all the data. But the users in this particular location, EU regions or the APAC regions, they are running the reports. Okay, they want to take the reports. This reports, okay, they are taking the reports from the tables. Okay, from the tables and they are joining it and they are, they are running it. But all these tables are coming from these regions. Okay, you are creating a view here. You are creating a view. Create or replace view, view name, view name, view two, a select star from, you are writing on query, select star from a table. Okay, so table underscore one, this is coming from this particular regions. Okay, this is a view. Here also you are writing on view. It's a simple view, right? So if you are creating a view in this way, so every time if you are running the reports on this particular location, in this particular location, it will go and take the data from this base table and then it will produce a result. So there is always a latency, a network latency, right? So it is going to the another server in the network another regions also data center and then it is producing the data here results here yes it is producing the results here so this is two different locations we have the data two different regions but you are going to run this same view so it is taking always data from here and it is taking the results here so this will take network latency and performance issue so this time what we are going to do so we are not going to do this this approach. Okay, this approach we are not going to do. We are going for a different approach. Okay, whatever the base table here we have. So it has all the data. And from the base table, I'm going to create one more base table here. Okay, one more base table here. We assume that the data has been loaded at 7 a.m. Okay, in the base table. This is a main table. It contains all the regions and North America. We have taken one more view. It contains only North America. But from the base table here, right, we are the 7 a.m. We are loading all other 
regions data. So from this table, we are creating one more view here. That is nothing but a snapshot of this one. We are going to materialize it. That means we are going to create a physical table. Okay, snapshot. So we are creating, it's like a, uh, you are taking, okay, instead of seeing the data like a lens, you are going to take a Xerox copy, okay, or photocopy. So you are you have loaded the data 7 a.m. After that, you have taken the photocopy at 7.30, you assume that 7.30 a.m. you have taken the photocopy. So you are seeing some data here, right? You are you are taking for the EU regions. This is EU regions data. It is showing you. Can I take the reports from here? Yes, I can take the reports from here. This is a physical table. It is a physical table, okay? It is a materialized one. It is a view only, but it is a physical data contains. Since it has the data in this server, in this local server, then this report performance will be good. So that's why we used to create a materialized view. Materialized view here. Okay, materialized view here. So we are materializing it. So that means normally we'll go for two different regions, two different servers. We used to create a materialized view. We'll go for a DB link. Okay, we used to have the DB link for the materialized view. So what is DB link? It's a link between two databases. So you have to use from this state, from this database, if I'm going to create a view, I will create okay db link. Go to this database table name, a schema name dot table name. I will create a view here. Yes, I have created. I have taken the view seven thirty a.m. And then seven thirty a.m. I have taken report is showing. Okay, everything is fine. And then you assume that ten a.m. ten a.m. in the base table there is an update. Okay, some data again we have updated here. Data load reload has happened. So data has been updated at 10 a.m. So here I didn't do anything. I'm going for the 10.30 a.m. on report I'm taking. 10.30 a.m. If I'm going to take the reports, will it contain just updated data without any reference or anything? No, it will not contain. If it is a normal view, if it is normal view, it will contain always update, right? See why? Because normal view means always you are going to execute this. At the time of execution, it will go and execute the statement on the base table. Even the 10, 10 a.m., 10.30, whatever the data is refreshed. So that data will be showing here. That is refreshed data. But here, without refreshing, if you are referring the previous view, that is it will contain your old data. One point, okay? Are you clear this point? It will contain all the data only. So you have to do periodical refresh. So that refresh is very important in the materialized view. So materialized view means you are creating a physical copy of the view. So you have to do the refresh. So there is different types of refresh are available. I will explain that. But what is refresh? Whenever the base table is refreshing the data, so you have to do the refresh on the data. So you have different kind of refresh. So you can on commit refresh. Whenever you are committing the data here, you can do the refresh, force refresh. Refresh means you have to simply execute refresh statement. It will get refreshed a view and then you can get, okay. So you are seeing the row ID here on the base table. You assume that this is base table. You are seeing the row ID of the base table and row ID of the view on the same data. Is it similar? No. Why? It is a materialized one. It is not a table. It is a view only. It is a materializing it. Materialized table means, materialized view means, okay, our schema object. Again, it's a schema object that can be used to, to summarize, recompute, replicate. This is a very important, okay, replicate and distribute the data. This is what, okay. So mostly like we'll go for reporting. In that way, we'll go for this one, materialized view. A materialized view can be stored in the same database, on the base table, or different database. Mostly like different database only we'll go for. Okay, 
so it will improve the query performance mostly like query performance whenever you are going for the reporting request data warehouse environment see here data warehouse right data warehouse environment we are creating a data mart or anything we view so try to do this view on materialized view but for materialized view you should have a access but here we do not have access in real time project only you will have access so you can define a materialized view on the base table partitioned table At the same way you can create any 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 object you can create a materialized view updatable materialized view also you can do so you can do insertion updation but deletion on this here on this materialized view it will not impact on the base table if you are if you are inserting or updating deleting any data in this it will get updated and inserted here only not on the base table since it is a materialized got it but view if you are going to insert update it it will go and insert update in the base table but normal materialized view it will not do it see this is the base table this is one db okay you have a table this is remote db so here you are running a select statement you are creating a materialized view in this another database so whenever you are going to create a materialized view it will create a materialized view log log will be created so this one will have a fast refresh so refresh type i will explain what is that so if you are creating materialized view this is syntax create or replace you can put replace also materialized view view name okay so after that you will have the select statement here select all the select statement is similar okay normal select statement but here you will have uh, this is the different types what is this so what is this build immediate so immediate it will be built and the deferred one and the refresh refresh is fast refresh complete refresh force refresh i will tell you what is that on commit on demand so on commit means so it will go for base table whenever you are committing it the view materialized view will get refreshed on demand means it's a, you have to do the refresh pl sql statement will be executed and then it will go for a refresh see build types here we have the build types right immediate the materialized view is populated immediately this option is default one materialized view is populated on the first requested refresh that is a deferred one so that is a, simply you are creating it but view will be created after that that is a deferred one the fast refresh complete refresh complete means full full data it will go for complete refresh force refresh fast refresh means a fast refresh is attempted only there is a change in the base table so if there is a change in the base table then fast refresh will be attempted if materialized view logs are not present against the source table in advance the materialized view creation fails okay fast reference means fast refresh means see this log should be available right this log should be available then only it will go for fast refresh otherwise again it has to create a materialized view that will not go for fast refresh to maintain the history of change in the base table materialized view logs you have to create always okay it should be created then only it knows that fast refresh or otherwise it will go for a complete refresh one more time it will take all the data so why because if you don't know the rep, if you don't know the rep, view log right see already you have 100 records all the 100 records has been refreshed here and two records has inserted two record has been updated here so these four records only have to go for refresh if you are using fast refresh by using this view log oracle knows that okay these two data is only newly available it will take all the 100 records hash value if the hash value has been changed so that hash value alone it will filter out these four records you will get the hash value these four records only it will get refreshed here the view should be the view log should be available here so that's what you have to take the materialized view log if you have the log then it will go for the fast refresh otherwise complete reference sorry complete refresh so if you have 100 records two records got inserted so totally you have one one or two records so one more time all the one or two records will get refreshed here that is time taking right so you should not go in that way 
So that's what you will go for the fast refresh and complete refresh. Are you clear? Force refresh. A fast refresh is attempted if one is not possible, a complete reference is, uh, refresh is performed. See, force means it will try to at attempt fast refresh. The view log should be present. If it is present, then it will go for fast. If not present, it will not fail. It will go for a compute reference. Com sorry, complete refresh. Okay. It is like either this one or this one. That's it. Two attempt it will do. That is, you can go for force. So you can always go with force refresh. And refresh methods, you can have on commit, on demand. On commit means a, a refresh is triggered by a committed data change in one of the dependent tables. If the data is getting changed in this table, on commit automatically will go for a refresh. So refresh type, yes, full select, but on commit, it will go for a refresh. That's what you can go for a on commit refresh. On demand refresh, a refresh is initiated by a manual request. It's like a scheduler we will use. Normally we'll go for a scheduled refresh in materialized view. We do have a separate PLI SQL package. So that will be scheduled. It will automatically run on the some frequency of timing. Uh, it will always refresh the base table. It will go for post refresh. It will refresh the data. So you have to grant the permission, grant create materialized view to HR. So that should be granted. Create database link to HR. Since we do not have privileges to create a database link, this cannot be done in our uh, in our normal our system. Okay. So this is the create. If you see here, create materialized view, view name, refresh fast, start with system date. Next one is system date plus one. That means this is a daily refresh. Okay, daily refresh, you are doing it fast refresh. Okay, fast refresh means you are going for the materialized log should be created automatically. So from select all this table from this one, what is this db1.world? So this is nothing but a db link. Okay, you are creating this, this particular view in another database. So this is one. This is another one. Here you are creating by referring the DB link. So this DB link is called DB1 at DB1 dot world. So this link name is called at DB1 dot world where department ID equal to 30. Create materialized view. So you have to create a log also. Log on employees, this one. So with that, you have to create, then only it will create a logs, so including new values. With the primary key, it will create one hash value. It will maintain in the table. So whenever the data is getting updated or changed with that hash value, it knows that, okay, these data has been inserted or updated. So I have given the difference between materialized view and uh, normal view. Just to go through that, you can do. We cannot perform any DML operations on the materialized view. Whenever base table is dropped, the materialized view table still be accessible. So that's the one thing. See here, whenever base table is dropped, view will become inaccessible. Why? See if base table has been removed, the view also will get removed, right? View definition will be there. Okay, but if you are running, you are going to run the select statement. Sorry, if you are going to run the view, so that time it will go and access the base table. The base table is not available. It will become invalid. The view will become invalid while running the view runtime. But here, even though base table has been deleted, since it is a materialized one, you can take the data from here. But the thing is, you cannot take updated data. That's it. So materialized view is used for performance improvement. It is for security purpose. Materialized view are disk based. Why we are saying that? If one GB of base table, you are creating all the data in the, in the normal view, how many disk space is required? Normal view, one GB only, right? Same one GB, but materialized view, if you are creating all the data, so one GB here, so it requires two GB totally. Okay, so disk space is, it will take. Materialized view will store the data in a table segment. That's the one thing, okay? It will store the data in a table segment. 
segment and it will store the data like a view, sorry, virtual table. Got it? So difference between uh, the view and Mertilase view, I have, I have already explained. I just uh, go through this. Inline view, I have explained already. You can answer these quizzes. Uh, can you update the data in the view? Can you update the data in the view? Okay, we can update. That's we have we have seen. Uh, does the Oracle view exist if the table is dropped from the database? If the Oracle view is exist, the question is the Oracle view is exist. This is a view. You assume that this is a view. The view definition will be exist. But whenever you are going to run select statement, select star from the table name, so that time the view will become errored out. Okay. The view definition will be there. But while running that, it will not be available. See, in Oracle, the view continues to exist even after one of the tables is dropped from the database. However, if you try to query the Oracle view after a table has been dropped, you will receive a message indicating that Oracle view has errors. View definition will be available, but data you cannot take it. Okay. But can we do it? Does the materialized view will be available after dropping the base table? Yes, it will be available. Okay. Even it can, you can query the table. So key, uh, what is key preserved table means? If you are taking the complex view by combining two tables, two tables, whichever the table contains a key, key column, that is a key preserved tables. Okay. So if you run, if you are taking the columns from two tables, see here customer and orders. If you are creating create or replace view customer orders, V as select customer ID, customer name, mobile number, city, all this. The customer ID I'm selecting. Okay. Customer ID is key column, right? So customer ID from which table it is available? C table, right? C table you are taking. So that means C table, that is C is nothing but customer table. It is not order table. Order table, I'm not selecting the customer ID here in the select statement, right? Order table O dot customer ID I'm selecting. No, I'm selecting C dot customer ID. So this key column value, which table is coming from. So that table is called key preserved table. Okay. The customer table is said to be a key preserve table. Can we insert data into a, a view? Yes, you can do. Okay. If it is, if it is read only view, you cannot do it. If you has been created from two tables by con considering all the columns, is it possible to update the view? No, we cannot do it. Okay. See here. This is the question. See, you have 10 columns here. 10 columns here, you have created a view by combining all the 20 columns here. Okay, all the columns here. See, if you are going to update or insert any data, since it is a common column, if you have anything here, okay, anything here, you are joining a column, right? That joining column, if you have that materialized view, sorry, the view will get confused. Which table I have to update that column? Whether this table I have to update or this table you are you are referring it. Okay, if you are taking all this. So for that, you have to go for instead of trigger. This concept I will take while taking the trigger concept. See, if it is a complex view, as I told already, you cannot update the view. Yeah, what is the materialized view log or snapshot log? I have already explained. So it will take primary keys and row IDs of the value in a master table. So whenever you are going for refresh, so definitely it will be used to this hash value to find whichever the record has been inserted, updated or deleted for the fast refresh. If a base table, if a base table is deleted from the database, what will happen for its materialized view? Nothing will happen. Materialized view will be available so you can take the data, see here, this is materialized view. You can take the data, but if you are refreshing it, 
if you are refreshing it this will become the refresh will fail why because base table is not available right so that's why it will fail you cannot take the data i want to create a materialized view on another db and refresh it periodically is it possible yes we can do by using the database link when i rename a column in the date table which is used by materialized view will the materialized view updated or not updated materialized view will not be updated it fails when you are going for the refresh why because you have changed the column name right so if you have changed the column name yes you cannot do it okay so what is query rewrite uh, this is the query rewrite okay so i will tell you so what is query rewrite so materialized view optimization features that allows to transform sql statement expression in terms of tables are view into a statement accessing multiple materialized view so if you are going for multiple materialized view a dynamic query rewriting okay so this is what if you see this create alter session set query rewrite see this is the database level normally this will be done by dbs we are not going to do anything create materialized view view name enable query write as select statement this statement you have to execute query write rewrite so if you see here so what is this the materialized view as a sum sum of fact table store at some they are doing it enable query rewrite as select star statement we are making fact table store table time table product table and we are writing which matches some see here so if you are writing the data in this way for how many columns you are combining one table two table three table four table right so automatically the materialized view will automatically write this okay it will write this so instead of taking this select statement and all group by statement and all it has been already rewritten this way it will select from this table directly okay from this table directly actually this is not the single table some fact store some time period is not single table it is a query rewrite so what is that meaning so whatever here we are selecting in the materialized view so that will be already created as materialized view here so directly it will take the data from this it will not go for execution of this select statement it will execute only select the column names from this one this is nothing but we have already done the uh, count sum all this okay in the run time it will not do already it has been saved so in this it will take that is what query rewrite so whenever you are going for query rewrite enable query rewrite so your oracle will automatically rewrite that queries okay i have already i have explained all the concept about views normal view materialized view inline view okay so please go through that hello everyone welcome to the session in our today session we will start with the index so what is index see index is very very important for performance tuning so whenever you are going for any interviews related to uh, informatica or related to iacs or related to sql projects so definitely the indexes they will ask more questions so what is indexes so index is nothing but 
by using index you can retrieve the data okay so fast retrieval by effectively managing the data okay you can retrieve the data from the database very fastly so that's what the indexes helps so what is index so index is a different object what is a different object see we do have different objects right so here we have the tables here we have the views here we have the views on top of the tables we will create a views right so this is views so table is one kind of object views is another kind of object and indexes is another kind of objects so index also different objects for an example if you take this is an index so whatever the tables in real time projects so we are going to store the data in the database it is not as like a thousand records or 10000 records so we do have huge volume of data it's like a millions and billions we will have the data right so since we are having a huge volume of data and retrieval okay say for an example in the real time project any databases don't select this way okay don't select this way so any tables don't select in this way so why because if you are selecting this way right it may hang okay so why because if the table has huge volume of data if you are using select star from the table name without where class if i have the billions of record from this table in particular table your system will get hang to avoid this normally what we have to do we have to check whether this table has been partitioned so always you have to check whether the table has been partitioned so you may have the partition table right so instead of having all the data in a single partitions we will be having a different partitions based on some some values this one we will see in our next session performance tuning session we will see that what is partitioning how to create a partitioning on the tables but if you are seeing the partitions select star from the table name where so you'll be having a partition here for an example it's a transaction date so you have the transactional date you are using partitions or country equal to india you are partitioning okay country wise you are segregating the data so mostly most of the transaction tables all these tables are partitioned with a date column so that particular date column you have to use created at okay created at created by created date so all this you will be using here so that is what you will go for the partition by the same way if you have a data if you have huge volume of data in the database if you are selecting select star from the table you are using some where class so you are using any select statement select star from a table name transactions okay where you are using some some column here okay where transaction status something like that equal to success something you are you are checking in what oracle will do or database will do if you do not have any indexes on the table it will go and check every record okay whether status equal to success no status equal to success no no yes so it will check one by one all the records so that is called a full table scan so what is that full table scan so each and every record it will go and check and then it will find okay these records are transaction status equal to success that's what it will find so this is this is the meaning of full table scan if any tables is going for full table scan definitely it is a performance issue so why because if you have huge volume of data so our database is going to check each and every record one by one it will take a lot of time sometimes it will get hanged also so to avoid this kind of scenario we need to go for some performance tuning method so what is that performance tuning method so indexing is one of the performance tuning method so what is index say for an example you have a book you have a book the book has 1000 pages you assume that the book has 1000 pages okay it has 1000 pages in the book it doesn't have any content page or index page so i am asking you one particular topic one particular topic i am asking you to take that some details on the topic the topic is available in the book so what will you do normally in the book i am taking one particular topic 
the topic is there in the particular book. I'm asking what is the details about the topic. So what will you do normally? If the, if the book doesn't have any indexes or content page, one by one, you'll be checking all the pages, right? One by one, you are checking all the pages and whatever you are checking the title or details, it is there at 9, 950th page. Okay, you assume that. So that means unnecessarily you are searching all the 949 pages and you are finding it. And remaining pages also it will go and check. So why? Because so it may contain other pages also, right? So instead of checking all the pages, if you have content page in the front, okay? If you have the content page here, that means index page on the first page. If I'm asking you to take one particular topic, so first, where will you search? First, where will you search? First, you will go to content page. You will take the page number, right? Page number 50 or something, or uh, some 950 or something. So you will take the page number from here. Then you will go to corresponding page number. You will take the details. See, this time, if you have the content page, then it is very easy to check the data, right? So if you do not have content page, how much time it will take? If you have the content page, how much time it will take? So here, this is the performance improvement. Same way, if you have indexes, if you, the, the table has many data, if you are creating the index on the table, so what Oracle will do? So whatever the data has been stored here, so that details will be stored here on the index table, okay? This is an indexed table, so index. This is a separate object. It is a separate object. So wherever the data has been stored, all that information will be captured on the index table. Then it will put an entry, okay? So it knows, this particular table knows it where the data has been stored. So you are selecting some data from here. Select start from the table name where some column you are using. So that particular, if you are searching it, so first Oracle will go to the index table. If the index is available, it will go to the index page. So in that index page, it will take the row ID of the record. Okay, row ID it will take. So row ID of the record. Then with this row ID, it will go and search here. It knows where the row ID is present and it will give you the data. So index is a separate object. Okay, so index is the separate object in the database we do have and it will take the data. So clear, what is index? So index is the separate object, okay. So how you will create an index? That's an important, right? So we do have a different kind of index based on the data. So we do have different types of data, so uniqueness, repeat data, all this. So based on the data, we need to create an index. So how to create an index? So that's what we are going to see. So index is a schema object. So I told, so index is a schema object that contains an entry for each value that appears in the indexed column. So you have indexed column. See, if you have hundreds of columns, no need to create index on all the columns. Whatever the column, you are going to frequently query that column. Okay, whatever the column, you are going to frequently query that. So that particular column should be indexed. So that's what indexed column of a table or a cluster. Okay, cluster is nothing but, so one kind of like a partition and provides a direct fast access to rows. Indexes are used to search the rows in the Oracle table quickly. So in index, we do have cardinality. So based on the cardinality, you have to create an index. So what is that? So we have two types of index. One is unique. So different types of indexes are there. I will tell you what is that. So unique and non-unique index. If you are creating, if you are creating any primary key, okay, primary key on the particular column on the table, so index automatically will be created on the column. Okay. For an example, customer table, customer ID, you are creating an index, sorry, primary key. So that means this particular column will get indexed, the index table. 
what is the index it will create since you are creating a primary index it will create an index called a unique index so it will automatically create you are no need to create by yourself so automatically create unique index non unique index means we are creating the non unique index so that is our um, if you are not creating a primary key column key column that is a non unique index oracle creates unique index of for primary key and unique key constraints if you are creating unique key constraints primary key constraints oracle will automatically create a unique constraint sorry unique index if non unique indexes are already present on the column okay say for an example one column has been indexed already with non unique index it will not create new unique index for primary key in oracle okay remember this if index is already exist in the table after creating the table so you have indexed it some particular column for an example mobile number or some column you have indexed it but after that you are creating that column as a primary key whether it will create unique index no it will not create unique index so we do have composite index composite key you know right the same way if you are creating an index by combining more than one column so that is called a composite index function based indexes function based indexes means the indexes column so you are creating okay for an example you are using upper of first name so first name column you are going to create an index so this first upper of first name is the function based index why because you are passing the function here right upper lower all this the indexed column data is based on a calculation so that's a index function based indexes okay first of all how to create an index on the table okay select start from employees table so how do i know whether this particular table has been indexed or not the same way you have to select select star from all underscore indexes so is one of the one of the metadata table dictionary table we do have and this in this table it will make an entry so you have to use var owner equal to hr and table name equal to employees you are using the table name right and table underscore name equal to whatever the table you are searching for you are using employees if this is case sensitive that's why you have to use table name is employees okay so in this table six columns has been indexed so what are the six columns you have the email and employee id department id job id manager id and employee name okay so we do have one more table so to find which column it is indexed so in that table only you can find okay which column so why because here we do not have a indexed column right so which column it is so join index all the details you can see here visibility so all this we do have so valid or not so when it has been indexed so all this unique okay so if you are creating employee id yes it is the employee id is the primary key right yeah unique index has been created email id is the unique constraint we have created that's why unique index has been created all other indexes are non unique indexes okay for an example if you are going to create if you are going to run so always you are going to run this particular statement select star from table name you are going to select where salary some salary you are going to check if the column is not indexed that means it will go and check every every records okay if you are going to check this way each and every record it will go and check right so then it will get you the data but if the date if the particular column has been indexed then it is very easy to check so how to create an index it's very simple create index index name ids underscore salary okay idx emp underscore salary on table name on employees table bracket you have to mention salary column so if you are using this way this salary column has been indexed this salary column has been indexed you can see here now if i'm going to check this so one more index will be available seven right salary index this column non-unique index so all this right you are seeing that 
So how the index has been created, all this you are able to see. But the thing is, so I want to know which is the column, right? So which column it is? You have to go and check the dictionary table. I have already given, right? A dictionary table. So which has the, so indexes, so index column, this is another table. So you have to take this one, select star from this table indexes. So this is the way you will have, and uh, here also you can put a owner equal to, okay? Index owner and the table owner. So index owner, table owner. So index is one schema, table is another schema if you have, then this is what index owner and uh, a table owner you have. So mostly you both will have on the same schema. And you can see this joining of the index name. Okay. So get the joining of index name. Then you will get the column name, which column has been indexed. So this column has been indexed with first name, last name, manager ID, job ID, department ID, employee ID, all the column has been indexed. So that's what we can find the indexed column. Yes. So if you put the explain plan, if you have a huge volume of table, then you can find the cost for this particular query. Before index, after, after index, the cost should have decreased. So that's what you can go for the indexes. So what is the index? This index is called non-unique index and normal index, okay? Clear non-unique index, simple index. Simply you can create an index. You can go for composite index also. By combining two columns, you can create. So whenever you are using the where class by combining the columns, then it is very easy to pull the data. So this is what the index will be takes place. Okay. So in order to create an index, we have to consider few techniques. Okay. Say for an example, if I'm going to create an index on this table, so if you are creating index on the already employee ID has been created. Okay. Email ID you are going to create. So email ID will have a unique values for all the records, right? And what about job ID? Job ID is not a unique record. So it will have same jobs for multiple employees or a yes, IT programmer, yes. If you are creating index, so for all this record, it will maintain value. So it, will, it is different way it will store the data, how the index table will maintain, right? So even if you are creating indexing on the department ID, it will it will create, it will store the data in different way. So based on that data, we have to create an index. So mainly we have two indexes. So one is B3 index. So this is the default index. Okay. So by default, if you are creating any indexes, say for an example, this indexes I'm, I have created, right? So by default, it will go and create index on the B3 index. If you don't mention anything here, it will create BT index and we do have bitmap index. So what is that? So it's a, it's a, we have to define whether it is a B tree or bitmap and other indexes I will tell you, but these two are a main index in the Oracle database. So if you don't mention index types, so automatically it will take B tree index clear. So what is that B tree index? Normal index is by default Oracle creates B3 indexes, bitmap index, which store row IDs, okay, associated with the key value as a bitmap. I will tell you what is that bitmap and partition index. So if you are creating a partition on the column, it will create partition index, function based index, domain indexes. But out of all this, we'll go for B3 and bitmap indexes. In order to create the indexes, we need to have some prerequisite in the database. Normally in real time project, DBS will take care of all this, but we do have some prerequisite. What is that? To create an index in your own schema, one of the condition following condition must be true. The table or cluster to be indexed must be in your own schema. Yes. On the same schema, you should have the table or cluster. You must cluster means it's like a partition. I will tell you partition next week. You must have the indexes index object privilege on the, you should have the index object privilege to create a index and create any index system privilege you should have. 
and to create an index in another schema. So we were referring one schema table with another schema. Then you must have create any index privileges. Okay. But this, this one, if you do not have for your schema, you have to contact your admin and then you have to ask them, okay, I need this kind of. So first of all, B3 index is nothing but it's a balanced index. So what is a balanced index? What is a balanced index? If you have a unique value, if you are going to create index on unique value column. Okay. So first of all, you will have a cardinality. So cardinality, what is that cardinality you have to check? Okay, in Oracle, so we have the cardinality. So based on the cardinality, we have to go for indexes. So what is the cardinality? Number of distinct record. So this is what you have to calculate. Number of distinct record divided by total number of record. This is the cardinality to find. For an example, I want to find cardinality on the employee ID column or email ID column. So what is the cardinality? If you have 100 records, you assume that. Okay, all the 100 records are unique records, right? So what is the cardinality on employee ID and email ID? Cardinality equal to 1, right? So this is called high cardinality. This is called high cardinality. So maximum cardinality number is 1. So if you have high cardinality, then you have to go for B3 index. I will tell you why we have to go for B3 index. If you have less cardinality, say for an example, you have job IDs, job ID or department ID or country, whatever it may be. Okay, repeated values, more repeated values. Job ID, 10 unique job IDs are there or 10 unique department IDs are there. So what could be the cardinality for this? You'll be having 10 divided by 100. So you'll be having 0 0.1, right? So it's nothing but it's a very less cardinality. It's a very less cardinality if you have, then you have to go for bitmap index. So why? I will tell you. Okay, bitmap index. Why it is? What is B3 index? How the index is stored in the data? How it will be stored in the index? index table, if you take even 1 million record also, you have 100 records here. You assume that 100 records there on the employee ID column. Yes, it will take all the 100 record. First of all, it will split, Oracle will split this 100 record into two different group. So employee ID 1 to 50, one group, okay? Employee ID 1 to 50, 51 to 100, it will go to the another group. This is another tree the tree and then you have this one again splitted into two okay this is the another splitted into two one to 25 employee id okay 26 to 26 to 50 is another one another node the same way here also it will go for 51 51 to 75, 76 to 100. So this is the way it will go for. Again, it will go for two. It will go up to leaf nodes. So the final node, we will call it as leaf node. So this way, it will go for the leaf nodes. It will split up. If you are searching any values based on employee ID, if you are searching any value, select star from employees where employee underscore ID equal to 170. If you are searching, this is the one of the query you are going to run. We assume that 170. So how Oracle will take? So first Oracle will go to the indexes table. First Oracle will go to the indexes table if you are running this. This column has been indexed already, right? Employee ID. So it will go to the index table. So 170. So it knows, it will start from here. It knows where the 170 will be. Yes, 170 will be. That means starting, okay, you assume that 70. Starting from 100 employee ID, 
it's a 70 you assume that okay it knows that 70 where is the 70 is available it will go to second of right then it will go to the this one then it will go to 70 is nothing but so here it is available so this way it will choose the path that means oracle will not go and search these records oracle will not go and search these records that means 50 records it will not go and search here here 25 records it will not go and search so it will find the path where the record is stored this row id will be taken and then it will be given to the main table only it will go to the particular row id to give you the data so that is what it will go for the b tree index balanced tree index so if you see this this is one of the explanation i have, I have given but this is the internal structure of the b tree index how it will be so this is branch blocks leaf blocks so leaf is the last one so if you have a value 0 to 250 so it is taking three different branches now so 0 to 40 41 to 80 and so on and 200 to 250 so that means it is taking some 50 records 40 records all this splitting so again it is splitting this 0 to 10 yes and then 11 to 19 20 to 25 like this it will split up all the records so 0 row id 1 row id 10 row id it will be stored here row id will be stored if you are searching any values so where it will be stored for an example this will select this particular path it will choose this row id and it will give you this row id so that it will not go and search other leaves other nodes so that's what the b tree index will be performed and it will give you the data very quickly but this one you need to go for you have the unique values more unique values you have to go for b tree indexes more unique values b tree index store the row id and the index key value in the p structure so if you go through it then you can find here and this is what the uh, b tree index okay so advantage all leaf blocks of the tree are the same depth yes b tree index automatically stay balanced yes we have the balanced one all blocks of the b tree are three quarters full on the average like it will take the values it will go for splitted into uh, divided by two it will go on to the leaf nodes but finally balanced tree provide excellent retrieval performance for a wide range of queries including exact match match and uh, range of searches so even you can go for employee id from 170 to 180 that is also you can go for insert update and deletes are efficient maintaining key under the under a uh, so key order for fastal retrieval performance is good for both small and large tables does not degrade as the size of the table grows yes this is the one advantage of b tree indexes i have given here so what is b tree index it's a standard index type by default it will create a b tree index only they are excellent for primary key and highly selective indexes so you can see here index organized table so that is one table an index organized table differs from a heap organized because the data is itself an index so index organized table means this is what the index organized table it will maintain the data in this particular uh, tables okay so where the data has been stored so we have the reverse key indexes that means in the type of indexes the bytes of the index keys are, are reversed for an example 103 is stored as the 301 so if it is reversing it then it is uh, finding the value also it's fine okay so simply the key value will get reversed that's it so instead of 101 it will go for 301 sorry 103 stores as the reversal of spikes insert index over many blocks it's nothing but here we are storing the value right row id or something so it will reverse it that's it the key values so instead of going for the the skewness so one particular value it doesn't have more values that's why we are going for uh, reverse key indexes descending order index b tree cluster index so all the different kind of indexes on the b tree 
So descending order means the key value will be descending order. That's it. So why we are going for reverse, right? 103, 104, 105, in that way, you might be having many data, but uh, 301, 401, 501, if you have this way, it will not have the same data. Okay, same data, it will not be stored on the same key values. Okay, so that's why we are going for the reverse key indexes. We are not going to do all this. Automatically, database will take care. These are all indexes types reverse key index create index index name on the table create index salary column this way reverse you have to choose that's it on index okay so you have the tables metadata tables user indexes user index columns statistics expressions all this so this is user index right so that's what i have taken all underscore indexes all underscore index columns all this uh, this is what the indexes should be created Create unique, non-unique indexes, index name, on table name, column names, table space name if you have. Yes, you can mention the table space name also. Employee number, we have created an index, but it is already indexed, right? It will not be created. One more indexes are there, that is, that is bitmap index. So what is bitmap index, right? For an example, if you have the, this is a unique key. If you have more unique keys like email ID, all this, it will go and store the value. Bitmap index, for an example, you have the data like India, USA, UK, okay, some countries you have, Australia, something like that you have the data, you assume that. There are four different countries, only four unique values. So if you have the data, millions of data, it will take one, two, three, or like this, it will take more values. So it will take the values. It will make an entry. Okay, first record, it's like India. Second record, USA. Third record, it will make an entry in the like this. Okay. So whenever you have more values of more unique values, that is repeated values, you have to go for bitmap index. What is that? For an example, if you take this particular table, Department ID, you have 90, 60, 100, all this record, right? If I want to create index on the department ID column, you will get less cardinality. If you have very less cardinality, you have to go for bitmap index. What is that? If you take this particular table, if you have some department IDs, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you have five department IDs. You assume that five only I have mentioned. You can go for uh, more number of department IDs. See, even if you have one, uh, one lakh record, employees are from these five departments only, right? It's a repeated value. First employee, department ID 20. Second employee, department ID 40. Third employee, department ID 10. So anyhow, all the employees, even if you have thousands of employees or 1 lakh employees or 1 million employees, the same value will get repeated if you have only five department IDs. So how the index table, the bitmap index table will make an entry oracle. This way it will take row ID, like one, two, three, four, five, like this. It will go for this way, first record, second record. Then it will go for the unique values. First record 20, it will make an entry here. First record, 20th department. Second record, 40th department. Third record, 10th department. 40th record, sorry, fourth, fourth record, 20th department. So fifth record, 30. So in this way, it will make an entry like this, the table. If you are selecting any values, select star from the table name where department ID equal to 30. So this is the one query you are, you are applying to the database. So where it will go directly? First, it will go to the index ta indexed, index uh, table. The Oracle will go to the index table here. You are selecting, what is the query you are selecting? Department ID 30. It will go to this particular one. And wherever you have highlighted, it will take the row ID here. Row ID of the record. Row ID of the record. So it won't search any other record. 
see here it won't search any other record right if you are maintaining the data in this way if i'm going to give you one particular query it is very easy to pick the data right very quickly you can able to pick right so whatever the data we have even if you have millions of data it is very simply you can go to the wherever it has been highlighted so that particular data you can take so this is what it will retrieve it will take this particular data it will go to the corresponding values or row id so i can say it's a row id then it will give you the data so this is called a bitmap index clear on this how the data will be stored in the bitmap index so when will you go for bitmap index whenever you have very less cardinality you will go for bitmap index so b tree index bitmap indexes so bitmap index are most appropriate on low distinct cardinality data okay opposite to b tree indexes this type of index creates a binary map of all the index values and store that map in the index blocks this means the index will require less space than b tree index yes so this is what it will store the retrieval is very easy okay so that's what if you have very less cardinality then you have to go for index form even if you have null values definitely it will have different uh, null value on one particular column right so definitely it will have the index right see first record if you have null values it will make an entry here null department id null right department id null but it that particular record will have the row row id right so it will make an entry here okay if the department id is null yes so 13th record department id is null so wherever if i'm searching like select start from employees where department id is null it will go to this it will take this record and it will go to the particular corresponding row id it will pull you the data so even if you have null values that's fine right so more null values on the columns yes it will store here so it will take that particular record so this is what the indexes will do bitmap index right so how will you create the bitmap index actually we do not have privileges to create the bitmap index you can see here create bitmap index on employees you can go for gender gender column select count of star from employee data where gender equal to male it will pull you very quickly the data so that's what you can go for the bitmap index while creating the index you have to add one keyword called bitmap that's it while just creating the table right sorry indexes right you are going to create an index with bitmap department id for an example department id already indexed if you have index 1 so how to drop the index drop index index name department id is the this is the index name right so this index name if you are going to drop it will get dropped so create bitmap index that's it okay but we do not have a, not enabled that we do not have privileges in this particular uh, system we do not have bitmap index creation privileges so that's why we couldn't able to create but if you are creating the index that index table we cannot see it will make an entry in this way this is the way it will take but whenever you are going to query this table based on the department id it will it will quickly give you the data okay so on, on employee id which index you will create unique values which index you will create employee id and even for uh, salary column if you have more uh, unique values then you will go for b tree index if you have repeated values you have to go for bitmap index clear this is a two different index and sometimes they will ask what is cardinality all this so i will tell you this is the cardinality all this so function based index means if you are going to take the columns like um, you are going to make the columns like upper case you are going to select it always first name equal to upper case upper or first name that's what you are going to select in this way you are going to select so create an index like this so this kind of index is called the function based index 
if you are going to use a functions on the particular column very frequently then you will create function based index but this is very rarely used index so you will not use only one function right on the column you will go for many functions that's a different scenario reverse key index create index index name on student mark reverse the reversed value will be stored in the sorted order so that's what it will go for reverse key index uh, clustered index means so how the cluster data will be stored i will show you this is the cluster table index see here this is employee table you have employee number employee name department number okay departments table you have another table that is department number department name location id right so unclustered tables related data stored okay so this is what the data will be stored if it is in clustered index you are creating the clustered key on the department number how this value will be stored it will take department number on the both the tables like a 10 department number 10 sales this particular location and whoever is from 10th department it will make here the entry okay for an example here 10th department smith right so like this it will make all the 10th department employees here this is the clustered table so based on the department id we have clustered it 20 another another key values 30 40 so it will take the distinct value on the both the values both the columns and it will create the clustered index like this instead of storing the data in this way clustered tables related data store together or more efficiently it will be stored this is called clustered table data clear so oracle how this is what that will show okay so this is what see for an example if you want to create a cluster data if you are storing this way for more tables the combination of more than one tables if you are creating this way then it will create uh, very quickly it will re retrieve the data if you are going for a department id search so this is the called index organized table this is called index organized table these two tables are called index organized table so these are all the index types are available in oracle hello everyone welcome to nick it academy in our today's session we are going to learn merge statement in oracle previously we have seen insert operations update operations and delete operations separately so we have seen these three operations separately, how to insert the data into the table, how to update the data in the table, and how to delete the data in the table. So these three statements we have seen separately. Can we perform all these three operations in a single statement? Yes, we can perform by using statement called merge. So by using merge statement, we can do all these three operations in a single statement. So what is merge first of all? So merging the data from one table to another table. So if you consider on the left hand side, we have the source table. We have one customer table. We have the customer ID. We have a customer name, mobile, address, email, and data path. So we have six different columns and we have some data. So if you consider this data from the source table, we have to merge this data into target table. So this merge operation is used to merge the data from one table to another table. So we have seen already the set operations, right? Union operations. So union operation means if I have the data, similar data in another table, if I want to perform set operation, yes, we can bring the resultant set. It is similar to the set operations, but here we are merging the data from one table based on some conditions. So what is that? First, we are going to see insert operations. So we are going to insert the data in this particular table based on this particular data. So we are going to consider this key column, customer ID from source table, customer ID from target table. 
if this key doesn't match if this key doesn't match we will assume that okay the record we have in source but not in target we can go for insert so we are going to take the key column on both tables and based on the key column if the key column doesn't match we'll go for insert operations yes uh, these values are not present in the target so we will insert all the data to the target table so very first time if i'm going to merge the data from one table to another table yes it will merge all the data so normally so whenever we want to perform this kind of operation insert else update operations sometimes we will call it as it's upset operations can we do upset operations that means insert else update on the same table so if the data is present then go for update or delete if the data is not present just to insert the data so normally we are merging the data into the target table so how to perform so we are considering the key column if the key column not matched we are going for the insert operations yes so next time tomorrow the job is running so it will check whether this particular data is present here yes it is present and then you can check here all this are matching then if it is matching we can go for update we can go for update or delete operations okay so you assume that there is some update in this particular source side so there is an update in the mobile number you assume that there is some update in the mobile number on the source side then it should be updated on the target also so how can i do here we are going to compare customer id from source customer id from the target if it is matching yes both are matching then i will go for update here yes i can go for update is yes, this time so this will get merged this record will get merged it will update all the column values while doing that merge it will not only go and update this record the merge operation if the record is matching if the condition is matching it will go for update or delete operations so we can handle it so instead of going for all the record update if i want to update this record alone yes we can handle it so i will tell you how to do it so if there is a delete operation here if i'm going to delete some record in the source table how can i merge it and delete it this record in the target table so this operation is mainly used in real time project migration of data from one table to another table so mostly like a data warehousing project whenever we are performing slowly changing dimensions operations so that time this merge operation will be very much used i have given create table statement and insert statement and create the target table statement in the descriptions so you can use this statement create the tables load the data and perform the merge operations so how to write merge query right i have already created this table i will take this particular table in this in the any any schema you can use it select start from source table you can see here the other source data similar way i will show you the target table we do not have any data in the target table so you can create this table and perform the merge operations so how can i write merge query right it's very simple so first we will see the syntax of the merge statement it's very simple this is the syntax merge into target table merge into target using source table so we are the source so we are merging the data we are merging the data from source into target table so merge into target using source based on this key column value based on the key column value so we have to write on condition within bracket we have to write the condition here the so on condition when when this key column value not matched when it does not match we have to insert the data when not matched these are all keywords we have to use exactly the same when not matched then i have to go for insert operations okay when matched when the data is matched between source and target if there is an update as yes, we have to go for update then we can go for update logic or delete logic so we have to perform the delete operation we have to perform some some work around 
to delete the record i will show you how to do it so this time we will write the merge statement this is nothing but the syntax i will give you the syntax as well you can use it and we will write the merge statement for this table so how can i write it for merge operations we need to have a same structure table so this table structure should be similar so it's like a similar to our set operations but set operation we are taking the resultant based on some car based on some tables but here we are going for merging the data from one table to another table so we will take the syntax merge into target table so this table i can use using source table i can use the source table here condition so here what i'm going to do this target table i'm going to alias like t source table i'm going to alias like s condition i'm going to write so s dot customer id right source dot customer id equal to t dot customer id so exactly you have to use the same column name between the source and target table when not matched then insert operations so we have to write insert operation so how can i write insert query so while inserting for an example if you see this while inserting we are going to insert along with customer id so we have to write along with customer id for update logic based on this key column we are updating the remaining column values so we we should not update this particular column value this key column we cannot update it other columns we have to update in the update statement while inserting we have to write this way insert no need to mention the table name normally how we will write the insert statement insert into insert into table name right yes we will go for this way but here since we have already mentioned the table name here no need to mention the table name we can go directly with insert you can put column names if you want you can put the column names and go for directly values so we are inserting the data into this table target table using the source column values yes underscore customer id right source column value if you see this yes underscore customer id we have to insert customer name mobile address email data birth so all this column we have to mention so no need to mention insert into table names we can write insert column names values and source column values similar way we have to go for update statement when matched then while we are updating while we are updating by keeping this column value we are going to update remaining column values right yes while updating we have to use except this key column value when matched then update statement so we can write update here so this way we have to write update set no need to mention the table name we have already mentioned the table name here update set target customer id target customer name equal to source customer name so target customer name equal to source customer name target mobile number source mobile number so this way we have to use source customer name target mobile number equal to source mobile number target address equal to source address and target email equal to source email so this way we have to write so this is the complete statement of merge so in this merge statement i have used only insert operation and update operations after that i will tell you how to perform delete operations so i'm going to run it merge statement is a dml statement if you don't commit it it will not be saved permanently okay so once we have merged we have to commit it so before merging i will show you there is no data i'm going to merge it seven rows got merged in the source we have seven records and the target all the record has been merged see here all the record has been merged we, we have we have merged all the record so one more time if i'm going to run it what will happen see source and target is matching right source and target is matching whatever the record we have in the source the same record is available in the target all are matching so obviously if i'm going to merge it it should not merge any data but since we have written the condition when matched then we are updating it again it will go and update all the seven records but this is unnecessarily it is updating right if i'm going to perform again it is merging all the data so if i have millions of data yes millions of data also it will go for merging operations 
to avoid this kind of scenario we can perform some on work around so what is that work around see if you see this we are merging the data using the source data so merge into target table using source table since we have all the data okay in the target table no need to merge again right yes in that case merge into target table using the source right so instead of that if you write like this select star from source table i'm going to take source minus minus operation i'm going to perform and select star from the target table so source minus target if i'm going to perform then i will get null value so why i'm getting null value since here all the record is matching in the target table so we will get null values so if both are matching then i will get the null values for an example here one record has been changed so this particular customer has changed the mobile number so in that case if i'm going to do minus operations yes we will get this particular record alone then one record alone will get match merged so we have to write this particular statement in this source merge into target table using instead of direct source table we will write this minus query okay so it's like we will take this query here merge into target table using this minus so if i'm going to use it i'll get null value so it will not merge anything right this way i can avoid the unnecessary update if we are using only insert and update yes very well we can use it and we can go and merge it so this time it will not merge any data zero rows merged right yes so why zero rows merged since source and target has same data it will not merge so what i'm going to do i'm going to update some record in the source i will show you how many records are going to update so directly i will go to hr schema and i will take this particular table manually i will update it i'll go to s underscore customer table go to data so here i'm just updating it this particular customer i'm just performing update statement okay so i'm writing some update here i have updated the mobile number i will commit it committed has been updated if i'm going to merge it then it should show only one record merged right one row merged if i'm going to perform one more time it should show zero record merged you can see here zero rows merged so this way we can perform so we have seen insert operations update operations and how can we perform only update this also we have seen see normally in real time project don't use star instead of this asterisk symbol you can use the column names so this way you can mention all the column names here all the column names here so that way it will perform very quickly okay so this statement i will give you for your reference you can use it so how can i perform delete operations so if you see this if i'm going to delete any one record from the source so if i'm going to delete this record this record i'm going to delete from the source while merging this record in the target also should get deleted if i'm getting some scenario in this way how can i perform it right so if you see this directly we cannot perform it if you go and check it here can we do delete operation here when matched then delete right so delete no need to mention the table name we can go for where class can i use where class here when matched then delete operation can i perform delete where customer id for an example here i have deleted this record from here okay so when the customer id is not available here and available on the target side can i use customer id is not matching so this one is matching can i use this way no we cannot use it so why i will tell you customer id not equal to okay source customer id not equal to target customer id can i use this way no we cannot use it if i'm going to merge it we'll get error right missing keyword see always remember whenever you are going to use delete operations first we have to update it and then delete it we have to perform update operation first then delete operations 
we will take this update here then we have to use delete so remove the semicolon when matched then update delete so this way we have to perform but if i'm going to use it it will not delete any record so if i'm going to use this way so for an example here in the source i will delete one record i'll go here go to source data i will delete this 1003 from the source table 1003 is not available in the source it is available on the target will it delete so we have used to delete where so whenever we are writing merge statement in oracle so don't forget to use update statement if you don't use it then we cannot write delete alone so this is one notable point and one more point is we cannot use this way i will tell you why if i'm going to delete it we may think okay it will delete the record it will not delete we are seeing that zero rows merged so instead of that you can go for using source table itself so using source table itself i can use using source i'm going to do it it will show you six rows merged right so instead of seven rows it's showing like six rows so if you see this source we have six and target we have seven whether it has deleted no remember delete operation we cannot perform it in this way so why because so here we are using the condition when matched then when matched then we are using delete whether it is matching it is not matching right it is not matching so the condition itself it is wrong so that's why this delete operation is not deleting any record in the target table so then how can i delete it if i want to delete it we have to go for full outer join so we will perform full outer join based on these two tables and we will take the delete operation how to perform i will show you so if you see this particular statement merge into target table e using the source table right so whenever we are taking the source table i am performing full outer join based on these two table so if if you take this query alone i will show you this query alone select i am going to take customer id from source table as well as target table whichever the hash values it will take this nvl function will take whichever the value it has customer id right yes i am comparing the customer id from here and customer id from here if it has the value here yes it will take the value in this particular target table if it has value in the source yes source itself it will take so the value will get filled for customer id so that's why i have taken the customer id by using nvl then i'm going to take customer name source customer name yes i will take all this value source t records and i'm performing full outer join when i'm going to perform full outer join i will take this customer id for all the records and this this value i'm going to get null value in the left hand side right so for this we have the value on the right hand side we do not have value on the left hand side so you will get null value so that's why if you go and run it you can see here i am getting the value for all the records full outer join then only this 1003 i'm getting first customer id so why because since i have used customer id here from any one of the table i'm going to take it so it will be filled 1003 then remaining column i will get null values so based on this if customer name is null or mobile number is null when this id is going to match 1003 and 1003 so instead of taking this table for the reference i'm going to take this resultant for the reference so when this is going to match in the target yes 1003 and 1003 match and if you are getting customer name is null yes customer name is null on the left hand side table source table i can merge it so if you see this so merge into target table using this source table on conditions when matched then i'm going for update delete operation where customer name is null where 
S underscore customer. S is nothing but this source, right? So whatever, whatever we are getting the result, this source, I'm going to get it. When S underscore customer name is null, I'm going to delete it. We can use insert operation also. So I will write this insert operation as well on condition. When not matched, I will go for insert operations. When matched, then I will go for update operations. So just I'm going to run it. It should delete one record. Previously, we have seen six rows merged. Now seven rows got merged. So one record should get deleted in the target table. See here, the 1003 is not available in this target. So whenever I'm deleting the record in the source, it will get deleted in the target. So I will give you this particular statement for your reference. So just to practice it, if you are getting any scenario in your real time project, yes, you can perform this way. So this merge operation is like a DML operation. As I told, merge is nothing but it is using insert, update, delete in single statement. So this is also a DML statement. In Oracle, we have four DML operations. One is insert, update, delete, and merge. So if I'm doing the merge, if I forget to commit it, then it will not be stored permanently in the database. You can see here, as of now, target table has six records. If I'm going to roll back, it will be rolled back to previous state. So previous state, you remember, we do not have any data in this target table. You can see here, there is no data in the table. So one more time, I will show you. I'm going to merge it. So it will be merged, six rows merged. Then I'm going to roll back it. All the data will not be there in the table. So if I want to permanently store the data, after merging it, we have to commit it. Okay. So don't forget to commit it. So after commit it, if you see this, data will be there. Even if you commit it, after that, if you roll back, the data will not be rolled back. So all this data will be available. So merge statement is DML statement. So remember this, and I will give you all the statement. Kindly practice it. I hope you are clear on all the merge statement. If you like this session, click on the like and do comment if you have any questions. Thank you. So in our today's session, we are going to learn a regular expression in Oracle. So what is this regular expression? This regular expression is common from if you take any uh, languages like Python or any other languages. Okay, this regular expression is common. Even Unix, this regular expression we will use. Python we have use, we will use. And any programming language, we will use this regular expressions. So how we can use this regular expression in our Oracle? So for regular expression, we need to understand first some of the formulas. So if you understand the formula clearly, okay, the regular expression clearly, then writing is very, very easy. Okay, writing the logic or finding the logic is very, very easy. So whenever we are going for any special character or something related, say for an example, I'm going to give you some complex data. From this particular data, I have to find out only the digit, the numbers. So from the paragraph, okay? So we need to get the numbers and we have to get the only special characters. If I have any special characters, I have to find out in this particular column. So this way, if I want to search and everything, then I can go for this regular expression. So in Oracle, we will use regular expression. Okay, and mainly by these four strings. I will tell you what are the four strings we will use. These four strings, regular expression like, regular expression in string, regular expression replace, regular expression substring. Definitely these four we will use in our Informatica and IACS as well. So what is regular expression? How can we proceed with regular expression? If you see this regular expression here, if any regular expressions, okay, first we will understand the formula, then we'll go for the, some examples, okay? Then we'll get to know. So wherever you are finding star, okay, so wherever you are finding star in regular expression, it denotes zero or more occurrence. So zero or more occurrence of preceding characters. So what is this? Zero. Zero means you might have this B or you might not have this B. Okay, zero or more occurrence of Bs. A followed by 
zero or more occurrence of b that means you can have a or a b a b b a b b b in that way so if you take this scenario we can have a yes a followed by a followed by zero or more occurrence of b so that's the meaning of star star means zero or more so if you go here so a followed by zero occurrence of b a followed by one occurrence of b a followed by two occurrence of b a followed by more occurrence of b so in this case you can use so if you are if you are having any string in this way this particular pattern will match it okay so a b star will match this particular one so what is a plus symbol here okay so if you are using any plus symbol in the regular expressions it means one or more occurrence at least you need to have one occurrence so this is zero occurrence right this should match from here only so one or more occurrence of b it will not match this a okay so if you are writing this way a b plus a followed by one or more b's so yes you have to remember all this to write this regular expressions i will give you this document the simplified document it will have all this so you can have this particular document okay and then a b and question mark so if you are finding any question mark in in this regular expression it tells that zero or one okay zero or one only so if you are writing a b question mark it will take zero or one b so these two only it will fetch the other two it will not fetch it okay clear so what is the question mark question mark means zero or one occurrence of the preceding characters so here if you are going for a b star star is nothing but zero or more occurrence plus is nothing but one or more occurrence and question mark zero or one b so this is what we will take so a b and this curly braces so if you are using this curly braces this is nothing but n times of preceding character okay if you use this curly braces n times of b a followed by n times of b so that's a meaning so remember it's you are using this way so wherever i want to find out okay so a b two times then if i'm using a b something like a b two times if i'm using so this will match only in this one okay so this one only it will be matched and the other characters it will not match it if you are using a b 3 okay so this will match this particular string a b and if you are using curly braces n n times so this is n times but i want to make some ranges okay n to m to n okay 3 to 4 so i have to use 3 to 4 this way a followed by m times to n times so if you are using 3 comma 4 okay so this will get this one and if you are using a b b so a b b b so this way if i am using so this will select only these two okay so a followed by b minimum 3 times maximum 4 times okay it will match and next one is a b m comma so you can see here i am not mentioning the upper limit right so m to unlimited times so any times if i am using m comma here then it will match all the three so all the three it will match it so minimum 3 maximum you can go for n numbers okay this is what m so a b dot okay so a b dot a follow, followed by any single non new line character any single character this is the meaning so dot means okay any single character non new line character so new line means if you are having the end new line character so that will it, it will not consider okay this is new line character so it will not be considered but if you see this a this if you are saying dot here 
ओके सो डॉट सो डॉट बी और ये डॉट बी मींस इन बिटवीन यू कैन हैव एनी कैरेक्टर्स इन बिटवीन यू कैन हैव एनी कैरेक्टर्स सो दिस में रिटर्न ए बी सी डी आल्सो सो इफ यू हैव ए बी सी डी यस नॉट ए बी सी डी इट्स लाइक ए सी समथिंग ओके बी डी ओके ये इन बिटवीन यू कैन हैव एनी कैरेक्टर्स आफ्टर बी यू कैन हैव एनी कैरेक्टर्स okay so this is single character you can use dot so a followed by any single non new line characters so i hope you are clear so this is the basic about the repetition characters in regular expressions this is basic you have to understand this what is star here star means zero or more times plus symbol one or more question mark zero or one times so why because why i am repeatedly saying if i'm going to explain you some concept so all this we are going to write it so that time you will not get surprised what is the star represents what is this plus represents what is the question mark represents what is this curly braces all this then if you see this the more example of this one match any character that, that is what we'll go for the dot symbol match any character dot so if i use a dot c so anywhere if you are saying a dot c here so it represents Okay, it represents. So in between you can have any character. See here, A. In between B you can have. In between you can have the D. Okay. In between you can have one, and in between you can have and symbol. Okay. So here, see A any characters you can have the next one. A dot C means in between you can have one characters. So why it is it it will not match it? See why? Because in between we have some other characters, but the last character here it is C, right? But here it is B. It will not match it. Clear? So that's the meaning of dot symbol. Okay. One or more. So one or more means plus symbol. Okay. So as I have mentioned earlier, so plus symbol is nothing but one or more, right? Yes. If you go down, you can see here one or more. So A plus. If I'm using A plus here. so that means a followed by one or more characters right so you can have so here a followed by one or more characters one character of a or more character of a so that's the meaning right so you can have this a a a and a a a all this it will not match this b b b so one or zero or one that is question mark right we know question mark so what is the question mark zero or more occurrence of okay zero or more occurrence of a b this particular characters zero or more occurrence of b right this character a followed by one sorry uh, zero or one occurrence of zero one occurrence of b so this is one occurrence of b zero occurrence of b but what about this this is two occurrence of b so it will not be matched and here there is no p here right so that's what it will not match so star is nothing but zero or more star zero or more a followed by the preceding character you have to use a followed by zero or more occurrence of b zero occurrence of b one occurrence of b more occurrence of b and if you if you want to go for any intervals yes you got to go for intervals here so if i'm using five here five times a followed followed by a five times you can use okay if you are using any other character here a followed by any other character five times that means a within bracket we are using five times that means it's represents a five times okay so a four times it will not match and minimum 3 maximum you can go for n number at least 3 count okay this will match this one this one also but it will not match this one interval 3 to 5 so it will match 3 to 5 but it will not match less than 3 more than 3 then you can go for the matching character list so you can use this square bracket so if you are using any square bracket in this way okay so what is the meaning of the square bracket 
So you must use, okay, you use the matching character list to search for occurrence of the character in a list. So I want to search A, B, R, C. So this way you can use. A, B, C, if I'm using in the square bracket, it represents A, R, B, R, C. So that's the meaning. So even you can mention like A, I, F, and C. So if you're using A, I, F, and C, it means A to C, any characters. That means from A to C, any characters. If you're using A to C here, that means lower case okay from a to g any characters it will match so that's the meaning here so it will match a so this character a b c okay so any characters he can have it in this particular list so that's the meaning okay a b c so you can have it will not match d e f so why because e or d or if is not available here so that that is what it will not match so you can go for range operators Yes, you can use range operator like this, A to Z, and this one. So, like this is a, this is nothing but position, and uh, you can use this way. And yeah, I will tell you what is this. Okay, so you can make two dots and two equal symbols. Okay, so what is this? We'll see. Non-matching character list. So this is matching character list, right? So this is matching character list. If A, B, or C, it it is there, it will match it. But if you make this the caret symbol, we will say it's a caret symbol. If you use this particular symbol and it will take negate, okay? So negate of this one. So it's a non-matching character list. So non-matching. If we're using this way, so A, B, C, non-matching. This expression match, matches D, G in the following string, yes, non-matching, right? Yes, but it will not match this one. Why? Because it doesn't have any other characters, only these three characters are available. So here also you can use all this. And you can use A to I. A to I means A to I non-matching characters. So from, from J or any other character, it will match. Yes, from A to I, it will not match any characters, okay? So A, R, B, so you can use A, R, B. So what is A, R, B? So you can use A at this pipe symbol. If you use pipe symbol, then it's a A, R, B. Okay, so this way you can use. So more expressions, you know already, what is this A, B, C, right? And question mark and D, E, F. So if you see this, to find optional string A, B, C followed by D, F, use the following regular expressions. Yes, A, B, C, it's like a group. We will call it as it's a group. Okay, group characters. So if you're using anything within bracket, this is called a group characters. It has three characters. Okay, three characters with A, B, C, question mark. You can have question mark means any characters, right? What is the meaning of question mark here? So question mark zero or one occurrence. Yes. We have to go for zero or one occurrence of this character, right? Zero or one occurrence of DEF. Okay, so TEF one occurrence. So DEF one occurrence. Okay, but here GHI. Okay, there is no GHI here. That's what it is not taking. So in this case, I'm making that slash N. So what is the slash N? Okay, slash N represents back reference okay so if you are going for back references let's you to search for a repeated expressions okay so i want to go for one time repeated expressions expressions of this one so what is the symbol represents a b c r d e f right so in between if you have the operator here it will take a b c r d e f so you can have a b c okay r d e f Okay, so any characters for one occurrence. Okay, it will not match A, B, C, D, E, F, right? So if you see, this is repeated. So one times it should repeat. So A, B, C, one time it is repeating. D, E, F, one time it is repeating. But here it is not repeating. So back references with slash N. N is the 
an integer from 1 to 9 indicates nth preceding sub expressions. Okay, repeated, n times 2 repeated. Okay, whether I'm going to repeat. So this is the way you have to write. So this symbol, okay, so this symbol denotes uh, the negate. So dot, you know, star, you know, and slash. So matches a line consisting of two adjust, adjacent appearance in the same string. Okay, so we will see more examples so that you will get clear idea so how it will work. The anchoring and everything, okay, dollar symbol. Okay, we will see one by one. In Oracle, okay, so in Oracle, we have four different functions for regular expression. These are all the maximum used uh, regular expressions. One is regular expression, REG, regex. Okay, we will call it as it's a regex regular expression exp underscore like so you know already like keyword right so what is like keyword so if i want to search here like in this pattern okay i want to search select star from employees employees name okay so where first name you can go for first name like keyword so like keyword you can use something like a starting with a and you can go for any characters on the right hand side then you can search that means it will search this one the same like keyword we can use in the a regular expression like similar to like operator performs a regular expression matching instead of simple pattern matching that's the meaning okay regular expression matching instead of simple simple pattern matching this is simple pattern matching you can go for simply if i want to use uppercase then you have to use upper of lower of all this but here it's very simple so regular expression in string, we know already in string. What is this in string will do? Yes, in string and searches for the, it will search. Okay, it search for the given string for a regular expression pattern and returns the position where the match is found. Oh, that's a thing here. It returns the position of the matches where it found. So search for a regular expression pattern and replaces. So if I want to replace some characters, then I can go for replace, regular expression replace. Searches for a regular expression pattern and replaces it with a replacement string. So that we have to provide. This replacement string we have to provide here. Okay, substring, you know already substring, searches for a regular expression pattern with a given string and it will it returns the matched substring. It returns matched substring. Wherever it returns, that's substring it will return. So replace will replace the string and regular expressions in string will return the position of the characters and like it is matches. Okay, it matches. Okay, so this one you should remember all this. So what is this explanation I have given here? Just to go through this, you will get to know. Okay, so first we will go for these um, these symbols okay the uh, i have given this uh, one or two times you have to practice then only you will get to know all this very clearly if you are going for this symbol character symbol matches the beginning of a string okay so if i want to negate or beginning of the string you can go for so this one beginning of the string it used with the match parameter okay so we have some syntax so in that syntax we have to use it so what is this dollar so matches end of the string. So dollar wherever you are using. The, here it's uh, keyword is end. Star, you know, and plus, you know, ca the question mark, you know, dot symbol, you know, this is R symbol. Then this is what? Specify a matching list where you are trying to match one of the character in the list. So any one of the character in the list, it will match it. Specify non-matching list. That means it's a negate. Okay, if you are using in this way, it is matches, right? This is non-matching. So remember, if you are using this way, it's a non-matching. Then is this group expression, you are grouping it. You are creating a sub-expression. That's the meaning. M times M to many times, then M to N times, slash N is the number between. N, uh, N is nothing but one to. You want to go for um, something like the repeated matches then you can go for slash n so dot dot is nothing but matches one collation element that can be more than one character see this one i will tell you character set 
okay this is character set matches the equivalence classes and these things you need to remember what is the slash b okay it's a digit character it's a non digit so wherever you are seeing the capital d it's a non digit capital w it's non word character it's a word character it is non word character it's a space s is nothing but space and slash capital s is non so capital letter denotes the non keyword okay so non digit characters if i want to identify then you have to go for slash capital d a digit i have to identify then you have to use slash t slash s slash a matches the beginning of a string matches at the end of the string before a new line character slash c you can go for matches at the end of the string okay so end of the string you can use dollar symbol or the symbol both are equal okay so we are using star question mark plus question mark question mark question mark okay and then this way you can use uh, whatever the number you want to use it so if you have time so i'm just to go through all this you will get to know all this clearly okay okay so now uh, sometimes you will be seeing the match parameter okay so match parameter if you are seeing then the syntax so the denotes okay c c is nothing but case sensitive matching c is nothing but case sensitive i means insensitive so that's the meaning of i so wherever you are finding i so here it is case sensitive right it's a case sensitive if i want to make this one as a case insensitive i have to make always here upper of right so if i am using upper of then small a comes it will it will match it but here if i want to make it like case insensitive you have to use this small like yes definitely you need to know all this very clearly so that's what you can able to understand okay so all this see now we will go for some examples with following or uh, whatever we have seen as of now then you will get to know so first we will start with regular expression like uh, before regular expression like i will tell you some examples on the uh, the dot symbol all this okay if you ask me uh, do i need to learn all this all this syntax yes you have to learn all this syntax okay so then only you will get to know so very clearly so otherwise uh, very difficult to understand yes you have to do one or two times all this uh, to get to know very clearly okay so if you see this statement okay i will take regular expression replace see what is the meaning of uh, this one see what is the meaning of see i am giving some character okay so a a b a b b a a a and here i am giving some a four characters a many characters so a b star so what is the meaning a b star a followed by so you can uh, yeah very first time if you are learning yes you have to check here so a b zero or more occurrence right yes so zero or more occurrence of b a followed by zero or more more occurrence so here i'm using regular expression replace i want to replace a followed by zero or more occurrence of b right so if i want to go for here this is uh, one occurrence yes it will be replaced this will be replaced this is zero occurrence zero or more occurrence all the place it will replace right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so seven times you'll be seeing this okay clear on this seven times you can able to see here so that's a meaning a followed by b plus so a followed by one or more one or more at least you need to have one or more so this is one times four times this will not get replaced correct this will not get replaced you can see here a followed by one or more so that's a meaning so plus means so you can uh, note down okay so here one or more so that's a meaning you can take some uh, shortcut to identify okay so g star it's a uh, zero or more so zero or more means star means anything 
asterisk symbol we will use right normally uh, right hand side you can have anything zero or more but plus symbol you have to have one or more occurrence so this one question mark definitely you need to go for this question mark you need to go for zero or one occurrence only zero or one occurrence right see which one will be replaced zero occurrence one occurrence zero or one occurrence of b okay here also we have one occurrence b here also we have one occurrence b right that's why it is getting replaced so here replaced so zero or one occurrence so all this it will get replaced okay so all the place it will get replaced with other characters also you'll be getting it so that's a regular expression replace so this will get replaced a followed by three times b so a followed by three times p okay is there any a followed by three times b here a followed by three times b four times p so that means here also it will get replaced here also it will get replaced here also it will get replaced wherever it is finding this way this one exactly you have to make uh, three times then you have to go for a different way okay so here so two two three so a followed by two times or three times so a followed by two times or three times so here and here right and this this one a followed by minimum three maximum anything and yeah this one we uh, we do not have here a so anything x or anything y so if you have anything x or here it will get replaced okay but here we do not have any characters a followed by x or y so what is the like regular expression like like means so regular expression like this is the syn syntax of the regular expression like you need to give the given string uh, this might be a hard coded value or it might be a column name okay so here it will be a search pattern then you need to go for match parameter so this will be optional one so wherever you are seeing this square bracket that is an optional one okay this function searches a character column for a pattern okay use this function in the where class of the query to return rows so you have to use where class only okay you cannot use something like regular expression like directly that you will i cannot use it with this way so you will be getting error so this one you can go for a regular expression like and if you see this source string it's nothing but you can provide any column name or a string and here we will provide the search pattern and match parameter okay so these three so but these two are mandatory one this one is it is a match parameter we have seen already right last okay you can have the case sensitive case insensitive all this match parameter so c and i we will use normally for most of the cases okay so what is the meaning of this statement okay so what is the meaning of the statement retrieve all of the names that contains the letter z yes you can go for so regular expressions like see one thumb rule is here regular expression like you have to use in a where class only okay so you cannot use it in the select uh, something like a column name okay you have to use always in the where class if you want to use something like a select statement you have to use something sem table concept only okay sem table means with class you have to use so here select star from the table name where regular expression like first name okay so first name comma z so i want to find out whether we have any uh, first name with character set z it will match this like keyword yes it will take so this many characters we have z so i want to go for capital z so i can use capital z here so whether it will select no it will not select why it's a by default a case sensitive if i want to make case insensitive then you have to use i here okay so case insensitive so any characters okay so capital z or the smaller one okay the lower case so anything it will search but this i is match pa pattern 
Uh, if you want to use it, you can use it. Otherwise, you can remove. So it's a by default, it's a case sensitive. If you want to make it case insensitive, you have to make it this way. So remember, always the regular expression like by default, it's a case sensitive. If you don't mention here, it is a case sensitive here. So that's why it is not taking this capital Z. If you are making lower case, you are taking all this. Okay. So matches all of the names that contain this one. Okay. So here I'm going with this way match. So matches. So this one, right? The group we are creating. Okay. So in between you can have. So in between you can have O or E or A. So that's the meaning. So whenever you are using this way. So you can have after after this particular letter yes you can have yes o n yes e n yes a n sometimes you'll have something like uh, some british english and uh, us english will have the conflict right so i want to match it both you can use this way see here i have something like yes o n it is repeating if anything like yes e n you have data yes so that particular data also it will it will match it okay so o r e r a so that's the meaning right this one but this is the group we are making so inside we are making inside okay in between yes and o we can have this kind of characters okay that's the meaning yeah in this one you have to do a lot of practice then the practice you will get to know all this clearly so match on the beginning so like you know the carrot symbol it represents the beginning right so match on the on beginning return all employees whose last name starts with capital a so capital a after that you are using bracket so any number of characters the star represents any number of characters right so star here you see this zero or more occurrence right zero or more occurrence or so anything. So you can have start with A and you can have N number of characters starting A. This many last name we have starting with A. This one, the dollar symbol denotes the ending. So you can have in between any characters ON after ON. That means ON should be ending characters. It's It should the last name, right? Last name should end with O N. Okay. So you may ask question. Okay. This can be achieved by using normal regular expression. Why you are writing like this? Okay. By using regular expression, you can write complex pattern matching as well. Okay. Not only this, this is a very small, uh, the a simple one, but by using this, you can write very complex one. We'll go one by one. Okay. So here I'm writing. So this represents grouping right any number of characters the star represents zero or more occurrence of any characters and it should end with o n okay if i'm not using dollar symbol so it will it select yes that means o n anywhere in the uh, characters if it is matches it will end it will search see here o n in middle o n here end o n end so O and end, end. So, but here O N is middle. So anything. But if you are making this dollar symbol, it represents at the end of the characters. Okay. So this the the word whichever we are giving. Okay. So what is the meaning of this one? B followed by E or A followed by E. So B E A. So this is R symbol. So any character. Any first name contains B E R A E, right? It is not like a B then A R B. It's a B E R A E. That's the meaning. Whether we have A E, yes. Here we have A E. Then here A E. Here it is B E. Here it is B E. And here it is B E and A E, right? So if I'm going to use this way, this way so what is the meaning so b followed by e r a then e so do we have anything like this 
A B E. Okay, A. That way we have one. We'll check it. Any anything we have? Nothing is there. So if I'm going to check this way, so I'm going to take uh, this. So that means A followed by okay any characters. You can have B or you can have C, okay? And then you can have E. So it should return this one, right? 172 row number, yes. See, uh, this is different and the previous one is different. Clear? So this is like you want to go for, uh, just we are grouping it, okay? So you'll be having some grouping in the regular expressions. So just uh, make sure that you are having a different way. Okay. So next one is, it's a case sensitive, right? It's a case sensitive. So you need to have, if we are using this way, it's a case sensitive, right? Always. So case insensitive, insensitive you can make I, whether we have anything like this, the same, same result, we are getting six characters. We are not getting anything. Okay, so here case sensitive V and A, this is similar. First, uh, these two are similar. And starting with A, right? Starting with A. So this caret symbol indicates the beginning of, of line characters. Yes, if you're using this caret symbol, it's a beginning of this one. Okay, so you can use this one within the bracket that's the difference but here it's uh, starting with a right beginning of a last name so you can see a last name but i i have used it's a case insensitive that's why you are getting all this but if you are using if you are not using here c it's a case sensitive it will not return any values okay so why because there is no last name with starting with A, lowercase. But if you're making A capital, then it will return, even though if it is going for case sensitive. So only capital A, it will get return. Okay, so retrieve all names. So that start with letter sequence, B, E, or B, A. Okay, so here it is S, A. Okay, so it is not B, it's a S, A or D, A. Okay, so DA here, starting with SA, starting with DA, but it's a case insensitive, you can have capital letter also. So you can have here first name, right? So you can have here DA or SA, right? If you are making C here, you will not get it. Okay. So if I want to write this in normal regular expression, you have to write R class, right? R class, but here it is very simple. You can write this way. Okay, so this one, the same way, SA, RDA, case sensitive. And this one ending with Y. Ending with Y, it's a case sensitive. Last name ending with Y, I is insensitive. Okay, so this is nothing but ES, ER, ending with ES, ER. So even it might be a capital letter or it might be a lowercase. So you can have ES or ER, ER, ES, ER, or ES. So this way you can write more number of characters. It's very simple in regular expressions. Okay. Okay. What is the square meaning? Okay. So I square bracket to specify a matching list that should match any one of the expressions, right? So any one, that's it. Retrieve all names that contains a letter J. R Z, right? That's it. You can have J, R Z. Any one characters. Okay, any one characters. So you can have J, R, Z in in the characters. Okay. If you are making negate here. Okay. If you are making negate, what is the meaning? Other than this, other than this J, R, Z, you will get all the characters. Clear? You will not have here. 
other than that j or g you will have it here okay first name so first name case sensitive case insensitive okay so regular expression will retrieve all names that contains letter b or c or e okay you can go for b here it is not a case sensitive search so you can have any characters of so you can use this way it it will have b or z or e right so any characters if i want to make case this is case sensitive if i want to go for case insensitive you have to put i here that's it okay so i here that's it so b or c then you can have x y x y or z the same way here you have to use x y first name then you can use this way is nothing but x to z a to b yes if you have any characters with this first name with the x to y it will it will return okay it will return so this way so x it will be there or y it will be there or z will be there in the particular characters okay clear so 19 19 first name it's in this way it's very simple right so what is the meaning of this one it should contain h to k any character from h to k h i j k so these four characters followed by a right so followed by a any characters between these four and followed by a so you can see here so if you see this some a yes i a is there yes first one then this one h a yes and here i a so this one h a this one i a this one h a h a right i a then h a so between h to k any one characters and followed by a so clear retrieve all the names that contains a letter in the range of h to k followed by a letter a so that's a one thing okay so i want to go for h to k in between you can have any characters okay in between any one characters okay that's the meaning here b okay so what is the meaning dot dot operator matches any character except null okay any character except null retrieve all names that contains letter range of h to k followed by any character followed by b so that's the meaning right so in between if i want to place any characters yes you can place it here so you can have this one so h to k yes followed by any one character then b okay so h to k i m b that's the meaning i m b right i m b so h to k so h i j k then any one character so here i is there any one character is m then b right it is returning within this any one character i then m and b so what is the meaning of this one so h to k any characters one characters in between you can have any two characters then a in between a n in between here ch in between ch clear but you have to uh, practice one time then you will get to know all this clearly then i will go for here replace like so what is the meaning of this one uh, the curly braces you can use last name you can have followed by two times l followed by two times right the last name so this is l okay so l followed by sorry l two times is there any three times l no so two comma any times you can check it here okay regular expression like so what is the meaning of this one so retrieve all names that contain so two times e so e letter two times that's the meaning okay so if you use e so that means any any one occurrence of this one but here two times of e so this is what we have to use a regular expression like 
So two times E here, yes. So we have three times E. No, three times E. Any characters three times E. No, I two times. L two times. Yes, L two times we have more number of um, characters here on the first name. Okay, so this way you can find uh, uh, many any characters. This regular expression like. Okay, so then next one is regular expression replace. So regular expression replace. This is a, this is a syntax we have to provide first uh, string given string and pattern and replacement string start position and end the position okay you have to mention that start position and end position and match characters so replacement string is optional one start position is optional one end position is optional one match character also optional one okay so that's what we have seen here replace string and here the given string given string here a replacement string okay the pattern we are searching the pattern here and then replacement string which one i have to replace it will it will tell you that what uh, the replaces okay see if you see this replace the first word in the string so this one i'm going with replace i want to replace a first word whatever i'm going to have this here so i'm using first word here so that means so what is the meaning of this caret symbol it represents the start of the string yes start of the string after that you are grouping it you are grouping and the this slash yes so what is the slash s matches if you go here at the end you can find the slash s right slash capital s so capital s matches non white space character non white space so this is non white space character this is non white space character this is non white space character white space means this is white space character non white space character okay so non white space is this is the non white space character it uh, replace so first uh, first one right yes non replace characters then here we are replacing this one but at the end we are replacing with correct here okay so if you see this so here i'm going to replace the dollar symbol starting okay starting position i'm just replacing it so here if you see this lower case right so here i'm just replacing with this one it has been replaced and this one i'm going to replace at the end okay end this symbol end so at the end it will replace the white space so this is lower case or upper case upper case only non white space character so it will replace okay non white space character at the end it will get replaced dollar symbol so next one how many characters i'm checking here 1 2 3 4 so in between i can have the four characters this is a matching pattern if if i find anything just i'm replacing so oracle will be replaced with oracle db so oracle will get replaced with oracle db so here second occurrence okay i will take all this so if you see this this is nothing but second occurrence from first so regular expression here if you go to this one the the syntax if you see this so starting position and the nth appearance starting position is first position okay from here to here i have to check second occurrence right second occurrence so so i have to check this this particular string single quotes whatever you are having it oracle there are data oracle 23c then here i have to find out oracle but i have to find out second occurrence not the first occurrence second occurrence here so i want to replace so i will it will get replaced the second occurrence only not the first occurrence see here first occurrence still is there but here so is there any single character here is there any o 
next uh, any any character then e no right it will not replace so you will be getting the same one so regular expression replace i am getting plus 9 plus 99 plus 999 are starting numbers okay of mobile numbers okay what is the meaning of slash d slash d is the digit right digit characters so this is a digit so single digit so slash d means it's a single digit so single digit if you find any single digit here replace with eight so that's the meaning so if find it, it if it finds a re single digit then it replaces with eight that's it see here so single digit replaced with eight here then here also single digit replaced with eight single digit all the single digit will replace okay then here if i'm going with okay replace only two digits wherever you are finding two digit just replace so two digit here so here i'm just finding two digit yes replace with eight here replaced here it is finding two digit eight replaced with eight so eight and eight you are getting so but this cannot be replaced here so three digit only you replace with eight so only this will be replaced with eight. Okay, last one. Okay, so match on nth occurrence. So if you see this, in this particular given string, you find A or E or I O U replace with the capital I from first character, first, uh, first occurrence. This is case sensitive or case insensitive case sensitive wherever i'm finding see here first occurrence first occurrence is this c it will find right it's a case sensitive and then it will replace with capital i okay clear if it is not finding okay this is second occurrence second occurrence yes it is second occurrence here it will replace here only so remove all special characters in the given string so what is the meaning here just i'm get, getting some other characters here okay special characters at symbol the you can have the tilde symbol also okay so any symbols you can have so starting from starting you can have a to z okay you can have a to z and capital A to Z, and you can have one space. That means space you can have. So wherever it is finding here, so these character only it will take. Okay, if you see this, I am getting comma here. It will get replaced, right? It will replace. At symbol, replace. I am not giving anything. That's why it replaces with a null. Okay, space it will take. Space I am giving here. So, and this one replace and all other characters it is replacing, including this one. That's what here it has been mentioned here. It has been replaced. This symbol has been replaced. Okay, so this one, it's a, it is not a, a replacing this one. It represents these characters starting positions. Okay, starting positions from here remove all special characters and numbers from the string see if you are getting any string in this way if you want to find out then this is the way you have to go for remove all special characters and numbers also see numbers it has been removed right actually this is the one here it should come so this one number i need to place it i need to i need to give you exceptions so just I'm giving like a 0 to 9. Yes, you can have 0 to 9 here. So A to Z, then 0 to 9. So all this. So we are getting. So only these characters will be kept and other characters, characters will get replaced. Okay, clear. I want this hyphen, then you have to use hyphen, hyphen here, right? See, hyphen, if you use that hyphen, you will get it. Okay, so I want to 
mask some sensitive information. Okay, see here. So this is what we will give. And I'm giving some credit card information. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then four characters. Four characters. 16 digit characters I'm giving. So in this, I can have three digit, right? So slash D three digit, yes. Then dot star, any number of characters. Okay, any number of characters. Then four characters, four characters here. So this is the group one actually. Group one, you can have it as it is. But in between you can have star and group three. Slash three means group three. So group three also you can have it as it is. So that means first three characters, last four characters remaining, you will have star. Clear? Able to understand this meaning? So first, this is something like a grouping it. You are grouping first three characters. Then next uh, in between characters and last four characters, right? Last four characters, you have grouped it three groups. First group, you can have it as it is. Last group, you can have it as it is. In between, you are you are making star. How many star? So here, three plus four, seven. Then you might be having nine star, right? Nine star or 16. Yeah, nine star. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so 10 star we are making. Should be nine. But yeah, so whatever the number of star you are making, it will get, you will get it here. Clear on this. So one, two, three. And then you are getting this one. In between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine star you are getting in between. So masking sensitive information. Yes. So this is the one. Okay. So if you go to the explanation, you can find here. So this one, this nothing but, this is nothing but it denotes the capturing the group one. Okay. Beginning matches the beginning of the string. Slash D. Okay. Slash D is nothing but digit matches any digit characters zero to nine. Three occurrence. Right. So if you go through this, you will get to know all this I have explained. Okay. So I have to remove the redundant space. So redundant space means just I'm grouping here one space. So one space I can have and you can have uh, two or more. Okay. So in this, if I have one space, that's okay. So you are making it. If you have two or more space, then you are removing it. So capturing group one quantifier matches two or more of the preceding token. So if you are, this is space. If the space is coming like two or more, you are replacing with one space. Okay. So one single space you are replacing. If you see this, so wherever you are getting two space, okay, or more number of space, it will get replaced with one single space. So that's what you are getting here. Okay, two or more spaces, it will get replaced with single space, but already single space is available. It will not get replaced. You will get, but this pattern definitely we will give in real time project, this type of pattern. You should be able to understand now. I removed a redundant one. So I will go to the next one. Okay. Reformat phone numbers. Okay. So this kind of this one, you can see here now. So employee ID, first name, last name. Then I'm, I'm even if, if you want, I can get the phone number. And then I'm replacing the phone number with. So I'm just splitting this phone number. First three digit. Okay. Then next three digit. Next four digit. I'm placing dot. Okay. So I'm making that. Okay. It's like a dot we have already. So first one as it is I'm taking. Second one, first one while taking, I'm making like this bracket. Second one, 
I'm taking with the space. I'm taking second one with the iPhone. I'm taking third one. Clear. So if you see this, whatever matches found on this format slash D three digit dot three digit dot four digit. Yes, it's matches found. It replace within bracket first one space second one hyphen third one okay but this one it is not matching this one is not matching if you want to go for matching then you have to put uh, in between you can have some instead of this you can have this dot you can have any other characters you have to define okay so just to check it how to define but it is replacing this format okay but this is not uh, we are not getting so that's why it is not replacing only this is replacing if i want to replace this one you have to write uh, like r class okay so either r uh, this one. okay so this one next one a regular expression replace so here if i'm going with so first uh, starting from the starting you can have the digit okay so 12 digit 12 digit you can have and dot star at the end so after that you can have any number so first uh, 12 digit you can keep it as it is then in between you are making star last three digit you are making the third one okay so last one you are making three so i do not have third group here right so only two groups are there right one two three three group end so that's why it is getting all the one two three four five stars seven seven and then it is making five stars so what is this explanation if you see this the explanation is here so digit so slash d just to go through this you will get clear idea so three digit three digit then four digit okay this one explanation but uh, this one is different i'll go for next one mask from one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four two last the digit is xxx so you can have here same way uh, either you can make slash d or this way both are equal only okay slash d or this one digit matches character classes so it matches the digit right digit matches equivalent class so digit it matches so first uh, you, you are defining first uh, group here four characters yes iphone next to four iphone next to four iphone next to four just you are defining so how the input characters right pattern yes first one you need to get as it is iphone second one as it is third one as it is then fourth one you are making four this one i want to make first one also some xxx so instead of this you can go for xxx 4x okay see here so first one middle you are getting r first characters two three you are you want to make it the group yes the same way you can make it whatever the way you want to make it. okay so here first uh, three are masked last one you are getting okay so digit this way so you can write slash d then four that's fine slash d then four this is also same this is also same okay this is equivalent to this one so next one is you are making iphone okay i think these two are similar so here it is starting four character one two three four four so four and four only we are taking first digit you are taking as it is second one but the last one we are not defining that's what we are getting last one also but if you want to get it one two three four one two three four then one two three four same thing we can go for one more time 
then here you can have slash three similar next one is regular expression substring okay regular expression substring means this function returns the actual substring matches pattern you specific okay if you see this so this is a syntax just to go through the syntax you will get to know okay so if you see this regular expression substring uh, it is similar to other regular expressions okay the same way whenever you are seeing that regular expression you can able to see this substring it will get it will return that matches so single character single digit wherever it is there i'm just taking okay from the first occurrence this is the first occurrence right if you are making two here second occurrence eight will be uh, it will be uh, it will return the substring that's a advantage of substring here it returns substring here returns this is the one given string and returns the match substring okay so this one returns 99 first occurrence of two digit so if you want to make three digit you can go for so three digit also this way also you can make it three digit you can go for three uh, three comma four is there any three comma four three to four yes we have so this one regular expression substring first name a e i o u it's a case sensitive first occurrence okay so wherever it is finding first occurrence it will return if it is not finding it will return null value if you are seeing null value that means there is no character of a e i o u so that's a uh, another one here if it is not finding it will return null value okay so here also i have given okay it will return null values right so this is very important here if it is not matching it will return null so based on that you can equate some conditions see this is something like a, a temp table we will write in our real time project also uh, in the in the joins if you are writing join something uh, do we have any table here temp table here no select column names from table name what is the table name here temp table what is the table that table here we are writing with with the table name as within bracket you can create a table at the run time okay so with class you might have seen uh, sometimes so here i do not have actual table instead of uh, taking the table three to four table as it is two tables you can join it with with, with the class it's like a sub queries and you can get the details okay union all union all means it will select this a b c 1 2 3 all this into one table that is temp table and here i'm checking whether it has 0 to 9 0 to 9 returns the first number yes it's a one it will return 0 to 9 any number of characters returns first number and rest of the string yes see this way it will returns so this is the first uh, one first number it will return here also one here also one here also one and first number with followed by any number of characters and here first capital a okay so first capital a for an example here i'm using small a then it will return b2 see this why so why because i have used capital a here if i'm using this way that means either capital or the the lower case upper case or lower case anything is fine so that's why now it is returning this way okay yeah this may uh, this times uh, this way you can have practice more number of regular expressions you'll get to know regular expression in string you are checking whether this particular character is present or not uh so make it more exercise examples you will get to know so where is the occurrence of a here the 10th position of the characters in string will return the position of the characters right it will return the position so that is what regular expressions look like this will come in the practice only 
So at least three to four times you have to practice what is the star, what is the symbol represents all this. Okay, I hope you are clear. So how to use the star plus the question mark. These three only we will use mainly. I will give you this document also. Just to go through that, you will get to know clearly. Welcome to the session. In our today's session, we'll start with performance tuning in Oracle. So whenever we are using Oracle database or any other databases, if you are handling with huge volume of data, so definitely performance tuning is the very important one. So even if you are an ETL developer, the same performance tuning, you might be doing it in the Informatica Power Center or any other tools. Okay, if you go to any databases, like Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, or Teradata, or any databases, in real-time projects, definitely will be handling huge volume of data. So if you are handling huge volume of data, then performance tuning will be a very important one. Okay, mostly like uh, if you are in ETL environment, then mostly like fact tables. So in terms of PB, we'll have the data. Yes, definitely it will have the terabytes of uh, data. So definitely we need to do a performance tuning. The most important the most widely used performance tuning is the partitioning one. So we do have different methods of performance tuning. So that we will see one by one. So first of all, whenever we are doing the performance tuning, so first we have to go for explain plan. So you are running big queries, okay, SQL queries, you are running that. And definitely we need to go for, we need to check how the SQL query is running. So ex explain plan. So you have to run an explain plan. So first you can run the explain plan and it will tell you how the query is running. Then based on that, how much cost it is taking. So all this it will tell you. What the cost, CPU usage and everything it will tell you. So by using that explain plan, you can you can do the performance tuning. Okay, whether it is going for full table scan or it is going for any other scan types. So based on that, you have to decide. So this is the one method we can go for. So explain plan. Then you can go for something like collect stats. You can put collect stats. So if it is very big table, you can do the collect stats. So in order to do the collect statistics, so that means it is a metadata table. Whenever it has the huge volume of data, so everything if I want to go for statistics update, then Oracle will do the collect stats. So collect stats is mainly used to see the performance. Okay, how the not performance, it is, it is used to improve the performance. Okay, one of the method and the collect stats. Okay, so then you will do the, the hints you will use. I will tell you what is that hints. So we will have some parallel hints, all this. Then the optimizer. Okay, so you will be using that optimizer. Optimizer is nothing but the optimizer knows it how to execute this particular queries. Okay. Say for an example, you are you are moving from one location to another location. Very first time you are moving. So that time you will be plan, you will put the plan, right? Okay, how can I go from this particular location to this particular location? So you'll put explain ex, execution plan. So next time if you are running the same query, so it will go and check the the optimizer execution plan and then it will execute. So that's what it will go for. Execute the optimizer one, and then you, it will, you can use the partitioning. The partition is very, very important one. Okay, we will see one by one. So partition here, we cannot run it. So why? Because most of the performance tuning method. So we will not face any uh, issues here. That's one thing. And also this partitioning, we can do it in the express, sorry, in enterprise edition only. So not with express edition. So in express edition, so in XE, we will not have it. So you will have, you have a real time uh, system, then you can run this. If you have any Oracle database, uh, development environment, you can create the partitioning and then you can check how it is running. Okay, even standard edition also, you will not see the partitioning. Okay, so enterprise edition, yes, definitely we'll see. If you get the chance to install enterprise edition, then you can work on this partitioning. Okay, but I will explain. So what are the things we have to consider while doing the performance tuning in real-time projects? 
so whenever you are working on any real time project right so directly don't apply select star from the table name okay so don't use select star from the any table name so like this don't use that so why because this table contains huge volume of data okay so don't use it so first of all describe the table okay so describe the table and check so what is the volume of the table and you, you volume of the table describe table you cannot find but you can find whether the table has partition if it is a fact table right yes you will be finding the partition column so you have to use in the var class and don't use star here so always use whatever the columns you want so even if you has multiple columns in the table so use only that particular columns alone so whatever the column you need so that particular column alone you use don't use select star from the table name and also for an example in real time project even if you are using any data where using tables so don't use that select star from the table name don't use this select star from instead of that use that table okay if you want to check some few data in this particular table then use if it is terra data then use something like sample 5 or something if it is any other databases you can use if it is oracle database use ronum so ronum less than or equal to 5 so it will select five records only so where ronum equal to less than or equal to 5 so even if the table contains millions of data it will select only five records right so you you can check it how the data is and also don't use star and don't use all the columns names also whatever the column names needed so that particular column alone use it okay and if it is any other for an example aws redshift you are using use that limit give it okay limit five so simply don't use where so limit five just it will select five records in that way you can select okay so i have given one document here just to go through that this is a generalized performance tuning methods so whenever you are you are going with and the cost effective methods go for that cost effective method and also the performance tuning is always is happening okay it is not so you have tuned to today but after some time no need to do that it, it doesn't mean that okay so performance tuning is always we have to do so whenever the data volume is growing up the real time project yeah definitely will be doing that performance tuning so always minimize the amount of data okay so amount of data that must be scanned so don't go for full stable scan always so whatever the data you want to select use filter class and filter out that particular record alone use some uh, ranges like a var class you can apply date range created by this particular time period that will reduce the the number of record scanning okay so that's what you have to use and add more indexes on the table so indexes on the table but if that if you are going for frequently insert and update on the tables don't use indexes okay if you are frequently inserting or updating on the table don't use indexes so whatever the select statement you are going to do on the tables so something like that then you can use indexes so do not include star in the select statement always use the column names so that's why in informatica or iecs or any etl tool you are going to use it so aut automatically it will select the column names okay and also don't use unnecessary columns if you are selecting unnecessary columns then it will create even if it is uh, informatica power center if you are going to use a lookup catch and everything if you are using select statement it will create a lot of catching right so don't use that and whatever the record data that alone you can use it so even in the database use filter and these are all the small small things you have to consider and whenever you are going for join so use appropriate join conditions so don't go for any cartesian product okay so instead of in keyword you can go for exist keyword that will perform very fastly so you see here do not use indexes to the tables that undergo more update or insert see if you are going for more update or insert or bulk insert or bulk update don't use indexes first 
So you drop the index, do the bulk insider update. And after that, you create it. Okay, that's what we will do. And use some temporary tables. Say for an example, you are building a lot of in the joints. And in the joints, query, you are using some 10 to 15 tables and tables you are using. So don't use all the 10 tables in the joints. So it will take a lot of memory. So if it is a huge table, don't use that. So instead, create some temp tables. So create some temp tables and use the keyword called with. So by using that, you can able to create easily. You can use the query will perform. Okay, for an example, two to three tables you are combining and then creating the temp tables, loading the data. And then if you are joining it, it will be very easy. So even if you are going to deploy any code, right? Normally we will do temp table creation and then the same simply they are using cell select start from the table name selects statement you are using some reports so in the report queries if you are going to check in the in the above queries you can easily find out they should have created some temp tables so intermediately they will create some tables and then from the tables you can do the joins if you are going for more number of tables so these are all the some basic method to improve the performance in addition to this in addition to this we can go for some other performance tuning method. Okay, so DBS also they will do performance tuning. So they will increase the caching. Okay, definitely infrastructure also. It's one of the main thing for the infrastructure. So they will improve the caching size for the performance improvement. So all the caching size they will improve and uh, the table space they will improve and they will go for more spaces on the database side to improve the performance that they will do it on infrastructure side. So that means DBA, they will take it. But ourselves as the developer, the SQL query developer, so we have to consider few things. So what is that? So first of all, whatever the query is running, just to go for explain plan. So explain plan for this particular table. So whenever you are doing explain plan, so it will give you what is the join method is performing. So some different join methods are there. I will tell you what are the different three uh, join methods are there so that it will tell you. So what is the join method it is using and the access method for each table, how it is accessing the tables and uh, the different operations. So whether it is going for sorting algorithm, aggregation, filter, so all this it will go for select statement. So all this it will show, it will show you. That's what explain plan will give you. So join method, we have three different join methods are there. So I will explain that. So first join method is a nested join, nested loop join. So what is that nested loop, loop join, right? So nested loop join means if the two tables are small table, okay, so whatever the query you are going to do, so if you are going for explain plan, so how the Oracle will do that? So we'll create nested loop join, then it will loop each and every record, compare with the other tables, and then it will give you the result. Hash join is the fastest join. It will do one table in the hash, memory okay on the cache memory other table it will keep it in the outside then it will compare with each and every record it will do the joins sorting means if you are going for two tables join so one table will take it to the caching and then it will sort the data so based on that it will key column it will join it and then it will produce a result okay these are all the three join method it will do are we going to do no we are not going to do so database will do it. We, we, we may not know what is the operation it is doing, but database will do. So if you are going for any explain plan, so these are all the access method you will be seeing that. The one thing is first one is full table scan. So normally we'll call it as FTS. That means the table is going for the, if you are running any select statement, so database is going to check all the data one by one. So that's why you can go for the full table scan table access by row ID. So each row ID, it will select it will store and then row ID it's going for. So if you are creating a primary key or unique key, then it will go for unique key index. So unique index will go for range index means a range of values. If you're selecting where class, some range of values. Okay, this value to this value. If that column has been indexed, then it will go for range scan and index skip. So not between or not equal to for going for indexed column, then it will go for a skip and full index. So all the data it will go for. And these are all the access method, different access method I will show you. Then you'll get a clear idea. I'm going to create one table here. Create 
table table name employees I select star from this way i just created one table okay employees two if you check this particular table it doesn't have any indexes okay you know all indexes right so select star from all underscore indexes where owner equal to hr just time selecting so these are all the tables it's showing then table name table name equal to and table name equal to i'm going for employees to so it doesn't have any indexes so if you describe the table describe employees to then you can find the column names right so with these are all the column names you are seeing that okay so how the indexes will work say for an example i'm running one query select star from table name employees where class where salary i'm going to use greater than 8000 i'm just using this query okay, it is selecting 32 records and then it's showing but how this query is running i want to know how the oracle is going to check See, if you have how many records there in the table, the employees to, you see this 106 records it has. How the Oracle will run? Whether it will go and check directly 8,000 for all getting 8,000 or it will go and compare each and every record. So it will go and eat, it will compare each and every record, right? That is our full table scan. So if you want to check how this query is running, then you have to run the explain plan, okay? So run explain plan for, so always use the select statement. Okay, so explain plan for select statement. You can run this way. So if you are running this way, then it, it will show you explained. So after that, you can use, okay, the, this has been explained and then it will store in the one particular package. So that package is, you can select in this way, select star from, so you can use, I will give you this particular statement. So select star from table of dbms underscore explain dot display. So if you are going to run this, how this query is running. See here, so very first uh, query is running. Select statement. And the second one, it is going for full table scan. So full table access, employees table. You are seeing the cardinality, it is taking one, one not four records. Okay, so with this particular cardinality means it is taking one not four records, checking how many records it's going for, one not four records, and the cost is three, three here. Okay, three, it's, this is what it is showing. You are using some filter condition, filter to 8000. Okay, so you can run this way. The other way is in SQL developer. You can use simply, don't use explain plan. Just to select this query, you can see here explain plan for right. So you can run this. It will give you, okay, full table scan. Cardinality is going for 104 record. That means these many records it's checking. And cost is three, CPU cost. And this is what it is using. Then the database version and all this it is showing hints. Okay, how this it, it is using. So this this is what it is running. The query is running. And you can see, or you can select this particular statement, you can press F10. So press F10 in your system, then it will give you the same, same result, okay? But if you are running, this is the best method, explain plan for, just to explain it. You can see the hash value here for this particular explain plan okay so it is going for full table scan that means each and every record it's comparing and then it is giving you the result okay but uh, i'm going to create an index on this particular table on the particular column so whatever the column you are frequently querying a column so that column you do the indexing the where class so i'm going to create an index so how will you create an index on salary column, we can go for B3 index, right? 
or create index index name idx emp underscore salary underscore idx on what is the table employees table salary you are going for the column name salary in this column i'm going to create it but i will take this particular plan see this plan is for cpu cost is three employee two only have to do so why because employee one already indexed so employees two it is going for uh, 103 records so here also cost is three so it doesn't have any indexes all this so i'm just creating index on this particular table so index has been created so now i will go and execute this particular statement okay explained and i'm checking the explain plan okay still it is going for the same cost session we will we will terminate the session so you explain plan for select start from so again it is going for full table scan that means it is comparing with each other record this particular index is not correct the column you are selecting right it is not going for the full table scan it is going for the index range scan so range of values you are selecting greater than 8000 right so that means the cost is very less here three so zero one two select statement so how to interpret this explain plan i will explain later but this is what it is going for the indexing but previously it was selecting 104 records right so now the cardinality is 11 records only wait checking these many records only so that is what the the cost has been reduced here okay if you are going for huge volume of data definitely you can you can find this cost has been reduced very very less it's going for index range scan right so how to interpret this particular explain plan so normally you have to go this way first you take the topmost one so first you take one so first one is uh, zero so zero here then it is going for the table access by index row id that is one so this is zero then this is one here there is no parallel sorry there is no parallel one right so you can use one here simply you can use one so this step is executing then it is going for the next one next step so if you see this index range scan so that is two so if you have to write this way but still has all this hierarchy here see here there is no in between step here so that's why i have written this way so while you are you are interpreting how the oracle will run so from the bottom it will run from the bottom left hand side it will run so this way this is the way it will run so there is no leaf uh, there is no branch here so it will go from the below bottom on first it will execute the second step so index range scan it will execute this particular uh, index name and then the cost is one then only it will go for the table access by index row id then it will run the select statement on top of this only 11 record it is taking row id it is taking that means select star from this record so 32 records are there but the indexing it is making only 11 so it might be having some duplicate record so distinct salary if i'm going to take count of distinct salary so i'm going to select so 18 we have but it is making the the explain plan sorry uh, 11 records it's making and this is these many bytes see whatever it is taking the row id a row id given to the select statement and then it is selecting so this is what uh, you have to interpret and you can see this is going for the explain plan right so this way 
So if you want to go for a complex one, so what I'm going to do, select, start from departments two. This is another table I have. Okay, departments two. So what I'm going to do now, the employees table, departments table, I'm going to join it. Employees and departments, I'm doing the join, okay? So I'm just running that, it will give you the data. So here the department ID is the joining column. So I'm going for explain plan. So before that, I will clear this particular session. Explain plan for employees to departments to. I'm not. I'm not changing any data in the employees table. Just I want to do the employees two table. Okay. So I'm going to run this explain plan. It has been explained. So now if you go and check, you can find. So how this is running. So employees two table. If you see this, now this is going for nested loops. Okay, nested loops cast. You can see here how it is running. So very first time when we are going this zero, one, two, and three is parallel execution. You can see here parallel execution, right? So that means zero, one, zero, one, then two and three is parallel. So how Oracle will run, right? So this way it will run. This is second step. This is third step. While moving from top to bottom, you have to take but left hand side from left hand side. Okay. So first it will run second step. What is the second step? Table access full. So it will take all the data from its department's table. Okay. It is taking all the data from department's table and table access full, all the data from employee's table. Then it is going for the nested loop. So first step. So it is taking all the data here in the cache memory. It is taking all the data here. And then these two, it is going for the nested loops. Okay, based on the joining column, nested loops. Nested loop means small tables, it will go for the nested loops. So I will give you one document here. Go through this particular document, explain plan. You will find a different concept here. So cardinality is nothing but number of records in the queries. And we'll have the join method. So if you, G, if you see the join method, so what is the joining it is running? Okay, hash join. So a lot of hash, uh, this is the fastest method. The join method, you can see. Hash join means, hash joins are used for joining a large data set. See, whenever your, your query is running, so if it is going for the hash join, it will go for large data set. But still, if two tables are last data set, large data set, then it will go for hash join. What is meant by hash join? The optimizer. Optimizer means Oracle will run that query, right? That is optimizer. Uses the smaller of the two tables. So we are running employees table and departments table. Department is small table. And uh, normally that is what it will normally, even in informatica also, uh, informatica it will run in this way only, right? Smaller table, it will go into the cache memory. That's what master table will create a small table, right? Same way here also. Smaller of the two tables are data sources to build hash table based on the join key in the memory. Then scans the large table and performs this hash algorithm and it will produce the result. Got it? If you have two tables, so if you are having a big tables here, big tables, and you have the small tables, this small tables will be moved to the cache memory. So cache memory, then each record from here, it will be compared with all other records in the large tables. It will produce a result. This is the hash algorithm. Nested loop means both are small tables. Okay, so nested loop means, see, useful when small subset of data are being joined. If there is a efficiency way, of accessing the table. So for every row in the first table, 
will be compared with second row and then it will produce the result of the for loops each and every record that's what it will go for the nested loops so it is taking data from these two tables and it is doing the nested loops each and every record has been compared and then it is producing the result select statement okay so what we are we can how can we implement some tuning method for this particular query so different method is there one of the method is indexing right you can create an index so on that see we have the nested loops right after that sort and merge joins so whenever you are using any greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to any conditions if you are using that so first it will go for sorting algorithm then it will merge the data so that's what it will go for sort and merge joins so normally this is what it will do see here ja, so, sort join first it will use and then result will be merged see whenever this this is totally seven steps are there so you have to go from so first one okay one then you have to see very the parallel way do we have any step no one two three so three also there is no step four yes you see this three third step and fifth steps are common both are in same step play right so this two in branch and after that this one this one in same branch and inside the partition range all going for the full table scan so this one it is going for the full table scan that's what you have to interpret one by one we can check how it is producing the result okay but we are not going to do anything so oracle will take you see this i'm going to create an index on the department id column so normally you can create bitmap index but we do not have access here i will create normal index here so create index index name emp underscore dept underscore idx on employees to table the department id column same way departments to card departments to table i'm going to create one more indexing okay departments to department id just i have created in one more index on this so now i'm going for the explain plan so before that we have seen different way right now we will see the different way so i will clear that i will run one more time explain plan so this time it will not go for full table scan so two table two table and i'm just running for explain plan it has been explained so now i will run this query see previously it was taking full table scan right so now it is going for see no normally no need to clear that uh, session but why i am clearing it it is giving you the previous uh, explain plan result that's why i'm just clearing is not automatically clear in my system okay see here it is going for this way so six steps are there totally so how can we interpret first say two tables employees to this table so first we will go for zero select statement okay on the top we have zero so zero here what is this so this is the top select statement in the top then so how to interpret what is the meaning of this one then it is going for the nested loops do we have any branch on this no nested loops one so you can go for nested loops one with this step then it is going for second nested loops in the second and the fifth step are parallel right so you can see here both are in the same branch so second step and the step both are in parallel way it's running it is going for this one then you have to take these two 3 and 4 so 3 and 4 from second step right so 3 and 4 is running in parallel 
So now tell me which step will run first. So which step will run first? Can you tell me now? So always you have to go from, from bottom left to top. Bottom left to top. Okay, so always you have to go this way. So first you have to go with third step. Third step only it will run first. So which table it will take first? It will take departments table full table scan. So Oracle will first very first time while running this particular query, how it will run? So departments two table, it will go for full table scan. So that's the third step. Then it will take the fourth step. Fourth step is, it is going for the index range scan. Index, scan, uh, index range scan on employees department index. So employees in, uh, department index means, so it is taking this table and this table, right? So em employees department index. So in that way, first it is running third, then fourth. Uh, how you are able to identify if that is running parallelly? I mean, you are just making right uh, this step is running, so it's parallelly, but uh, I'm getting it out over there. So if you see this, first it will run the first zeroth step, okay? That is select statement. So do we have any parallel step here? No, right? There is no parallel step. Then it will run this one. Right? First step. So do we have any step here? Any parallel step for this? No. No, right? And then the step. Do we have any parallel step for this? Yes. Second yes. and five is parallel, right? Yes. So it will run. So that's why I have put two and five in parallel. Then third and fourth. So if you take third and fourth, okay. See, sorry, three and four. So three and four is parallel. First it will run the zero, zero step, zero here. Then it is going for the one. One is not in the same line, right? Is it in the same line, nested loops? Okay. Okay. No, that's why I'm making okay. like branch. Next line. Then nested loops, then one. So do we have any parallel line for this one? So this is what it will run. So from first you have to go. So from here it will it will run. So whenever you are going to interpret, you have to interpret from the bottom left to the top. Okay, to the top you have to go for. So you have to take third step and fourth step, and it has to take it from the second step. So these two second step it will run. First it will take the departments table, departments two table, and then it will go for the nested loop on the Employees to table with the range of indexing. So index range scan. Then the resultant will go to the first step, nested loop on the second step and fifth step. So what is that second step? So the resultant of these two, right, will be taken. And the fifth step is table access by index row ID. That means employees to table, it will go for again the index row ID and then it will go for the select statement at the top. So that's what it will interpret and it will produce a result. So when we are not going to do anything, as a developer, we are not going to do, but since you have created the index, you can check whether it has been improved the performance or not. Okay. See here, this, it is showing that where it is starting from. It is starting from index on the employees department IDX. So what is that employee department and IDX? So this index from the employees two table, right? So employees two table based on the department ID, it will create a range scan based on the row ID. Row ID means each and every record, it will go for the row ID. So how it is making the row number, the same way row ID will be there. So based on the row ID, it will go and check. So this is what it will go for the explain plan if you are creating indexing. So you can go for any other complex SQL also, complex SQL also, same way you have to interpret. 
any complex SQL. If you see this, this table, I'm going for the explain plan. So normally in my system, it is not uh, clearing the explain plan. So that's why I'm doing that explain plan clear. Just to run explain plan for three tables this time. So all the three tables, but I think on this table, there is no indexing. So how it is running, how the step, step you have to run. So first you take zero step. So even if you are not clear how it is running, check like this straight line. Do we have any parallel line for zero? No, right? So that means zero is running first. Zero step. This one only will run last. Okay. You have to go from bottom. So then you have to go for a step. First step you take. Do we have any parallel? No, there is no parallel, right? So you have to run. You have to put first here. From the first step, you can see two and six are straight line, right? Two and six are running in parallel. So that means you have to take and six, two and six. Then you have to take these two, three and four. So three and four from where you have to draw? From second, right? See th these two is running parallelly from the step, from second. So this is third step, this is fourth step. These two are parallel, okay? And then you have from fourth step to fifth step. From fourth step, you have the fifth. So first you have to run, first you have to take the fifth step. Clear on this? Now you are clear. So first it will run, fifth step only it will run. So department location index. So that's going for the department's locations index range scan it is running. Okay, after that you have to take the third table. The third step, table accessful. Yes, locations table it is taking. And fourth one is department's table it is taking both and it is going for the nested loop second step nested loop with this resultant the sixth step is employees table it's taking the employees table whatever the resultant we are getting that the employees table then it is going for the first step nested loops these two is comparing these small tables right then both are like, see first it is taking locations and departments only based on the index. Some index is created, some department, I think department ID we have created based on the index it is going for. What is nested loop? Nested loop joins are useful when small subset of data are being joined. So are we going to do nested loops? No, we are not going to do nested loops. Who will do? Oracle will do it. If small table, then it will go for nested loops. If it is a big table, then it will go for hash join. Okay, large data set, it will go for hash join. When it will go for sort and merge join, whenever you have any greater than, less than symbol. Okay, and then it will go for sort and merge join, it will go for. You can test it. You can use something like some left outer, right outer, all this join. Then you can see this merge join. Partition means it is making all the partition product. So when you have time just to go through this particular uh, document, you will get to know all this clearly. See cost, what is the cost? Oracle optimizer is a cost based optimizer. So whenever from Oracle 7, seventh version, before that we have the rule based optimizer after that we have the cost based optimizer from oracle 7 the execution plan okay so how see if you are going from india to usa so very first time you are going from india to usa okay very first time you are going so what will you do normally okay so what will you do so that's nothing the star is nothing but it's going for the the indexing so that's a leaf leaf notes last note so you are going from india to usa so you assume that 
very first time you are going with so direct there is no direct uh, from india also you are going from some locations so you are going from hyderabad or chennai this particular location you will be going for some transition ride so you can go for chennai to some locations mumbai or delhi then delhi to some other locations then so you'll be going with some gulf countries and then you are going to usa right so very first time you are moving from this way so you will be planning all this okay how can i go to this particular hotel okay second time you are moving second time you are moving so this is some other way transit you are making and then you are going with third time you are going so if you are running the same queries again and again oracle knows it how to execute it it will store the the optimizer will store the execution plan so what is the easiest method to execute right so if you are running from india to usa many times then you will know which flight is very cheapest way and which is the very uh, short timing okay it will take right so that you may know so why because you are getting multiple times you are running right that's way so that's what it is making the cost based optimizer i will tell you after what is the role of optimizer the optimizer selects the execution plan with the lowest cost okay so which is the lowest cost where the cost represents the estimated resource usage for that plan the lower the cost the more efficient right so input output i cpu network resources everything will be used so that's what the the lowest plan okay got it so you have to cardinality if you are seeing estimate of the number of rows coming out of each operations so that is the one thing and the access method is the access uh, the, uh, the different methods we have right so whether it is going for full table scan index access all this you are going with and join method is this join method is using join type is what is the join type is using the, this join type we will mention in the query and partitioning i will tell you okay so parallel execution all this you are able to see okay so number of records so all this it has been mentioned here so i will give you this particular document you go through this document you will you will get to know clearly how to interpret all this so you have to run always explain plan check whether how the explain plan is running from that you have to identify so whether it is going for full table scan so even it is going for the full table scan right so you have to optimize that don't go for full table scan still it is going for the full table scan so create some indexing on the department id column then go for it or create the partitioning so if you are creating the partitioning here department id and location id indexing all this it will not go for this much full table scan so first is six six step uh, it is what the prediction okay you are star here right star here is nothing but this is what it will display here so what is that so access d dot location id equal to l dot location id this is the least step right then it will go for department id equal to department id filter access it is doing star is mean, meaning meaning has been explained in the below so what is operate operations id so id number operations name of the operations how many rows is returning cardinality and cost and how much time it is taking so all this you can able to find so this is nothing but your explain plan you can select from this table also select star from plan table okay explain plan for you have to put the always select sorry select statement how the select statement is running so do the collect stats and then check how the partitioning sorry explain plan is running working then you can find okay it's uh, running fastly then you can use hints optimizer all this see optimizer we have two based two optimizer one is rule based optimizer another one is cost based optimizer nowadays we are using only cost based optimizer is nothing but we are the user okay you assume that we are the user we are running sql query we are running just one sql query that's in that this is the first one you are just executing one sql statement select star any any execute joins or something you are executing first the step is parser so what is parser will do this select statement is our understanding is for our understanding but how in computer will execute this computer will go for parsing engine will convert this one into zeros and ones machine executable language 
so that only it will convert okay then optimizer optimizer will check whether this query has been whether this query has the plan execution plan previously execution plan or not it will check so it will go for cost based optimization that means it will check in the dictionary okay so if you are running any query how to execute that whether we have yes see you are running from you are you are moving from india to usa very first time do will have do you have any dictionary any reference or something no you will not have it very first time you have to go after that you will get some experiences right so that experiences is nothing but see in our memory we will store it in our in our brain we will store it but how a computer will store computer will store it in the dictionary tables as a statistics then the optimizer will check whether it has been executed already cost based optimizer will check this execution plan already exist or not it will give you the query plan to the row row source generator then it will execute the execution scale execution will be happening it will give you the result so normally this is what it will execute the optimizer will execute each and every statement in that way only so from oracle 7 you have to use Uh, the oracle will use cost based optimization only not rule based optimization so this way it will not use it will go for cost based optimization is nothing but already execution plan will be stored okay how many tables are there two two three tables so you are running same reporting queries multiple times very first time only very first time if you are running a report query then it will take much time then it will go on create see say for an example in the in the mobile also you'll be hashing some you are you'll be seeing some hash file right hash file so what is that file see whenever you are accessing that particular folder or something very first time then it will make some indexing so with that it will next time it will give you the each and every result very quickly right as any picture or anything the same way here also it will be doing so that's what the optimizer hints will do see the you can use hints to specify the following see normally you'll be seeing this kind of uh, this kind of hints in the real time project slash something like 32 bit 64 all rows something you are using so it is informing so lot of uh, hints is available cost based approach so you can inform them okay inform oracle that so how to execute this particular query then based on that it will execute so normally we used to put something like star 64 that means you are running parallelism parallel you are running parallel hints this is called parallel hints you are running the same query in a parallel way instead of for running this entire query as in a single pipeline you can go for parallel pipeline then you can use uh, execute this particular query very quickly so just you have to mention but not all the queries if you are using all the queries right then it will take lot of uh, time see this parallel hints so parallel hr five parallelism you are running then it will split this table into five parallel full table into five parallel then it will make uh, very quickly so this is a 10 first 10 rows only the selecting so use exist keyword instead of in keyword that's a normal we will use okay so these are all the methods to use uh, some performance tuning but still we have some methods the the best method is partitioning most widely used method is partitioning in real time project whenever you are going for any fact tables lot of fact tables will be there right in the in the environments so definitely you can go and check some describe table you can put and you can see partitioning will be there in the table we will continue with partitioning see partitioning only it's very very important uh, in the real time project if you are going for any tables so definitely it will be partitioned so what is partitioning so if you are if you are having big tables so you are having big tables huge volume of tables then if you are using select statement select star from the table name if you are not using any partitioning even you can use indexing that's fine but you are not using any partitioning it will go and check all the record all the record one by one all the record but we can create a partitioning so how see you are going to split this table into multiple partitions 
you are going to one mobile shop you assume that one mobile shop you are going with mobile shop you are going in front of you all the mobiles they are placing here you are asking some some particular brand some samsung brand or a, so i mobile you are asking some some brand you are asking okay or redmi or something you are asking if all the mobiles are kept in this way we are asking particular mobile the showroom person need to check with all the mobiles right so one by one need to check all this instead he has partitioned see definitely it will be partitioned all the stationery and everywhere it will be partitioned they are asking some some iphone or something directly they will go to this particular rack even inside that will be having lot of partitions correct so you'll be having inside that also you'll be having a partitions yes you can go for indexing all this so iphone what is the model you are asking okay this model will be available here this model yes you are going for some other brand samsung yes you'll go for samsung lot of models are there each model will go for one more partitions so this is the way if you have partitioned are you going to check all other remaining partition are you going to check no you will not check it so why because since you know this var class i i need something like that if you are using var class you are seeing you are showing that okay i want this particular brand if you are not telling this var class so what the cust- this particular showroom person will do they will they will go to one partition they will ask they will show you okay you want these mobiles you want these mobiles you want these mobiles you want these mobiles something like that right so they will ask some questions based on that they will go for this way so that the same thing in partition also will happen so partition is nothing but in an oracle database partitioning enables you to decompose very large table in very large tables and indexes into a smaller and more manageable pieces called partitions each partition is an independent object that's a main important okay so independent object so each and every partitions will be treated as independent object with its own name say for an example this name is table name space partition name so in oracle we can say it's a partition p1 so to find information on the partition you can query this select star from all tab partitions in oracle use this particular table all tab partitions so here we do not have that we cannot create the partitions since it is not enterprise editions so all tab partition is nothing but it's a metadata table in this table you can use var owner equal to hr and table name equal to this table name you can find all the partitions okay so what are the different partitions we use are there so normally when to partition a table so when should i go for partition simply all the table can i go for partitions no if the table size is more than 2 gb okay if the table size is more than 2 gb then go for partitions how do i know whether this table is more than 2 gb we have metadata queries so based on the database you can find see if you if you are going for real time project most of the fact tables and real time projects are in terms of terabytes do we need to do partitioning yes most of the dimension table will not have in the particular range 2 gb we will not have it but most of the fact tables in real time project in terms of tb you will have all the data so that we have to do tables which contains historical data yes of course the tables contains historical data sre type 2 tables even dimension table also if it has more historical data so definitely will have more than 2 gb so that particular table you need to go for partitions okay so you have to add it into the new partitions okay so when contents of the table needs to be distributed in a different storage devices so that's what this is one device so the storage device also you can go with partition one is there in one particular device partition two on the same table is there in different devices 
so that is also fine but oracle knows it where the data has been stored when table performance is weak then you can go for the partitions okay so whenever you have the huge volume of tables then go for partitions see normally in real time project so transaction tables sales table invoice table order table so these tables will have any historical table you need to have a partitions two things you have to remember whenever you are going for a partitions the first thing is partition key okay which column i'm go i need to go go and do the partitioning okay which column i have to do the partitioning so if you have employees table based on the table you can select okay which column i can go for the partitioning first one is partition key okay which column you are going to create a partitions set of one or more columns can i create partitions on more columns yes you can create set of one or more columns that determines the partitions in which each row in a partition table should go each row is ambiguously assigned to a single partitions yes so it will go and each partitions okay it will go and each partitions then we have the partitioning strategy so this is the one so you can go for single level partition or composite partitioning what is single level partitioning this is single level partitioning okay this is single level partition composite means so this is composite partitioning inside partition you will be having another partitions so that is composite partitions okay these concept are common between even even you have in the hive tables you will be having buckets right partitioning and bucketing same way here also see types of partitions in oracle we have four types of partitions how many partitions are there in oracle four partitions are there one is range partition list partition hash partition composite partition composite partition means you can combine any of the partitions like range and list list and hash hash and range so you can combine and then you can create a partitioning so that is a composite partitioning okay composite partitioning is the partitioning strategy range partition see range partition it's similar to informatica so if you know the definite range so you are going to use say for an example employee table you have a salary range yes you can create a salary range partitioning one is range partitioning what is the range partitioning range partitioning means you are using some definite range okay 5000 to 10000 that is one range 10000 to 15000 is another range 5 5000 i am making okay 15000 so this is range and if you if you go to fact tables mostly in real time project most of the fact tables are range partition with a date column so whenever you have a date column like created time stamp updated time stamp created month updated month something date range partition we have so we created at some month we will use each and every month we will put it in one partition or if you have more volume data each and every date we will put it in one partition so you have to mention that the interval is one day so you have to mention interval so what is that interval so if you know the definite range you can put range you can define the partition 1 partition 2 partition 3 then you have defined okay say for an example today you know the range 0 to 5000 one partition p1 5000 to 10000 p2 10000 to 15000 p3 that is what you know as of now but after that you have to mention every 5000 is the range you have to mention interval 5000 then see up to p1 p2 p3 we have given the name right after that system itself it will assign some name sys underscore some name it will assign i am just mentioning that p4 so interval 5000 range of values then system will assign it some ranges so this is what it will go for the types of partitions you can see here there are three different types one is list partition range partition hash partitioning so what is list partitioning we have to define the list list of values you are mentioning p1 
okay p1 you are mentioning that values east sales regions so that's you are mentioning that list of values new york virginia and florida these two you are mentioning in the partitioning one so when to when to use this partitioning while creating the table okay so create table you have to mention the partitioning so like p2 if any values you are inserting where central where region equal to some data you are making this range this value so you are inserting so insert into table name you are inserting sales region equal to texas where which partition it will go and store this particular record will go and store in the third partition okay if you are using any other regions like you are using some new york regions it will go to first you are selecting select star from the table name where some region equal to east sales regions we are mentioning that so oracle will not go and search these two table these two object it will not go and search it will go and search only this particular partitioning so inside that also you can go for one more partition that is range partition also you can go with so that is composite partition see range partition so january and february always month you are going with so that is one partition march and april may and june so two months you are selecting that's what you can restrict the data so directly it will go to this particular partitions when hash hash means we are not going to define just column names you will define it hash algorithm it will generate you know hash key right some 32 bit hash key will generate so based on that it will go on to put it in one particular partitions which column we want to define the hash that column if the data is changing in that column the partition will get changed what what is composite partitioning you are going for composite partitioning here range and list partitioning the right hand side if you see this you're going with the range and composite partitioning both you are using range partition and list partition so that means this is this the list partition so within this reach uh, sorry list it will select okay if i have any data for this particular range if i have data based on the january and february it will store here that means narrowing down narrowing down one more time right as i told if i have the rack here we are going for iphone only inside the iphone you are making more racks here you are defining each model here so in iphone you are asking some particular model in iphone also i need no need to check these models right these models no need to check you can directly go to this particular model you can define that's a way you can see here so this is a list in this way we have the range okay range the range and list both then here we have range and hash both so inside one range so january and february you have hash 1 hash 2 hash 3 hash 4 in that way so take this particular table sales table okay if you see this sales table you have some product ids customer id time id some time the sales is happening so you can see 98 2000 2001 98 99 all this data is happening some channel id we have some repeated values are there channel id right repeated value so you can go for then some promo id so if you see promo id also we have some duplicate record so you can go for promo id and list partition right and channel id also list partitioning and this time id you can go for range partitioning okay you can put some ranges and quantity sold amount sold and all these are all the data will store if you see here i am creating the range partitioning range partitioning time id as the range how can i create it normally you will create create table table name all the column you will mention close it normally this is what you will open and close it right we will put semicolon here but instead of making the semicolon here we will make partition by range so this is the keyword partition by range is the keyword so which partition strategy you are going for and which is the partition key see this time id is the partition key 
so based on the time id range of values it will create a partition okay how many partition i'm creating as of now four partitions what is that so less than 1998 sorry 1999 that means up to 1998 we're going for one partition then less than 2000 less than 2000 is one partition less than 2001 so that means each year we are going for one partition and other partitions all the partitions we are going for maximum value see one disadvantage this one this query so what could be the disadvantage in this query sales 98 so you can see here all the 98 you are loading into one particular partitions whenever you are inserting the data it will go to this partitions whenever you are inserting any data on the 1999 will go for second partitions 2000 will go for third partition any other data it will go for this partition but one advantage here it is so if you have more va values for this particular uh, more than 2001 if you have any values then all this will go to one particular partition that is what we will call it as skewness right skewness so the table will be skewed one partition will have more data so we should not go for this one so we will have one method called interval here okay so what is interval you have to mention the interval here so how much is the interval so interval is so here it is a 10000 10, not 1000 it's 10000 see here partition 1 will go to up to 10000 it will go to partition that means what is the partition key here which one is partition key so partition key is salary here right so you can see the salary here so what is the partition how many number of partition we have created four number of partition but this partitioning is dynamic partition why if in future if you are getting any values something like 60000 okay 60000 65000 or anything so automatically it will go to the particular partition how we are making this interval so this keyword you have to use okay so use this keyword to dynamically create the partitions so who will create oracle will create so make sure that you are using that keyword called interval okay the other one is enable row movement see this is very very important so what is enable row movement whenever you are using any partitions use this enable row movement at the end so that means so today you have some data you have some data so salary is less than ten thousand dollar so eight thousand you are using so which partition will be there very first time it will be there in the e1 partition okay but you are updating this particular record sometime later this particular record you are updating see if you haven't enabled enable row movement what will happen if you are updating this particular salary from 8000 to some 21000 you are updating you assume that that particular record you are getting updated if you don't mention this enable row movement still this particular record will be there in the p1 that means wrongly it is there in the p1 partition where it should be there it should be available in p3 right so p2 is 11,000 to 20,000 up to here it will be so 21,000 should be there here so whenever you are updating any record if it should move to the other partition okay then you have to mention enable row movement clear see you go and check in oracle table so these two should be there definitely these two should be there see first one is partition by which partition we are selecting partition by range yes it is a range of values right yes which column partition key then what is the interval we are using interval is 10000 enable row movement means whenever the dead card is dml operation you are doing that automatically it will be moved to the other partitions got it so you want to select only p1 partition data then you can select this way select star from the table name where sorry no need to use where class select star from the table name partition p1 
if you know the directly where how the data has been stored you can select this way partition p1 but if you are selecting select start from the table name where where salary less than 10000 which partition will go and check 10000 it will go and check in the p1 only whether it will go and do the all other partition no it will not go and check so what is that interval what is the enable row movement so how to select partition key and partition strategy are you clear now okay you can see here see you are doing the collect stats you have to run this particular statement if you want to run the collect stats on the employees table okay you have to run this this particular statement so execute this is plsql statement you are running that dbms stats gather table stats schema name table name just you run it in the real time project also see before collect stats it is showing that same table you can see here p1 p2 p3 p4 four partition we have last analyzed is null number of rows also each partition don't know and blocks also don't know and sample size also don't know but high value is mentioning like here thousand so thousand two thousand three thousand four thousand six thousand see these values are there so can you identify what is this how it is created system underscore p7 741 see we have created partition one partition two partition three and partition four but this partition it automatically created by the keyword called interval if you haven't used keyword called interval this record will not go to this partition it will go to the p4 only so remember this that's what i have to uh, mention here and if you are refreshing the statistics so from here you are seeing that okay last analyzed on this particular date so number of blocks and total number the blocks uh, the number of blocks and total number of blocks and sample size so that means how many records are there in each uh, particular blocks and you are seeing the high value of the particular blocks okay collect stats so you can run the collect stats the metadata tables will get collected so this is what the collect stats you have to run so whenever why we are running the collect stats after doing the dml operation on the table dml operations on the table if you do the collect stats oracle knows it where the data has been stored so you remember in our in informatica also i have explained that so we can do the collect stats on the source table we can do the collect stats on the target table after inserting the record why we have to do the collect stats so if you do the collect stats the the analysis will be done on the table got it the analysis will be done on the table then oracle will go and first see the st statistics it knows the values if you are selecting some value select star from it will go and check the statistics from here it knows which partition the data has been present from that partition it will select the data so this and all you have to do that scheduling you have to schedule it collect stats on the table in the last statement you will put some collect stats any dml operations even in the real time project if it is informatica in informatica power center we will put this particular statement at the post sql so post sql if you put this right after data getting loaded it will do the collect stats on the particular table okay so you can see here list partitioning list partitioning we are going with channel id some list of values right so 2 and 4 is one particular partitioning 3 and 9 is the different partitioning p2 odd number even number something like that we are making so 2 and 4 channel ids are into one particular partitioning and this one another partitioning if you are getting any other values so that means it will not go to any partition okay it is go to default partition and then if you have more values then it will go for skewness so don't get into this particular one you put some interval so interval of values so that it will go to so but you know definite range here definite list if you know country id is some list of values then you can go for list partition hash partition means based on the product id you are selecting the hashing so it will generate some hash value which partition should go for 
then it will go for some partitioning see this partitioning automatically it is selecting p33 p34 yeah hi hi chandra so mm -hmm. for this has has partitioning so you said the production id yeah so uh, to select this uh, id it should you have the for example um, it is not a primary key yeah something so this is a something id uh, only few it has a low cardinality things yeah for this one to select the partitioning yeah yeah correct see based on the product id it will go and generate some hash value okay so now no need to put only one id here you can put two to three ids also okay if you see this i will explain i will give you this particular document yeah yeah so this is what uh, composite partitioning i will explain composite means you have to put two or three more partitioning in the uh, particular queries okay so this is create table employees number you are putting that enable row movement and you are making that this is a range partitioning okay then list partitioning list of values you know while creating mm -hmm. the table create table table name column names partitioning partition p1 you are making some chennai okay so whoever is city equal to chennai in the employee then it will move to partition 1 partition 2 partition 3 any other cities is coming with it will go for the default partitioning so that's we we may think that okay these three cities only we are getting a lot of values then we are splitting the data into multiple partition four partition hash partitioning here we are selecting the hash algorithm on the employee number partitions five so five partitions we are creating based on the employee number okay so these many partitions will be created so any any column you can select no issues even you can go for com, some two or three columns also you can select. So based on the values, it will select. But what is composite partitioning? Composite means combination of two data distribution methods. Okay. So one is uh, you can go for uh, this particular partition. So range and hash, range and list, range and range. So any partition, any two partition you can select in one particular query itself. Okay. So from the 10, 10 G only it is uh, created and I, I couldn't be able to show you here. So actually to create this table. So why? Because uh, we need to have a uh, enterprise edition. License. Yeah, I, I got that part also. For, okay, the, for other example, like so if I have a, uh, like the millions of record for the, the person ID is the primary key, then I can, uh, can I able to choose their primary key that is the person ID as a has partition key because it will create a millions of uh, uh, partition yeah no 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 it will not go for millions it knows where the range of values should go for in that range only it will select so you are selecting how many partition two partitions only were selecting right it will generate okay. one hash so, value so based on the hash oh. value it will put so do you mean that if I choose the partition by two, then it will only create two partition and they yes. just make the half, half of this to uh, yes. make half table. Yes, okay. correct. Okay. If same product okay. ID is coming, it will go to the same partition. If different product ID is coming, it will go for something different. Okay. Something like odd number, even number in that oh, yeah, way, also it will number. select. So, yeah, odd even but number. it will generate, it will generate hash value. System will generate a hash value. We are not going to generate hash value. Okay. Yeah, that I know. Yeah. Okay. But, so, but we, we have to define that. How many number of partition you want? Okay. I want to go for 10 partitions. Yes. See, employee ID, you have 1 million employee ID you have. Okay. 10 partitions mm -hmm. only were creating. So each partition, 1 lakh record it will go for. So it will automatically it will be partition. But we do not know which partition the data has been stored. So Oracle knows it. Where the data has been stored. That's what you have to do the collect stats. It knows it where the data is present. So, Sandra, another one question. So, while I create the, for example, uh, if I uh, create the table, then if I mention the partition, then okay, that will optimize the performance. For example, if I have a uh, legacy table, the history table. So, um, I, because uh, before I did not create any partition, but I have a table. So to improve the performance, to do the uh, improve the performance tuning for that uh, table. So 
we have an option to create again the partition for that table again or um, or we need to go yes, for sir. the other so you, you we will normally call it as a rebuild of the table the table oh. rebuild so you have to rebuild the table and one other thing chandra sorry i asked a lot um, yeah, yeah, no so, issues, so for the performance tuning yeah, so i have i got before one question you can go by the table of table level or query level because uh, we can uh, for most of the case we define bit for the query level yeah uh, i think yeah uh, so uh, okay table level we can do it also yeah maybe uh, what i had to try to say so um, we need to do the performance what are the difference between the performance tuning between table level and query level uh, i faced one question before um, yeah query level means whatever you are sell you are running the select query right Mm -hmm. So that select statement, you are go doing some uh, uh, some tuning. Okay, so what I told, instead of selecting all the columns, you are selecting only particular columns, right? Then you are doing mm -hmm. that uh, where class, you are filtering the record. Then you are using some temp tables. While selecting multiple table join, so 10 tables you are joining it. Don't go for 10 table join. You do five tables, first five tables, do it in one temporary table. Another five tables, do it in one temporary table, then do the joins of these two temporary table. Um, one example I'm saying, but not five tables. You can go with two tables, three tables also. So you create the temporary tables, you join it, then you go for it. These are all the query level tuning, whatever I told here before. But this is yeah. table level. While storing okay. the data itself, we are part we are doing the performance tuning. Okay. So that's what table level. See, whatever here I have explained all query level. Okay, first one I have explained, right? So these are all the yes, query yes. level tuning. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I got you. I got you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are selecting some large table, right? You are selecting some large table. So don't select mm -hmm. like this. Select star from the table name. Now, normally, we should not select in the real-time project. Sometimes yeah, yeah. if you are selecting this, this entire table, uh, entire uh, table will get hanged. Your, your session also will get hanged. Normally in uh, real time project, uh, you will not be allowed to use allowed to use select star from the table name, right? So always you have to use some row number. If it is Oracle table, use some row number where row number less than or equal to some five. So you will restrict the data. So if it is Terra data, That's some right. sample five. So if it is uh, yeah, some right. other tables, you will be using limit, right? So you'll be using limit statement to limit the records. Just li limit five uh, to limit it. Then you can. You can see that how the data is being stored. And even you can put some where class here. Even sometimes you are going for some very big table. You are using created months. Okay. Created at months. So I'm using created at month. Something like that, it will be there. So 02 2023 or 03, something like that. Okay. So you are going to select some data. In the 0 to 2003 in this particular partition range, but in that range also you are selecting only five records. So why? Because in this range also, this is month level, right? So entire month, how many transactions will be happen on the flat tables? We'll be having huge volume of data. So even if it is a redshift and any databases, it will hit it hanged. So don't do that. You use limit five, and even you can use where class also. You can put where class where created at date. So even you will have. So one more. And so that's what you have to restrict the data. So create, created at date. You'll be having some date. Okay. So for an example, 12, 02, 2023. See why directly you should not use uh, created at date. See first it will go to this particular partition. Okay, this is top level partition. Inside that, it will go and select only one date. Then you are selecting only five records. So this will quickly give you the right data. So this way, you can uh, you can improve the performance. Sorry, you can uh, restrict the data in the select statement. This is what you have to do the select in the real time project. Okay, so always don't select as select star from the table name. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, what is parallel hint? Uh, like we yeah. so you'll be using uh, you'll be using some parallel here. Okay, some slash 
Uh, the thing is here, I cannot show you. That's a uh, one thing. And you'll be using something like uh, some parallel 32 you are using this way. So this way you'll be running some queries. Okay. That means while running this query, it will parallelly it will execute this particular query. So the optimizer will give you some uh, data parallelly. It will split up the range. Go and select the data, right? It will select parallelly parallel some 12 threads is running in the back end. It will up, it will allocate more resources to this particular queries parallelly, and then it will more thread is running. So that's what it will run very quickly. Parallel threads. So 32 means it will create 32 threads. Yeah. Parallel processing. So how will we know how, how much we can give like 32 or 16? No, no, no. Normally we will not give 32 and all, not for all the queries. Simply we will, we have to select if the query is not performing well, then we will put like this. Then it will, we will check, okay, whether it, the query is running or not. So that's the way you can, you can do uh, parallel 32 something. So you'll be using this way. See here. So select slash parallel table name degree of parallelism. We are selecting eight parallel um, degree of parallelism. Means here eight different process with open to run the select statement fast. Got it. Here we are using select eight part eight parallelism. This way you have to use employee ID. Uh, it will select say for an example employee ID hundred to 200 you have. So in that, it will select eight parallel things, eight parallel, sorry, eight parallel uh, processing. It will select clear. See, instead of one, how many parallelism is running? Three parallelism running, right? So this is what parallel enable hint slash star parallel index employee employee ID eight they are using where department ID equal to this one. So it will allocate this much uh, parallel processing. Got it. So you can go for parallel 62, parallel 32, parallel 16, all this. Whatever you are seeing, anything in the select statement, the real time project, right? In the real time project, if you are going with anything in the query itself, they have mentioned slash star and star slash, it is a parallelism, parallel hint they are using. Okay. Okay. So don't and think that it, this is like a commented out. So don't sometimes what we will we will assume that okay this is has been commented out right. So we will think that it has been commented out. This will not work. Not in that meaning. It is called parallel hint. Okay. Somebody used this way. That means they have used some parallel hint. Normally we will think okay this is nothing but something like that commented out. No, it is not commented out. It is using the parallel hint. Eight parallel processing. It will be running in the back end. It will select this particular table. So, so any other questions? Sandra, yeah, one last one last question. So, for example, in the real time, so if I saw the tables, correct. So, if I just saw the table, then uh, uh, so how to check that uh, how this table is performing doing by performance doing like for example. Uh, so, uh, do I need to do the how to do the research like instead for uh, for to check the performance tuning for the one table? Uh, so do yeah, do the do, select, do, do the do the explain plan. Explain plan. Do the explain plan and then check whether this table has been partitioned or not. The explain mm -hmm. plan only you have to do. Okay, okay. so you can go for okay. select star from the table name. What is the query you are going to use? So that's what you can perform. Uh, you can go for the performance tuning, right? You have to use always select uh, explain plan only. So, for example, everything the table first created in the dev environment, and then uh, later once before put in the production environment. So they want to scan the table. Okay, what is the? <clears throat> it is it is make some performance something lag later or not? So those kind of thing uh, need to be checked before food in the production. So, so for yeah, that yeah, one, that's, that's to... why you have to put always partitioning. 
see if it is big tables and all you are going to use some fact tables mm -hmm. anything just to create the tables with partition okay for the to fact go for always uh -huh. fact table we are problem. always go and check fact table it will be a range partitioning definitely right, range right. partitioning will be there so inside uh -huh. the range one more composite partition will be there if you go and check two level two levels of partition should be there definitely you can go and describe the table okay and the describe table itself it will show you the how many partitions are there uh, what right. is the partition column if it is something like aws redshift and all you can clearly in the below also if you do the describing it will show you that uh, uh, teradata also it will show you how this tables has been uh, created all this it will show you so even Same if it is point. oracle yeah if it is oracle so how i explained you have to put all underscore tab underscore partitions it will give you that information. The same thing for do for the dim table too, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. And and when you chose partition by employee ID, and if you don't give number of partitions, then it will create only one partition. Uh, which party? Which partitions? Uh, which type of partitions? Like partition by uh, mm -hmm. employee ID column name we if we give. Partition by which partition type? That's what we have to mention, right? Which partition? Partition by? Uh, maybe uh, I don't remember. Like you said, column name. So column. No, name no, no. Column I... name is partition key. Which partition type we have to go for? Three partitions are there, right? See, always we have to mention partition by range, partition by list, partition by hash. Right, you have to mention that way. So you want to go for okay. hash partitions? Okay, hash partitions means uh, we have to provide number of partitions. No need, right? We have to we have to provide number of partitions. See, partition by the type of partition. Which type of partition we want to go for? Then inside we have to mention the partition key. Then how many number of partition we have to go for? So. For an example, here we are creating five partitions. Mm -hmm. You assume that. Five partitions means based on the employee ID. So it will so it will create. Okay. So you are going for employee ID from 100 to 1000. Or yes, 100 to 2000. There are uh, some 100 values are there in between. Okay. 100 values are there. How many partitions you are creating? Five partitions. So that means 100 to 110 or 100 to 120, it will go for one partition. See, I'm saying my, up to my knowledge, I'm 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 dividing that particular employee ID with 100 to 120. But Oracle knows it based on the hash value. So hash of employee ID, it will make one value. Some unique number will get generated hash value. With that hash value, it will put it in the partition. Okay, these hash values will go to one particular partition. This hash value will go to one particular partition. This hash value should go to another partition. In that way, it will create. So it will take the beginning value and end value, and then it make hash value and divides into five partitions. Right, correct. It will split the partition into five. Then it will generate hash value. Oracle knows it. Where should I go, go and place this particular value?
Hi everyone, welcome to Nikkei IT Academy. In our today's session, we are going to learn about how to install Oracle 21C with HR Schema Import. So this is a single video to have all the setup. So kindly follow and you can able to install it. These are all the steps we have to follow for the complete installation. First step, download the software which I have given in the description link. And extract the software by using WinRAR or WinZip. Third step, install Oracle 21C database. Once installed, we can configure the SQL developer and import HR schema. I have given all the queries and commands in the description. So just copy it and follow it. So watch the session till the end. You can be able to install completely Oracle 21C without any issues. If you haven't subscribed our channel, please subscribe the channel and click on bell icon so that you'll be getting all the notifications. So without wasting your time, let us begin our installation. Thank you. Welcome to the session. Oracle has different editions. We have enterprise editions, which is a commercial use. And we have the standard edition. This is also we will use in commercial environment. And this express edition, we will use it for academic version. It's a lightweight version. So all the features are available here also. We can go ahead with this express edition. So 21C is the latest version. C is nothing but it's a cloud-based computing and cloud-based database. So first, you will download the software in the description. Go to description, I have given the link. Download this 21C Express Edition. And if after downloading, you'll be seeing these folders. So first, the Oracle Express Edition 64-bit version is available. It's 1.83 GB. So you can right-click. And you can if you have WinRAR in your machine, so just unzip it. So you extract to the last option you can give. It will get extracted. Okay, so just we will extract the Oracle software. Double click on this. So if you see here inside, you'll be seeing the setup file. So you can double click on the setup file. This is an application file. You'll be getting yes or no. Click yes here, and then it will start installing the software. Okay, it will prepare to install. So you'll be getting this particular wizard. So Oracle Database 21C Express Edition. So click on next here. You have to accept the policy. So click on I accept, go to next. Click on next here. So it will get installed here. No need to change anything here. Just to click on next. So it will ask username and password. So if you look at here, this password will be used for sys, system and PDB admin. Okay, these accounts. So we have to enter the password. I'm just entering the password as admin, A-D-M-I-N all in lower case and confirm password also you can enter the same and click on next it will get installed so it will start installing it it will take several minutes okay if you look at here this may take several minutes maybe 15 to 20 minutes or even half an hour it will take so we will wait for that to complete then we will continue so it will take some time. It's based on your system speed and your system configuration. It may take 20 to 30 minutes also. Okay, after installation, you will be seeing this particular page. You can take the screenshot of this particular installation. So if you check here, it is a pluggable database. You have the local host. The host name is local host. Port number will be 1521 and the connection string is XEPDB1. So this is the one we have to make sure that connection string, okay? After giving here, just click on finish. It will get finished. So we have completed one step here. We have just completed installation of the Oracle Express Edition. So once we have installed, we can go to this SQL developer. So I have given link for the SQL developer also. You can you can download this SQL developer. You can right click. So you can extract this SQL developer. So make sure that you have WinRAR in your system. If it is WinRAR, it will extract very correctly. So if you do not have WinRAR, 
you can download and install WinRAR. So it has been unzipped now. So you can see here. So this is what the unzipped file. Double click. Go to SQL Developer. So you can see this application file. So SQL Developer is an application. Okay. So what is this? So I will tell you the setup so that you will get clear idea. So if you ask Oracle 21C, this is the database. Okay. This is the database. You can see here. So this is Oracle 21C. So we have Oracle 21C here and the Express Edition. The edition is Express Edition. So the database, we can have multiple schemas in the database. Okay, we can have the multiple schemas in the database. For an example, I'm going to split up this into multiple schemas. So already system schema we have, okay, the admin schema, system admin, and then we, we can import any other schema. So if you want to create the user schema, you can create it. So logical division of our database. So it's a logical division only. So this is our system schema. So system admin, you can say it's a system underscore admin. The username will be system. Okay. The password is nothing but which we have given admin, which we have given while installing the software. The username will be sys or system. The password will be the admin. Okay. So this is what the username and password. We can import any other schema. So what we are going to do after configuring this system, we for the practicing or in order to practice our SQL, we are going to import this HR schema. So in our previous versions, we will have by default, we will have the HR schema, but in our 21C, we do not have HR schema by default. We have to import it. I will tell you how to import it so that you can follow the same steps. You can import it. HR schema tables and you can create any other schema on the right hand side so you can create a test schema development schema or any schema okay or core schema so whatever you want to create you can create it okay this is our own schema so this also we will import it so this is the database right then what is sql developer so sql developer is an application it's a gui graphical user interface by using this sql developer it's a front end tool if i want to query this database then I have to use the tool called SQL Developer. Okay, so this is the tool. The front end, we have the tool called SQL Developer. You heard about this Toad for Oracle, right? So anything you can use it. So we have the Toad for Oracle. We have the SQL Developer for Oracle. So we, here we have the Toad for Oracle. So whatever the front end tool you are using, the back end, we have the database. Okay. We can use any front end tool, not an issue. But the underlying database, only one database. Okay, we have the system admin, the user, and we can connect to HR schema. We can connect to dev schema. Any schema, if you want to connect it, you can connect. And then you can query what data is available in the database. Okay, so Oracle is a database to store the data, and SQL Developer is an application. It's an application to see what data is available in the database. And SQL is nothing but it's a language to query this database. Okay, so let us open this SQL developer and then from SQL developer, we will connect this underlying database and then we will import the HR schema. Okay, very first time it may ask yes or no, give no here. And then this is what you can see here. Okay, so Oracle database express edition. So this is the database connection. So click on this plus symbol. So what is this plus symbol, right? We are creating the connection from SQL developer to underlying database, which we have already installed. So this is what, so what is the name? Name, you can give any name. So I'm just giving system, okay? System or system admin, anything you can give. The username will be system, okay? The username will be system. The password, which we have given while installing, we have given as admin, you can give admin. Host name will be local host, port number will be 1521. And service name, you can choose. What is the service name we have chosen, right? So here you could, you could see the service name is XEPDB1. So XEPDB1. So this, this you have to give. If you are giving only XE, you will get error. So just to click on test. So from this SQL developer, the underlying database, it will ping. Okay, from SQL developer, it will start pinging this underlying database. It, it will establish the connection. Okay, this connection will be established. And you can see here, this has been success. Okay, this has been success now. Then 
click on connect. So if you want to save the password, you can click the save password and uh, you can save it. So click on connect, it will be connected. So here in the right hand side, it will open workspace. So this is what the workspace, okay? This is what the workspace, you can see. So what are the different, uh, so you can query here, select star from all underscore tables. You can query, so what different tables are available, what different users are available. You may not have any users like HR users, okay? A lot of tables will be available. This is admin schema, you are, we are querying it. This is admin schema, we are querying it. So you can see all underscore table, all underscore users. So that you can check it here. Just to control enter, it will be executed, you can see. So we do not have any HR schema here. So we can make ascending order. So you can see there is no HR schema, right? So there is no HR schema. So what we have to do, we have installed Oracle 21C. This is what we have to install it. So here itself, we can create a tables, but it is not advisable to create the tables here in the admin schema, okay? We will import the HR schema tables. What is the HR schema tables? We do have seven tables, predefined tables. We are going to import it. For an example, we have the tables called, we have the tables called employees. So we have the departments table. We have the locations table. Like this, we have seven tables. So how to import it? So we have the dump here. I have given the HR schema dump. So you can extract, okay, you can extract it. So it will be get extracted. So this is what you will be having the human resource schema. So copy this particular folder. So copy this particular folder, go to C drive. So you'll be seeing the folder called app. So go to this app. So you will be seeing some different name here. So based on your computer name, you'll be seeing this folder. So go to this folder, product 21C. Okay, so here you can find DB Home XE. Okay, DB Home XE. Then you can find a demo folder. So you'll be seeing the schema. So here you have to place, here you have to place this HR schema. Okay, so whatever the different schema we have, so that we have. So this instead of Lenovo, so you might be having different path in your system. So that path you have to make sure that, okay, what is the path we are giving? Place the unzip HR dump in the below path. So we have placed the file, right? So the same path, okay? The same path I have placed. Then execute the below steps in admin schema. Okay, we have to execute the below steps in admin schema in SQL developer, okay? So in SQL developer. So I will give the steps. You can just follow the steps. So you'll be seeing this, this particular path. Okay, so in your system, this path might be different. Okay, this path might be different. So go to this one. So you can see. So you have to make sure that you are in system underscore admin schema. You have to use this at symbol one space we have to give. So give one space at symbol. And then where is this HR dot main dot SQL is present. So that particular path we have to give. If you go to this particular folder, human resources, inside you are seeing HR main dot SQL, HR underscore main dot SQL. It is nothing but it will have some S SQL statements, okay? SQL statements, it will be there. If you look at here, so whenever we are going to execute this one, REM is nothing but it will not execute. It's like a commented one, okay? So this is what it will clear. It will create all the permissions, all the users and everything. It will call this particular code. So what we are going to do now, we are going to execute this particular line in SQL developer itself, in admin schema. Make sure that this particular path, you have to mention your system path, okay? Just I'm going to execute this particular line. We'll see now. It will ask enter value for one. So I have given, so what is the value we have to give here? So if you look at here, enter the parameter one is HR. So HR, we have to give and enter the value for two is nothing but specify password for HR. That's the parameter we have given. Specify default table space for HR. So de default table space, we can give users. So that's what users we can give. So just you can give users at the space. The third one, temporary table space. Okay, temporary table space. 
you can give temp t e m p temp then fourth one specify password for system okay system what is the password we have given we have given the password as admin so just to give the password as admin a d m i n admin then it will ask for the log path so what is the log path we have to give so you can give this path oracle home it will automatically take that particular home path it's a parameterized one you can give the same path then connection string okay connection string as parameter 6 so what is the connection string here i have given so this is the one right local host you remember we have copied from here local host colon 1521 slash xcp db1 so this is what we have given so just we will take this control c control v make sure that we are giving correctly click on okay it will alter the session and it will do all the things okay you can see this one so you might be seeing something like error but not an issue so it's showing like hr user does not exist after that it has created okay user has been created user has been altered so you can see all the permission has been given and this is what you can see this execution so we have done with main hr main we will connect it so we will see whether this particular user is available go to new connection new connection you can give the connection name is hr username we have given hr and password is hr okay so local host what is the service name xep db1 so this is what we have to give click test you can see the success so now we have the hr schema so we, it will connect it see here two schemas we have one is system admin another one is hr schema okay in hr schema if you see left hand side so you you might be seeing all the different objects right different objects so you will be seeing the tables is one of the object views and indexes packages procedures functions triggers all this you are seeing it so if you click on the tables you are not seeing any tables as of now so we do not have just we have created a hr user that's all what we have to do now we have to follow the remaining steps execute the below steps in hr schema make sure that you are you are running this particular hr schema and also this particular path you have to make sure so which path we are giving okay so this is very important if you change this path if you are just giving this lenova then you may get error in your system check what is the path so replace that particular path and then you can execute one by one so if you run this particular hr schema so we are not able to see the tables as of now just we have created the schema then we have to execute the below steps we have to execute these statements in hr schema so you have to give correctly in order one by one we have to execute so go here and so just simply you can make use of this particular line so you'll be seeing this table has been created and views has been created populate the table with records so record is inserted in the table and create the indexes so different codes will be there just execute one by one so execute all this particular steps so you are seeing this commit complete then you are saying finally you can execute this one okay after that you can you can clear this one so after that if you execute this con select start from employees you can see the tables so you can see the sample tables In the left hand side you can right click on the table you can refresh it so you can see the seven tables right so you can see the seven tables so by using this you can practice so whatever we want you can create a table you can do even if you want to create any other schema you can create it in this admin schema so i have given all the steps and notes on the dump everything in the descriptions download it all the softwares i have given as a winrar file so download it and install in your extract it and install your machine and then start practicing it so if you find any difficulties in the installation please post your queries in the comments i will respond to it thank you